in the realm of kings and queens, only a select few dare to claim the ultimate crown. Who has what it takes to challenge the reigning world chess champion? This April, the journey unfolds in the heart of Toronto, where history meets the horizon of intellect at the FIDE Candidates 2024. With a star-studded lineup, the world's most brilliant minds converge to battle it out over the board. Some we have seen here before, some faces are new, a prize fund that speaks volumes and a title that echoes through eternity. Who will emerge as the challenger? Who will etch their name in the chess history book? Join us for the spectacle. Witness the birth of legends, a victor in the open and woman section. Watch the event live on FIDE YouTube. Has chess ever been this exciting? I don't think so. Right now we're in the Great Hall where the action has been taking place for the last few weeks. This hall is actually almost as old as the World Championship title itself. It's seen many events from operas, debates, all sporting codes, and now of course the FIDE candidates. Everything has come down to this moment right here. In the open section, we have Gukesh leading by half a point. He could very well become the youngest candidate's winner, the youngest world champion. We'll see. He plays black against Nakamura. But at the same time, more action is happening in the open section as we have Nepomniachtchi against Karuana. Both of them are only trailing by half a point. So it's anyone's game and all eyes in the world will be on Toronto. In the women's section, we've got our leading lady, Tan, who is leading by a point. All she needs to do is have a draw against Anna Muzichuk, which will be likely. She's been a women's world champion before. Let's see if she can do it again. Stay tuned to the FIDE broadcast to not miss any of the action. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 14th round here at the 2024 Candidates Tournament. My name is Irina Crutch, and I'm joined by an unexpected guest in the studio today. Eric, yes. tell us who you are. Yeah, I came for the last round for all the excitement, you know, Irene has been carrying throughout the event. Uh, Grandmaster Kansen, I live in Toronto now. Um, been uh, doing commentary streaming for a long time. So usually these days I'm not playing. I'm usually uh, focused on the games, talking about what's happening in the world of chess. So yeah, just uh, happy to have a tournament in my backyard uh, like this. So and tell us about what you're doing with the chess bras. We're running the fan zone downstairs, and that's been since since the beginning. And that's just an area for people outside of viewing the players. Um, you can play some chess, meet people, watch the games, hear some live commentary. We've had some like guests, Peter Fiddler, Kosteniuk's come by multiple times, Ben Feingold this weekend. So just a bit of an interactive zone for people um, to hang out throughout the day because these are long rounds, and and so we're trying to entertain people downstairs. So have you had fun doing that? Yes, yes. Although I was saying like, yeah, I mean, met so many people over, over the last couple of weeks. I'm kind of happy to be in the studio. I expect today it's going to be very intense down there. Yeah. Like you have a lot of like, for example, really passionate fans of Gukesh. Toronto has one of the biggest Indian populations. And then you have a lot of Americans visiting, you know, rooting for Fabi or Hikaru. So, you know, I, I kind of like being yeah. a little bit uh, tucked in the studio, but uh, it should be good down there. Yeah, actually, be... my friend is visiting. Yeah. Um, she's also a retired chess player, oh, okay. now a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, University of California at Irvine. And so mm -hmm. she decided to stop by for the last couple of days. And so she's here today to watch the okay. event. It's pretty uh, nice day to stop by on the biggest chess day of the year. Yes. As yes. a candidate. So it's going to be very fun. To watch, um, to watch the action today, because we have such a huge day. Two games where people are really going to be going at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, some players have to adopt the mentality that they have to win, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, Gukesh is, is the leader, so he's in control of his destiny. But the uh, three other players have to assume that they need to win. Um, and that's what they're here for. By the way, you said your friend was visiting. I was actually born in Irvine. Oh really? Yeah, wow. My parents are Canadian, but I was I was born there. That's I didn't so get cool. to spend. It's, it's beautiful there. I didn't get to spend time there, so that's what always uh, you know I get a little upset that uh, I was raised in a, you know a cold country. But 
let's see the video recap from round 13, the highlights of the day from yesterday. Well, besides the score in the tournament, what else is really important for today is the pairings. Because we got the best possible pairings to finish out this tournament with all four players who were involved in the hunt for first place paired against each other, Eric. Yeah, I think it's really nice that uh, the players that are out of contention, they are playing each other. So, uh, you know, everyone in contention, those are the two games. Uh, Jan against Fabiano, Gukesh against Hikaru. Um, yeah, everyone's in control of their destiny. You know, they're not... It's just the, the, the four contenders there. The field is very much split. Um, so I, I have no idea what to expect. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you could do endless analysis on the mm -hmm. situation. You know, of course, I like to listen to Anish Giri uh, give his takes. He's really quite, I think, quite a practical and methodical mm -hmm. the way he lays things out. Um, also, obviously, he has a huge amount of experience um, of his own to, to share. Um, so what he thinks is that, for example, in the game between Jan and Fabi, uh, Jan sort of needs to give Fabi a helping hand to get a playable game, right? Because normally that's not really the mentality of a player. You're not trying to help your opponent no. get a game against you, no. right? But he's thinking that could be Jan's situation today. So for example, like the big question, let's say Fabi plays E4. Yeah. So he considers that for Jan to play E5 and to play the Petrov, is like taking out a nuclear weapon. Yeah, because it hurts both of them. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Yeah. That it, it could lead to self destruction for both of them, right? So, um, in that case, like, what options does Nepo have against one e four? I mean, he can go to the French or he can go to the Sicilian. Yeah, I haven't seen him play the French too too often. I know definitely uh, against lower rated players, he does play the Sicilian. Uh, it's in his repertoire. Um, we could see e5, but just a different variation in the Petrov. I don't know, maybe they cook something up there. We have seen some sidelines from various players, like when Prague played the, you know, Schliemann variation. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's like, it's an interesting situation. Like, who has the pressure in that game between, well, Fabiano first of all has to play something that, yeah, like it gives him some, some flexibility, it doesn't allow too many forced trades, I'd say. Um, so I guess that's kind of like, Who's first to act in terms of like yeah. keeping the game open? Um, because let's say you do play the Petrov, uh, maybe you're you're kind of betting that Fabiano is going to have to play something aggressive, right? And that is maybe your best chance to get a like to get a good position. Um, like it's get, very hard to yeah, make these decisions. Very hard. Yeah, this is where the the seconds are are very very useful because they need to lay out a few different options. And, yeah. And and help help the player. Uh, you know, Anish had something funny to say about yeah. that as well about yeah. the role of the seconds. Yeah. 
like they, let's say you come to them with an idea yeah. and for like even like the intonation they use to react to it will mm. make, make such a big difference like right. they might be like why yeah you know or then i'd be like oh wait, yeah, you know? yeah interesting right yeah and that's going to completely you know affect how you feel about whatever you're thinking about right so it's actually yes a lot of course a lot of responsibility lies on the seconds and on their advice for such an unclear scenario that's that's really what today is about right it's just yeah. um like you've got to make some decision completely not clear about your opponent's intentions you're guessing what's going to yeah. happen in your game and the other game. It's no longer about just like objectively what is the best. You have to play the tournament situation. And I can't say that I've been in too many situations like this. Have you? Where there's been so many people with a chance at winning the tournament? That no. You... Yeah. No, this is, I think, it's not just I think that, that I haven't been in it, but I don't think I've seen many situations where I've been a witness to it. Right. No, right, I, this yeah. level of complexity where really you just start analyzing what should these players be doing, and there's not really like a right answer. No, I think some of the tournaments that I recall where there were a few more people in the tie breaks would have been some tournaments that you played in, like the U.S. Women's Championship a couple of years. There's been at least a few, maybe up to three people with a chance, but this with four players, it's even more uh, complex. And also the fact that they're playing each other. Yeah, exactly. They actually that's have really to, the parents yeah. are really good for because, that. Because, you know, normally in this scenario, they'd be playing other people yeah. and you wouldn't have much, you know, input of your own, right? But right. here they're really making decisions that are going to, like, impact themselves and the person, you know, yeah. they're playing against. So, you know, Anish said that he, his prediction for a draw between Fabi and Nepo was 10%. Very low percentage that he gave that to a possible drawing scenario because... It, it is so destructive to both of them. It is. I would put my percentage way higher than that, not because of a lack of fighting spirit, but because uh, they're both extreme. Like, they, th these are two players that hardly lose into candidates, super strong, and I think they're going to fight, but that still might lead to, you know, uh, a draw, even though nobody wants it. Um, I, that would be my prediction for the game. I think the players will, will, will fight pretty hard, but... You, you, you still think it could end in a draw? Yeah, Jan is so hard to beat in the candidates. It seems like he just like even when he's like in trouble, he he finds these these you know great escapes. And Fabiano losing with white, even if you try really hard as black, you know, <laughs> seen everyone including Magnus to struggle to to really get much. But uh, based on the opening, my my opinion might change. But I would I would put the percentage much higher, but not because I don't think they're gonna try really hard. Well, Naka is someone else who really needs to win yeah. today, right? Yeah. I mean, only Gukesh is in a somewhat comfortable position where a draw is at least a satisfactory result to him because the worst case scenario for him with a draw is that he might face one player in a tie break. Yeah, you've and done. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, that'd be my mentality that you work so hard to put yourself in this position. Like, the main regret is not even qualifying for a playoff when you're in, in the sole lead. Um, but he's such a young player that some people like sometimes maybe the lack of experience i don't know what you think but maybe the nerves are not going to be as tough for him I and mean, the way he's been playing it's felt like you know he's been very very relaxed and and just extremely mature for for somebody playing their first candidates um so i've been really impressed by Gukesh. yeah he seems very solid and stable yeah. right like he's not really perturbed by the amount of pressure right. in the situation yeah. so i think he should be fine um, however, you know, Naka is, of course, very motivated. In a way, his situation is easy, Naka, because yeah. he actually, let's say compared to Jan and Fabi, who both need to win, he knows he's playing someone who only needs a draw, Yes. basically. Yes. So he's like, well, I need to win. Um, it's a little easier to guess, let's say, Gukesh's intentions, although it's not that Gukesh doesn't have a chance to win today because yeah. he might very much like to win as well. Um, but still, like, Hikaru knows that a draw is good enough for Gukash, it's not good enough for him. Yeah, I think his mentality, yeah, as you as you mentioned, like it's a pretty simple, straightforward mentality that, that he needs for this game. And yeah, it, it aligns pretty nicely. I have White, I'm playing the tournament leader. You know, I, I got to push. I got to go for that win. Let's take a look at the tiebreak scenarios before the game starts. Um, the way I've calculated it, there's only going to be two people involved in a tiebreak here. It's not going to be all four of them. It's not going to be three. Um, so they're going to be playing two game matches of 15 minutes plus 10 seconds per move. And then they move on to Blitz if it's still tied. By the way, the first move today is going to be made by Rex Sinkfield, although I don't currently see him 
on the screen and it looks like the games have started um but that's what the plan was for today and um yeah rex is in town okay. for a few days to see this uh, very important event and uh, i guess to root on the american players yeah it's it's finally not you know it's in north america so it's not too far of a, of a flight for him and yeah two americans you know close to 50 percent chance there's gonna be american challengers so i can i can see him joining the party do you want to see tie breaks um You've i wouldn't, I wouldn't, two I wouldn't weeks. mind yeah, I wouldn't mind to see tie breaks for sure. And I do think that, like, first of all, we got to comment the opening moves on the boards because they went, I think, in very understandable scenarios. Like Naka going for D4, uh, switching away from 1E4 that he's relied on, I think, exclusively in this tournament. And Caruana also going to a D4 opening. So they have a Queen's Gambit on the board, um, which is actually a pretty popular battleground these days. And I would say does give both players a chance. Bishop B4 is actually a pretty, uh, pretty cool line with potential to get quite sharp. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we didn't see Bishop B4 and we saw Bishop E7, we'd be like, well, clearly uh, Jan's team is like, we're just going to play solid and let Fabiano try to overextend. But Bishop B4 keeps, keeps all the options open. I mean, uh, it has a, a good reputation, but it's far more dynamic than a lot of the Bishop e7, Queen's Gambit decline positions. Well, so. isn't it interesting what Gukesh has chosen? I mean, I've never seen this move played in the Queen's Gambit accepted, despite the fact that I've played this opening my whole life. Yeah. Uh, Bishop e7, so he is the first one to bring a surprise to this game. Um, let's just jump into that. Have you ever. Don't seen think I've seen Bishop, Bishop e7, e7 this, this early. I'm trying to take your car out of some prep maybe i mean there's some downsides i guess that people think about they don't play bishop e7 because black usually goes for c5 and you want to take back and one go on uh, on c5 yeah so bishop e7 certainly like committal in a way right because i mean it's hard to imagine black playing this position without that move but then the bishop being here is not like ideal on the other hand you know gukesh has some good prep he's shown that for example against most recently against abbasov you know, with this uh, line in the Nimzo where he played the move H6. Oh, H6 with the knight H7. I really yeah, like that. Yeah, like, like yeah. that's definitely showing that he's quite able to leave um, the main lines very early, right, with his own ideas. So I guess we're seeing more in that series with the move bishop to E7. Yeah, no, usually you, you see at the candidates players coming up with ideas, but not on move four, on move mm -hmm. five. Um I think part of that is also just just attitude. He he doesn't seem to be too concerned about taking a little bit of risk or or trying some new things. Um, I'm actually I'm, gonna take a look, Eric, to see if like this move has been played. Maybe um, maybe it has been. Yeah, it definitely has to have been played. There's just been too many games for it not to. Maybe but it's, it's interesting. Like I've played this opening yeah. for decades, yeah, and I've literally not known of this move's existence. Like this is my, one of my main openings since my childhood. It's so easier that's to how play. Rare it is. It's easier to play that move when you don't know the opening. So yeah, you're not gonna have games in it, but maybe somebody who is just trying to develop their piece. I'm just gonna move my bishop up, you know, one square so I can castle. You might see some more games in the lower rating uh, categories. Well, let me tell you, this move was first seen in 1847. Yes. Bishop e7. Well, yeah, they didn't play. Yeah. It was played by Mikhail Chigorin against oh. Emmanuel Lasker in 1896. Um, you know, so definitely played by a guy named Kalashnikov in 1924. Is the opening named after him? I think so. That's why I'm, I'm mentioning. Okay, these are, these are <laughs> yeah. some good. These are some good names. You're, you're, I mean, I might have to check my classics. Maybe Gukesh or somebody on his team was like, "Let's go back mm. to the, uh, you know, 1800s and and see if we can come up with an idea that Hikaru's team might not have anticipated." I mean, I see one position like that. Ivancha got here as black through a different move order completely. You know, a few title Tuesdays where Demchenko played this line. So it actually has been played by grandmasters. I cannot say there's mm. no GM games in it, but it's certainly like very rare. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't pair the C5 idea, which is the main one. I, there's just so many questions like, does this encourage white to go for E4 sooner than, than you know, usual in, in this structure? Or um, maybe they've analyzed it so well that you can lose a, a half tempo with this Bishop E7 and 
still be okay. Well, the most recent game that I see from like a strong player is John Burke playing this with Black against Emilio Cordova in the Spice Cup or something. Philadelphia oh, National a couple okay. of years ago. Right. So this is definitely, you know, this move is certainly not part of the repertoires of the top GMs where we would have seen it by now, right? But it has been played. So let's take a look at what Hikaru does. He goes knight c3. So he commits his knight out a little early. You know, sometimes you don't want to do that in the queen's gambit accepted because this knight can sort of get hit by that pawn. But I guess he decides that after bishop e7, it's worth it. And I guess on c5, well, first of all, one of the ideas here, Eric, I think there's a lot of ideas for mm -hmm. white, right? I mean, you can, you know, do anything from castle to maybe taking a look at mm -hmm. d5. I mean, that's maybe one of the points of having the knight here. Maybe you could look at, you know, e4. What, what do you think? I mean, there's actually a lot yeah, of ideas. Yeah, those are the moves. And then... Taking on c5 is, is the other, I don't just... Yeah. Well, this one's, not, this one's not going to happen, is No, it? it's not. But then, then bishop e7 isn't punished uh, that, that badly, right? It, it looks like it might be more of a transposition. If, if you don't take on c5 right away, then it could, yeah, transpose to, to some other queen's gambit accepted lines. So what are like the most aggressive options here for white? Because, yeah, I just don't see Hikaru going for anything where there's going to be a queen trade this early in the game. This one, I kind of doubt. Yeah. Something tells me, like, even though it's a very typical reaction. It's, um, but, yeah, it's, black should be quite safe mm -hmm. for black, probably with many moves. I mean, I wouldn't even be shocked if, like, straight away you could go bishop e6. Like, you don't have to. Of course, you could take. Yeah. What do you think, Eric? Would you yeah, think? Uh, bishop e6, knight c6, like, even... Even there, I'm not even sure if, uh, you know, losing the bishop pair is a big deal. Right. Um, D5 can be aggressive, but white's overall position isn't really set up to follow, follow mm -hmm. through after you get D5 to, like, catch black off guard. And it does allow some trades, which, unless he oh. covers very well prepared, I don't think he's going to go for a line that... Uh, well, we just have the shortest finish. game of the tournaments, Eric. Yes. Ali Reza versus Vidit um, decided that... Candidates uh, was over for them. Let's just see how they did it, just for fun. I think we're gonna. Have yeah, I was gonna say if the, the the four other players, I wouldn't be surprised if um, they phone it in. They want to watch the games. They're uh, you think that's what it's about? They want to be the spectators, so they went for this famous draw. Yes. Not the not the famous night tango draw. No, no, no. But the, <laughs> yeah. The night tango replaced this as the you know as the as the. The way to end draw. the game, yes, right? You know. Yeah. Have you tried that yet, Eric? Uh, in a TikTok video I have, oh, but I haven't go. played it uh, online. But yes. Okay, so that's not surprising, actually, that this game is already over. By the way, I think Frog, though, he did come to play as Black. Yeah, the attitude that I've noticed, I, I think, from a lot of the younger Indian GMs, is they're, they're, they're here to fight against each other, against everybody, and... It's not so much the traditional like draw with black is okay mentality. It seems like they're ambitious with both colors. Yeah. And it's going to make you stronger type of thing like that. This is a valuable game, valuable experience. And Abbasov has struggled this tournament. Um, if I were in a situation uh, in Abbasov's shoes, I'd probably be okay um, getting a draw and just, you know, wrapping up the event. And maybe Prague wants to kind of play against that mentality where can be pretty hard to wake up every day when you've had, you know, um, no wins after 13 games and everyone is super, super strong and, and trying to put pressure on you. And he's had a couple opportunities to, to press games or, you know, push Hikaru um, that uh, it might actually be an opportune time. Like I've noticed in the last rounds, the motivation levels really vary between mm. players and attitudes. Like you'll see that in Swiss events and closed events, some people are really looking to just... I'm done with this event. I feel like everyone's been very motivated yeah. up until this game between Farouja and Vidit. That is like the first clear sign that like someone yeah. just doesn't want to play today, which I think is understandable in Farouja's shoes. I mean, really, this tournament has not gone well for him, despite like a lot of efforts on his part to keep it interesting. Yeah, I, it must be. It's a very frustrating tournament uh, if you're Ali Reza. Um, just everything that's gone wrong, you know. 
And yeah, I think Prague going for the Kings Indian in today's game is like a great choice because he's also suffered a few losses in the second half. I mean, he's not feeling, I think, very good about his tournament. So for him to try to finish with a win, I think is the right approach. So if he can, um, you know, if he has the energy to do it, then I think this is, this is a, a good choice from him. Let's take a look at Caruana versus Nepo. All right, so he goes for this line of the queen's gambit declined. That's quite popular, bishop b4. Not easy to get an advantage against that. e3, h6, and g5, and the knight comes in. We have to defend the knight, and they go h5. And I'm trying to remember how, oh, okay. You know what I think it is that I remember? There's a line here also with knight e2. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways to guard this knight. I mean, black still goes for h5, but queen c2, okay, he guards that. Then they go h5. They're going after the bishop, f3, um, and takes, takes. Well, what I can say is that they are definitely creating an imbalance on the board from the get-go. Very understandable kind of play by both players. Um, personally, I kind of always like to look at this position for black. You know, I just... I don't love how when white gives up the bishop. Um, you don't. You don't like. Yeah, you for the bishop pair over the say the h file and. I, yeah, you know. you know. I mean, I understand. I see. Like the, the computer maybe slightly favors white, but let's just say that I would not feel uncomfortable here as black. I think it's a good choice. Uh, it makes a lot of sense for for what the tournament situation is is provided us and. Usually you get some long games here. You know, white white is, you know, you lose a bishop here, a little bit solid. The king can go to f2 and bishop d3, yeah. knight e2. You can kind of tuck some pieces in, but it means there's just tension, like, hanging over the position in the in the long run, yeah. where black at some moment can play c5 or h4 and introduce uh, some counterplay. So I, I get why you like it as black. It, it you know... The king is kind of, you can say, g5 or h5 oh. or aggressive moves and weakening, but you're not necessarily playing on kingside castling, and white's not in a situation to, like, just, I don't know, target those uh, those pawns. So uh, definitely a good, good opening for, for getting counterplay. I think so. He's put Fabi into a bit of a think, so it does look like Nepo was the one who brought, let's say, more of a surprise uh, to this game. And in general, yeah, I think he's doing what he can to let Fabi have a game. So that's his job, right? Yep. Not to make yep. it too narrow for today. Um, and, um, you know, Fabi, yeah, he has a decision now. He decides to bring out this bishop to d3. So the question is like, where is this king going, right? Like, it, it gets an f2, it protects g3. Sometimes it can be a little bit insecure there yep. as well. Yeah, I guess here probably queenside castle would be my guess, 92 queenside castle. Mm -hmm. And how about this knight? Are we going for c6? Are we going for knight d7? Or... I think the pawn goes to c6 mm -hmm. if I was trying to play it. And then keep options open. You know, it goes to c6. It can always go to c5. Get that knight somewhere. I'm not sure where it goes in the structure after d7. If it goes to f6 mm -hmm. or somewhere else. But um, black gets counterplay as soon as white starts pushing those pawns in the center. So I think... It's going to be, you know, a little bit before Fabi decides to play f4, or e4, or one of those moves. But, mm -hmm. yeah, if I was playing black c6, keep my bishop mm -hmm. pair. You like your bishop pair. So probably the bishop goes back to d6 at some point. And uh, if I can get queenside castle as black, I'll probably be pretty happy in terms of just having a two-way game. Yeah, what do you think about queen d6? Like, is it, I mean, are we taking away the bishop's retreat, or could it be something we consider to attack this pawn? I think white wants to play knight g2, mm -hmm. and there are situations where, um, yeah, even here, for example, like... The question is, this, like, is the queen good It's here a bit provocative, yeah, because after uh -huh. e3, it feels like the bishop may not be... On d6, it kind of, you know, points at both parts of the board, and here there are situations where maybe it gets a little bit isolated. Well, he did go for c6. Yeah. So he sets up this pawn chain. Because I think you want the bishop on d6. Then, yeah. then it has just both, yeah, both sides. Right. He doesn't want to constantly deal with knight b5, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's preparing for that. Makes sense. Um, so basically the, the moves we're expecting are like knight d7, 
maybe bishop d6 at some point. Where is this queen going to go? Is it going to go e7, yeah, e c7? Yeah, I think dark squares are good. So probably e7 is the most intuitive mm -hmm. for me. But uh, And then castle queen side. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the question for Fabi is, is his king going to be here or castling? You're thinking that he's going to go like knight e2. Yeah, probably queenside castle. So like knight d7 and queenside castle. I'm kind of on your side. I kind of like black's uh, opening, mm -hmm. especially the situation. Yeah. So, but I know Fabiano and his team, they have, they have something planned here as a means of put, applying pressure. Um, it probably is e4, f4. F4 actually, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't played this position mm -hmm. so so many times as white, but it's one of those two pawn moves. That's what's probably going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Have Could to be G4 moving too, these. technically. but mm -hmm. G4 putting pressure on this pawn and then kind of forcing me to go H4. Yeah, I don't know if it's a plan to like mm -hmm. do that and play bishop f5 type of thing. So but... here I guess I'd go like queen e7. Yeah. And then you have like all these all various those moves. pawn moves. And the lazy move, king b1, you know, always just prepare it, but... Uh, mm -hmm. So white has to kind of act quickly, right? Because I think we, so, I mm -hmm. think so. So, like, if we go with g4, I suppose... I suppose h4, mm -hmm. right? So there's that. And then the other one is if you try to win my bishop. But then I probably escape from you. And actually, my queen is really well positioned here. Yeah. So yeah. then the final one is this one that I could probably, I'll think about what to do. Because I yeah. could ignore it. Or do you think that this is, I don't know, too much of a threat? Um, yeah, e well, it definitely gives white a, a very clear plan. Um, I kind of like the idea of, well, generally with the bishops of taking trying to see if it's giving squares like just taking on e4 and maybe putting the bishop on g4, g4. as you mentioned yeah because every time white pushes upon it kind of gives up some squares maybe the e5 square comes for black's knight or the dark squares it just feels like generally with the two bishops mm. you if black was like queenside castle i'd be very comfortable we're still one move behind but in general I, yeah i want to keep the position open um so something like that yeah yeah mm -hmm, because just, it's a little difficult for me to practically get all my pieces here. You have some ideas of maybe even taking. That probably is the right way to play as white. Well, you just showed the e5 mm -hmm. and trying to trade off the light squared bishops. But yeah, maybe I've made I'm a, a little, I don't know, concerned. Maybe there's some you're kind a, no, of no, that, like that, that, that looks good. That looks good. You know, it could be a problem because we're still pinned. We can't yeah. com comfortably recapture. So basically, things are going to clarify pretty soon simply because white needs to act quickly yeah i think white needs to justify giving up the bishop here and kind of having some soft pawns with um something something before black gets settled all right let's take a look at what's going on in hikaru's game so hikaru went for the move a3 and after how much thought so he spent about 15 minutes i guess most of these this time was spent on this move yeah these these are all positions that i'm sure the players are just analyzing and comparing to the notes am i getting a better version of this position i've already reached like they're just trying to compare and contrast other queen's gambit accepted lines um but a3 doesn't scare me that much as a move <laughs> mm -hmm. um i mean this one was kind of interesting yeah yeah because it's like such an idea in the queen's gambit anyway and then here you actually have it protected. You're not even doing it as a pawn sack. Um, and, you know, the move bishop b7 is like not terribly useful. So I don't know. That one was sort of like a principled looking move. I think it's principled. I think that's a good way to put it. That um, I was looking for an aggressive move after bishop e7, right? Mm -hmm. Because black has kind of played a card and saying, like, I'm just putting my bishop on e7 and not really applying any tension or challenging. And... Yeah, e4 is in the spirit of trying to punish a, a slower move like that. It, whereas a3 does not look like it's, you know, a refutation or a good way to counter it. Yeah. Worst case, black can take on d4 or something. And white's not getting a good version of, of most things, at least. But, you know, a3 will be at least somewhat yeah. useful if they yeah. take on d4. 
Um, although, you know, the funny thing is, like, I think I'm pretty sure that, like, even in these main lines, right, you, they're... There are things like this that are, I mean, they're not like dangerous. People are trying everything yeah. these days yeah, yeah. In, the, in this position, right? So, I mean, they, they're doing like B3. I'm pretty sure I've seen A3. So maybe that's what Hikaru is sort of inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, the move is not like completely useless. I suppose there's, you know, the, one of the ideas is to take and play B4 with a tempo. We might see that, you think, after A6? Well, yeah, let's, let's actually think about that. <laughs> if Black plays A6, I mean, are we supposed to be taking that pawn because you know they do want to go b5 so maybe hikaru is actually willing to play this end mm -hmm. game but again black and it's hard to imagine that it's hard to imagine he was not willing to do the move before but the yeah, insertion of, of a3 and a6 somehow changes it enough where it's like mm -hmm. this is going to give me winning chances well gukesh decides to castle which is also mm -hmm. a good idea so now Interesting, though, that maybe a6 was a little bit more more forcing, right? Just because the idea of b5 is, like, mm, so problematic, though. It, it does kind of force white to react, right? So at least with castles, like, white has a little bit more time right? Yep. to do whatever it is that they want to do, which could be what? I'm probably looking to castle and play queen e2 or, or, or something. But, yep, so uh, castle, Hikaru's choice. But the question remains uh, a6. Yeah, that's the big White's one. White's already played a3, you're not going to go a4. And uh, how does this compare to usual? Yeah, I wonder what here? he's trying to get into, right? Like, I mean... The knight's on c3, which you mentioned, is not always mm -hmm. the best place for it. Um, sometimes the knight goes to d2 and you try to exploit b5. Right. With like, you know, an a4 type of move. Like, one thing I realized is that it's a lot harder for us to play like... I don't know, ideas of this kind of pawn move because, like, well, let's just as an example, mm -hmm. right? Like, we allow this, and, you know, you can't go for this. Well, I was, I mean, probably in this position, you're actually taking here. And then and go you're better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, not, a, not such a bad idea in that, in that case, actually, to go. Bishop d3 is like a possible move that we see in the Queen's Gambit quite a bit. So, what would Black do here? I guess, I mean, they could take, right? Mm -hmm. They could take and go into this type of position. That's what I mean. We don't have like these pawn sack positions because the knight right. is here. So we yeah. have to automatically sort of capture. And then, I guess this would be mm -hmm. kind of a fighting position. You can go b5 or, yeah. 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 I mean, black. It feels like black has kind of achieved uh, what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So, what other options do we have other than bishop d3? Sometimes I know Bishop There's still E4, is, you know, maybe yeah. can, can we just look at that We can look push? at E4, yeah, we can look, yeah. yeah. Um, so E4, but then, oh, but then there's already B5, B4. I think this is probably not timed so well here. Yeah, maybe, it's unclear where to put the bishop. Right, because then you, you wind up losing the pawn here. And you don't want to put your bishop on E2, you get worse pretty easily. Yeah. Bishop A2 doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel amazing this position yeah. for white, right? Yeah. So, I mean, after a a six kind of forces white's hands a bit because you know b five is coming. You really need to decide mm -hmm. what you're going to do against that. All right, let's think. Let's find a move for Hikaru. Um, well, let's try take, to win, taking win is the that easy, tempo. easy one. Like I was like, yeah, we yeah we play b four, bishop b two. It's yeah. symmetrical. I guess here we can actually avoid the queen trade, right? We can at least consider maybe like I think that's queen a good point. So, I mean, you know, Gukesh might want to get the queens off the board. Let's see. And then take back. Mm -hmm. And then we play before, I before. guess. Yeah. Bishop here. And... Well, white's got all their pieces out, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be better after b5. That's right. Uh, Black's going to get, like, bishop on b7, catch up in development. There's no real way to punish the, the position because try to play a move like a4 down the road and le leads to mass liquidation because b4 is loose. So outside of, like, an a4 move, in this kind of structure, if I'm white, I guess you're trying to, like, 
transfer the knight over from f3 to like you know d d4 to b3 but it, it looks way too slow mm -hmm. I, I just don't see a reason why white would be happy with it there's no no target here so so far we are pretty satisfied with gukesh's opening yes i yes. mean for, from his point of view things are going in a quite decent direction very solid opening choice the queen's gambit accepted a bit of an innovation with this, well, I would say it's certainly an innovation with bishop e7. At the top level, we haven't really seen this move. No. Um, I guess, you know, he was inspired by that game from 1847. <laughs> um, and, and Hikaru, you know, deciding not to go for, you know, the more principled lines, right? He, so he goes for this quiet move, um, a3. And that might have been the goal of Gukesh's prep is like the position we have on the board is similar to a lot of Queen's Gambit decline openings, but he kind of got Hikaru to play knight c3 and a3. Yeah. So a certain type of position that his team was was happy to achieve, which avoids some of the e4 lines. And even a3, it doesn't seem too challenging unless I'm missing something. So maybe the purpose of the prep has already paid off that some of the more scary lines that they just yeah. wanted to avoid have, have been avoided. You know what's really annoying is like, of course Hikaru knows that like these moves are more principled, yeah. but he's like, well, of course my opponent has looked at it with a computer. So I guess I'm gonna go for something more quiet, hoping to finally get him yeah. to think on his own. So then we're, we're, we're kind of like, I mean, avoiding all the principled stuff, right? Because like, how can this be the best way to play the queen's gambit except right. it, right? It can't be, right? But if we wind up playing things like A3, well, then it's very viable. Yeah, I think. I don't know. It's like, it's an interesting question of like, what's the idea of like this for black? I mean, probably black needs to take. So you think like Bishop E7 caught him by surprise? I think yeah, so. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't see top level games of this level. I mean, there are some GMs so who used reason. it. There should be a line that scares people from playing this right. regularly. Yeah, why hasn't anyone thought of that? And we don't think it's A3. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there might have been something, like, I don't know if knight c3 is the move, or for example, uh, you know, we could look at queen e2. Yeah, queen e2 or just castling, I, I'm surprised about the early knight c3 when it's not in conjunction with e4, as you mentioned. Like, mm -hmm. you're not going to play an early e4. The knight is sometimes better placed on d2 when, you know, you, black goes in early b5, you play a4 to undermine the... The yeah, actually, Eric, I think this move at least makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because, like, you yeah. know, when they go here, we know we have these lines of DC and Queen E2. It's, it's even, yeah, like it even avoids a Queen trade. Like, C5 right. doesn't even give Black a Queen trade, and it punishes yeah. Bishop E7. So, to me, let's just play A6 here, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Castle, the or even, actually, we no, can, E4. We can even E4. think yeah. here, yeah, there's yeah. E4. I would even say that, like, A4 is not completely crazy, but it's not as principled as, like, E4, right? Um, E4, I guess they go B5. I guess, Bishop yeah. Bishop E3. Maybe he's worried here. about some C5. I don't know, actually. Well, of course, you know, Black is going to have some ideas yeah. to, like, try to equalize. But the point is, like, it's sort of the direction, I think, that White needed to go in to try to, like, punish this move. Agreed, yep. Right? And the, so the way Hikaru did it, is very understandable, but it might lead leave him, you know, with not a, like a lot of options to create um, a very unbalanced position. So what do we have on the board right now? We have Castle and Gukesh is thinking. So yeah, I'm not not impressed by the setup for White so far, but maybe there's an idea down the line. Hikaru is still playing relatively fast, considering that. Those early opening decisions, like Queen E2 versus Knight C3 or A3, it changes how the game's going to look entirely. Like this structure, I mean, once you put the Knight on C3, you're not really able to reroute it somewhere. So he's made some Camille decisions without spending too much time. So must have some idea here for, for a push. And I'm guessing that's like, yeah, still going to be attached to Queen E2. Okay, I think A6 is played, right. So Gukash is playing the most sensible move. Like all the main moves that are getting to getting usually played in the Queen's Gambit accepted. He has them now. And now it's really the ball is in Hikaru's court to show what he's doing against this move. Mm -hmm. I mean, he obviously doesn't have options to play A4 anymore, so all those lines are off the table. Um, 
Yeah, we looked at E4. It still doesn't feel amazing after B5. So, you know, he could take. Taking is a logical move, but it's just like not really what you no, want to do. No, I don't. Yeah. But I mean, if you think about the logic of these pieces, takes is logical, right? Because you're it trying is. to play B4. Otherwise, what's the point of this pawn being here? Yeah. No, it's, it's pretty logical. I just don't know why the knight's on C3. I'd rather, like, keep it open and I've spent to move somewhere else because um, I might prefer my knight to be on D2 in those situations if I'm going to go B4, bishop B2, and have the knight swing over to B3. Like, I'm trying to figure out where knight C3 is, why it's beneficial when you, when you take on C5. Let's it puts pressure on D5, so it, there's something there. Should we take a look at the game between Muzicic and Tan? Because in the women, uh, we are also having a fight for first place. Tan is obviously in great position to, um, to become the winner of the tournament. Today she is black against Anna Muzicic, who is still looking for her first win. Um, and if Tan does lose, then Lei will have a chance to catch her. So I guess uh, Lei is really counting on Anna to, to help her out today. Yeah, I'm based on the opening, I mean, uh, mm. some ambitions, yeah. Oh, Kelly's system. So Tan <laughs> brought a lot of opening surprises uh, to this tournament, and it just continues in the last round as she continues to be quite aggressive. And okay, um, let's see, D5. So like kind of a very specific way that she's approaching the opening to try to like get into some sort of equality. Yeah, I'm used to like c3 after a6 is kind mm -hmm. of the main main move. This is pretty new to me, but it definitely has some resemblance to some um, other Sicilians. Like, I don't know, the Shvezhna, uh, there's some weird, I guess it's a bit unique, but yeah. in the game position, there's some similarities to the Shvezhna cause. So let's just note that for the moment, uh, Black has sacrificed a pawn. But she's got two pawns under attack, so she wants to win one back. Um, interestingly, she doesn't hurry to take it because, I mean, white also has the bishop pair and like a passed pawn over here. So her strategies develop, maybe try to get mm -hmm. this pawn. Uh, white says, all right, you can take that one. And does she eventually take it? I think eventually she does. A rare opening to see when somebody needs a, a, just a draw to, to clinch a tournament. On the other hand, look, she has an hour yes. and 34 minutes. So this is all her prep, 14 moves in. Definitely um, gives her confidence, I think, to be playing her prep like that. Yeah, she's, she's gaining time on the clock. And uh, usually don't like to see that from I your think opponent. I think, I think we're going to see a draw unless White does something very fast, like unless there's something, I don't know, tactical that we can do because we have bishops of opposite colors, knights in the center, like why is white better? You're right, that has to be something now because if you just show like F takes... G6, yeah, yeah like white has absolutely nothing, right? Yeah. I think it doesn't look like much. Here again, I mean, there F4 has to be... F4 is probably, even in the yeah game, yeah, F4 is probably the move that is the most ambitious. Right. But you're also a bit hesitant to play it when your opponent's blitzing out moves. Mm. So she might have it all down to a draw here. That's but what I I'm think, thinking. I think we got to take a look, yep. right? Just to see. I mean, in this situation, f4, I mean, I guess bishop takes. Um, okay, it the loses. Rook Let's takes. figure out what. Ah, rook. there you go. Rook takes. Yep. That's actually quite nice, isn't it? Not only you want two pieces for the rook, but you're like crashing through on the dark squares. Yeah, okay. So f4. Take on f5 with the pawn. Wow. That looks gonna, bad too. It's going to get crazy, right? Yeah. How do we win here? I guess we just take and we come in with knight of six. Yeah, and, it just. <laughs> and. This you know, will not happen, but you, you could. Uh, all right, so we have to find an actual good move for black. We right. found two losing moves. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, that's always the easy that's, part. We right? got to get those, yeah, yeah. we got to get those We're... out of the way. So now, okay, the pawn is hanging. Well, we do have the stellar move, bishop f6. I like it. I mean, it seems not terrible. It guards the pawn and the bishop. What I'm curious about there is, I think probably the critical line is taking on 
g6 and playing f5 i'm trying to find some sack there i don't mm -hmm. think it works but okay right i think that's certainly one of them like that and then try to F5. organize an attack yeah. in the light squares yeah and mm. i haven't calculated this but the nice thing is like okay if g takes f5 you know then we I, go like queen h5 or something i feel like i have to take this, what, this that looks on. scary this is a day out okay oh that looks scary but what looks well, scary is on G6 is also yeah. Yeah. that also looks scary and your queen coming in right um I agree this looks scary, but let's just t take a look. Let's go queen h5. All right. I'm just trying to have some fun here. Yeah, I think it maybe, does look like white's Maybe I'm going to step back and then you'll like rook sack takes f5. rook f5. Yeah. You'll try to make me let's just let's just show that move to people, you know. Um, so let's say you go here. Look at that. Well, but obviously this is all her prep, though, which is nice. It's just weird prep for black to encourage because if you're encouraging your opponent to sack and they have still good compensation and it's not like a repetition unless there's like that's kind of like uh impractical i'd say like oh you get to sack and exchange attack me and it's not even bad for you and the moves are yeah. kind of human they're human yeah. moves to make but i mean just, Anna things, just are getting traded. things are getting traded like well, how only, does she survive? The, yeah. Yeah. For how do you survive? But even if you do survive, you're not trading because there's opposite bishops, and now that like. Can we show the... Eric how this is a threat? <laughs> Actually, we're gonna block the bishop and the f pawn and everything, and just threaten the checkmate. So, that's what White wants. Pretty a pretty nasty threat. Yeah. I would never prepare this. You as wouldn't threat. feel comfortable. I feel here. like there's something else that they're preparing because this is. I think every everyone uh, would take White as a in a situation where <laughs> hey i found a couple of cool ideas okay here we go for black yeah well oh, uh, okay one of them okay now it didn't work actually I was only looking at this one but you're gonna take with your bishop aren't you um yeah that one i wasn't uh, necessarily I go, like take... rookie eight what happened okay. to take with the queen we can look at that. yeah okay queen. i had an idea here so queen takes, queen takes and i wanted to go Queen h4, knight e7, king h8. Now, it's not my only idea. I mean, I have rook e8 as an option. But let's just try. I like using yeah. the queen to defend. I was just going to sit here. I was going to play like rook f1 or g3. Let's say, yeah, yeah. Rook, rook f1. Okay. You're bringing in your pieces. And what are you threatening? Not too Nothing. much yet. Not too much. Okay. I guess it's time for this rook to come into the game. So rook d8. Hmm. Well, it's on the board. We're probably going to see this line, Eric. That'll be, that, that's, that's, uh... Because Tan... This would be a very risky way to secure a draw, but I respect it. Yeah, Anna Anna played f4, and Tan did retreat bishop f6. So, I mean, I think the thing that you showed is one of the very logical ways that white can play. Are there others? I'm shocked right now. That position shows up on the board. Um, oh, I think it will. Okay, let's make a bet about it, Eric. I like to... Um, the exchange sack position, you think? I think... Wait, let me, let me see how far I'm comfortable going along with this. So, like, this... This, this. Because technically this, there could this, be G5, this, but it doesn't look good. This. Yeah. All right, let's make that bet. Okay. All okay. right. Um, it's, you know, the first few moves are pretty natural for Anna. And then Tan will just play the best computer moves, and she'll take the exchange because she knows that. Yeah, it'll... but the computer doesn't even, like, like the position. It doesn't dislike it. Doesn't it doesn't dislike it. But it gives it. full compensation for white, which... These days, especially in the women's section where they have a shorter time control. Okay, the good thing is Tan is up so much time, but practically speaking... One hour and 35. Exactly. That makes me confident in her preparation. Should be, otherwise somebody's getting in trouble. Oh, yeah. You know, well, like a preparing position. Yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Xiong no, no, would be the one, right? Okay, he's Jeffrey, he's okay. a Tan second in this okay. tournament. Yeah, but I actually think it's kind of a fascinating position, right? Like, for sure, White has a huge-looking initiative. So the only way you're feeling comfortable in this is black is like with some um, good computer prep. Because 
Um, well, taking what what else can white do? Do we have other options? Like it really doesn't feel like we should be trading that knight for the bishop. The other option is maybe taking on e5 and playing f6, but I kind of don't believe yeah. in that one on f6 with black stark squared bishop, and it's pretty committal. Interesting. Um, it's too, a line though. though. This is yeah. So this is very. This is another possibility, and this is a, a very ambitious way for black to play for the. Uh, situation but i but i like it it's more entertaining yeah because this looks unclear to me although yeah like you really gotta hope you're not getting made in here as yeah black, right? you're yeah i yeah. guess you always have 96 like i mean you can try to hold on i mean 97 is sometimes annoying it's definitely not obvious to me like i might make one That's move and it could just be losing right like i just played that move already white has the advantage yeah, that's why I'm a little bit surprised, but uh, her, the, the clock usage is, uh, is encouraging. Yeah, all we right. We spend much more time than we have on the position based on that clock usage. So, I mean, I, I do think that actually taking an F6 is a very tempting option for Anna, so I might lose my bet based on that line. Yeah. There is a chance. But, you know, I like to play it risky, so we'll see. That's going to be an exciting game. That's, uh, some people were probably worried, like... Mm -hmm. Anna's had a bit of a tough event. She's playing white, but doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to like go for a win. Um, sometimes people just want the tournament to finish, and then it'd be anticlimactic, like just a win, uh, tournament win for Tan Zongyi. She's a point up on the field, so um, this this kind of position uh, forces you as white to to wake up a little bit and look for critical variations. Like sometimes, like for me, if I'm having a bad event. Final round mentality is not always the high, like motivation is not the highest. But if the right position mm -hmm. presents itself, mm -hmm. I can wake up. Like, oh, like, so for some of the players, they're having a tough event. They probably feel like they just haven't had the prep go their way, positions go their way, where it's like, I had an opportunity to do something with position. Some of the, the preparation level is so high uh, at the candidates, you know, both the fields that some players have just not been getting positions probably that they they thrive in, they feel comfortable in, and if one of these positions like lights up somebody's like, you know, tactical uh, side, like like maybe the, the Anna and Tan Zong Yi game, that might wake her up and uh, all of a sudden she's she's back in it. She's gonna wanna she's changed her uh, her mindset. So yeah. We'll see. All right. Well, let's take a look at what's going on in Caruana versus Nepo. So after C6. Caruana did wind up castling queenside, knight d7. These were like the obvious moves. And we knew that he was going to make a decision pretty quickly with these pawns, and he did. He went for f4. I think we basically were talking about that position, Eric, but with knight yeah. d2 and queen e7 included. Yeah, and that was included because we put our bishop back to d6 or no? Because otherwise this is definitely <laughs> a better move order. Because your bishop g4 move was really annoying. Now mm -hmm. if I can play knight f3, then mm. the e3 pawn can be defended by a rook. So this makes more sense. Right, right. So he's trying to put the knight more actively. It's true that on e2, the knight actually doesn't really have any business. I any think. squares, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it shows my lack of understanding. Yeah, knight e2 is just not a good place for the knight. So white's trying to trap the bishop, and we need to react immediately. Taking seems to just favor white. Um... So what are we doing? I would be here? guessing bishop like g4 knight b4 still, no? Yeah, bishop g4 or like knight b6. Mm. I just thought like, well. There we go. Bishop g4. Yeah, bishop g4 makes and knight, knight f3. f3. Yeah. And now look at that. The engine kind of frowns upon this move slightly. And why? Why did it frown? I mean, right now, we are probably going to take you at some point. Yeah. Before you ever land on, like, E5. But we don't ha we don't need to do it for the moment. It's interesting now, though, because queen E7 runs into knight takes D5 sometimes if we're trying to queenside castle. Mm. But at the same time, if queen E7, I don't really want to play rook HE1. Kind of, like, lose my pressure on the H file that way. But I don't really want to play, like... But queen e7 is probably not the right move. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Like there's, So there's something here which is like a little better than the other options for black. What could it be? I mean, I don't think the queen should go all the way. 
we don't think it's taking on F4. <laughs> yeah, I mean, taking on F4 because there's even options of that, right? Yeah, I would, I would take with a e pawn, yeah. And then, like, try to get that king while he's still in the center. So, okay, let's ask ourselves, what is white's threat? Are you threatening this pawn? Not really. Mm. Bishop f5 might be annoying, mm -hmm. depending. I mean, we have that, these lines with bishop takes c3, it right. requires some, some calculation, but mm. the queen getting to f5 could be a big achievement uh, in certain positions. Hmm. But um, maybe f takes g5 is a threat. I mean, just the type of thing in that. If black takes on f3 and white gets g takes f3, that would be a pretty bad pawn structure for, for black. Still, we don't yeah, have... Yeah, we need to find a move for black. Yeah, Actually, we still need right. to find, find a move, move for, for black. black. It's not obvious, like, what mm. here is so good. I'm kind of willing to look at things like queen a5, actually. Queen a5? Even though I said in the beginning I didn't want to, but I was like, I'm willing. Okay. So I'll take on g5 with the f mm -hmm. pawn. Go for the sharpest. All right, so you got the tripled pawns. And you do have ideas of maybe trading off one of them if you would. If you get a chance one day. Queen Probably side castle. Queen side castle, yeah. you know, because that, the that was my idea to guard this pawn so I could castle. Yeah, this is interesting. I can't go bishop f5 yet. Yeah, because the queen is putting pressure. So that's one option. I don't know. It might not be the one, but it's it's an option. I just don't know where the knight on d7 goes. So intuitively, I'd want to move that knight from d7. I So I keep gravitating towards knight b6, and it being a bit of a Carlsbad like structure where the knight goes there and eventually goes to d6. Um, so you're worried about this knight? Yeah, I would want to, like... Because even the ideas where I was mentioning, I want a queenside castle. There's no time right now because of queen seven, rookie one, there's knight takes d5. So. so this move definitely we don't like, yeah? Well, look at that. The computer likes it. I wouldn't play it without, yeah, like a big thing. Yeah. Okay, let's look at EF. EF, the fun stuff. I mean, why did we just let this file against our king get opened? Well, this is where we need to... It wouldn't surprise me here if, like, the computer in general, like, somebody's it's going to recommend, like, bishop f3, queen f6. And, 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 and even king d8 somewhere. King, the king is going to be safe on a dark square. Wow. So king d8 or king f8, but d4 is yeah. going to be weak. h4 yeah, is a leader. Yeah, queen f6 even here, or should we take an f3 first? I wasn't sure, but I was trying to avoid any accidents, and I thought, yeah. if you take away that knight and we look at white's minor pieces, they're actually not dangerous pieces whatsoever this first of all I, I gotta say this is a yeah. crazy positional yeah. decision yeah like we're basically coming to it through the help of the engine bar and you know just the fact that we kind of yeah. know we're looking for something i mean the idea that you you know you take an f4 you open up the file against your king mm. you like hurry to take this knight and then you get stuck with your king getting checked. And by the way, there could be bishop e7 and the castle queen side, but that's still hard to do, yeah? Yeah. So like, let's say we give you a check. Which way are we going to do it? I'll go king f8. I... Just f8? Yeah. So if I'm going this way, just somehow, I don't know, yeah, maybe have great. that. So let's say, yeah, king f8. king f8. Wow. Is it? It could be king, king d8. It could be king d8. d8? Just... I don't see how white attacks. That's kind of my main problem with white's position is these are not the right yeah. pieces. So basically white is willing to enter this position because of the better pawn structure. Like this is weak. These pawns are not particularly amazing. The knight can't do much. And okay, the bishop's not too dangerous either. Yeah, this looks really good for black. Ah, uh, you know what we want? We actually can even take the knight at some point. Mm -hmm. Go king c7, maybe even that. Otherwise, it's a little hard to go king c7. I was going to go if you gave me time. Like, mm -hmm. h4 is a threat, but like bishop d6. Yeah. Um, knight b6. Mm -hmm. It's still, you need, the problem with those moves is maybe white just plays like rook e5. Yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. Analyze it, but yeah, you could take on c3. And, also, this pawn is weak too. Yeah, h4 is a super annoying move. Like, it's just a threat. It's just a strategic threat. Like, if we go here. 
Okay. What do you think would be the best move? Uh, I basically Jan would definitely turn. calculate queen takes d4 here. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, it's true, <laughs> but, that I, but I gave you that option. But there's right? like, yeah, there's bishop f5 after, and uh, Knight d5 stuff. Yeah, stuff. like some <laughs> probably not a good practical decision. This is a dangerous thing to take. Yeah, yeah. bishop f5 makes so much yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. And all these sacks. I mean, white actually does have some development here as opposed to black. So. I, I think, okay, so you like h4, I, I kind also. of agree, and by the way, I think we have a move from Fabi, he played knight f3, so yeah, that's not a surprise to us, it's gonna, well, knight f3 is not a surprise, but that's the move that allows think, black yeah. this interesting, interesting choice, so it's gonna be a fascinating moment right now for Nepo. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Fabi will take with the g-pawn on f4, like none of these positions here, he would be happy with like this there's something wrong about the you know the isolated pawn on d4 uh in the long run that's that's really really bad and the initiative doesn't look that valuable to me that i can't see him taking on such a bad structure mm. okay so i like your move h4 yeah. and i'm gonna say that also i think that bishop c3 here and king c7 could maybe Mm -hmm. warrants this evaluation of like point yeah. seven the computer is giving us. Because this bishop on d3 doesn't attack that king on c7 or contribute whatsoever. Mm, it's okay. But h4 wins the, wins the contest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, bishop c3 is not bad, but h4 is the move that gives black the advantage here. And white's pawns are too weak. I mean, yeah, I was thinking about g4, but okay. I mean, at some point you can take an f4 and maybe I don't have compensation for the pawn, yeah? Yeah, it's like opposite bishops, but the type of opposite bishops that actually does give one side significant winning chances because the weak pawns are all in the color of that bishop. And white doesn't have the same. Mm. So you're thinking that when, if Nepo does take here, yeah. which I think, look, I, I cannot really imagine this decision getting played. But maybe, maybe he'll do it because he'll feel like the pawn is just going to hang at some point. Yeah, I don't think it's a terrible move. I think G takes is the critical one here. Maybe the queen. Yeah, just the, yeah, like. But then he can do anything, right? I mean, he doesn't have to worry about this pawn. That idea comes back. Like, why? Yeah, why did why Fabiano go into this? Why is, like, why what's the problem? The, what's the problem with this position? I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, it's more like of a choice for black. Like, where does he want this queen? It's true. This doesn't seem like this is how you're supposed to even, punish the opening as, as white or, or get... Yeah, even get queen to... f6, I would say. But queen f6, I mean, I still can't really castle queen side. Right? So yeah. maybe... Which way should I go? e7. Yeah, I mean, black is very solid, yeah? Yeah, any sort point, of aggressive six maybe. Any aggressive move by white strengthens the bishops. Um, so I definitely like Jan's position. I don't so, think it's anything special, but I think black has already, you know, equalized in terms of dynamic. Uh, in the dynamics I could probably favor black with the bishop pair and weak pawn on e three. Well, it's the most he could have expected. Yeah. Playing with the black pieces trying to create an imbalanced position. He's got an imbalanced pawn structure and imbalance in the minor pieces. What else could he yep. do? That's and it, the right? center is solid, that pawn on d5, so I'll take some loose pawns on the king side. I'm not going to castle on the king side, so ha happily to trade that off. So yeah, I mean, I think this game is developing in a very nice scenario. In a way, for both players, mm -hmm. right? It's unbalanced enough for both of them. Um, they're not like relying on some theoretical knowledge, but just figuring things out over the board. And meanwhile, how are things developing for Hikaru? Um, he's got a few extra minutes compared to Gukesh, and he came up with the move Queen e2 on a6, b5, bishop a2. So, by uh, the way, I have mm -hmm. boring predictions. I think the games will be drawn, not because the games will be boring, but yeah. that Gukesh. Uh... I, I predict two draws in the critical games. Oh, wow. Yes. Based on the openings that you see. Yeah, but even beforehand, uh, I was a little concerned about that. 
Wow. That means but the I'm opening gonna... is not uh, scaring my prediction off because right. I just, I'm okay with Black's position here. And I'm impressed by Nepo's preparation as well. Well, at least we see a little utility for this pawn move to a3. It's not too dangerous, it's, it's, though. It is utility, but it also, like, dampens White's ability to... Attack? Attack, yeah. It's, that's, that's a move that, yeah, prophylactic, but then... Well, why does Black have any opening issues? Why isn't this, like, just simply a good Queen's Gambit accepted? Well, I mean, I think White is still going to try to push through this move at some point, right, if they can. One of the concerns, like, I don't know, like, with a3 and bishop a2 is if White doesn't get something concrete, the bishop on sometimes b7 will just be better than the bishop on e2 in terms of potential. All right, I'll make my prediction, okay. too, because we got to have okay. a counter prediction. Yes. I'm going to say that one of these two games is going to finish decisively. I thought you were going to pick a game, too. Okay, what? Well... <laughs> That's, I what mean, the enough? amount of decisive games, that's a pretty, okay, okay. That's a pretty safe prediction. Well, yeah, you know. But no, no, that's fair, that's yeah, fair. It's fair but you know, you it's can't like, say two out of two decisive games, that's a bit too much. So, okay, okay. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, given the positions we see also, you and know. And which game, just like, like, you don't have to make a prediction, but game, it's more likely. Honestly, I can't tell at this point. The openings are not okay. telling me enough that I would tell. Like, for example, this game is just in, in its infancy. Like, of course, we know black is fine, but we really don't have anything like set for the middle game yet. Yeah. Right? So Nepo game looks promising, but... It's not symmetrical. That's why I kind of favor the Nepo game. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But, but that's the thing. I feel yeah. like it's actually too early for me to make like a okay. prediction based okay. on those openings. Um, I so predict yeah. if anybody wins, it'll be Jan. Even though I'm a bit biased towards Fabiano, I uh -huh. I'm, haven't been that mm. thrilled with the openings overall mm -hmm. that he's had throughout the candidates. Um, yesterday's game was super nice, and I liked how aggressively he played the the black side and getting that black win. But yeah, um, today unless we're missing something, I'm I'm still waiting for that like preparation to to pay off. Mm. Yeah, no, it looks like Nepo came with some good preparation today. How's the prey game going? Just just to see. Uh... All right. We got a King's Indian on the board with G3 line, E4, rookie eight, rookie one takes, takes, C6. And the knight got pulled back. Attack on C4. Mm, interesting. So the queen defends D6. Yeah, you give up D5 mm -hmm. for, for long term. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Because how do you defend C4 right now? Yeah. So if this, we go... This feels like something Prag has kind of looked at structurally. Like mm. he has some experience. In the, like you don't play C5 yeah. without understanding what's going on. That's way too committal. So let me explain why this is... Actually, might I, have do think, I think you might have to, <laughs> yeah. might not be so bad. Yeah. Because I was thinking when you take, like, I mean, after ED... Bishop f5, first of all, even that is kind of interesting because there's actually f4. You're trying to trap the bishop? Yeah, well, yeah. I was trying to at least get rid of your active pieces. So maybe we just go for this. But then, okay, here, I was looking at that. Do you have something tricky? Uh, yeah, I don't see it, but it's, it's lurking. Maybe it's just knight d7. Yeah. Because you don't, if you don't drop the bishop, then yeah. that bishop on g7 is a monster. The knight goes to f6, e4 is a hole. I got to say that this knight is awful on this square. Totally awful. a5 is coming. But yeah, yeah, e takes d5 is probably just like, if c takes yeah, d5, you kind of get what you're If I go for. very aggressive, I mean, yeah. your bishop goes to e4, and I'm not really catching it. It's kind of a dream for, for black players here to... Beautiful bishop. Even if it yeah. was a bit better for white, I don't think Prague would have an issue with like a, a very sharp position with counterplay that might be objectively a bit better for white. So what I realized though, that actually I can go for this position, and like a Benoni you, structure. Yes. And this way you don't have f5 square. This looks, this looks good. I mean, I still don't have an amazing knight, but the problem is... We'll eventually get it to yeah, c4, right? Like the thing here is that you actually have a problem with f4, right? It's uh Yeah. 
the knight is trapped. So you have to go all the way to c8. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then we're in this Benoni structure, and certainly this plan will one day happen. I mean, we could start with f4. Mm -hmm. We have to think if we want to leave that pawn hanging. But there's a element of control over the position yeah. for white right now. Like, I wouldn't even mind this move and, like, sacking the... Or queen d2 two. pawn, queen c2, queen maybe. c2, yeah, so many moves, right? So, knight d5 is, is a viable way to guard things. So, does black not capture on d5 with the knight? They no, I think they take with the bishop. I think it's taking with the bishop and playing uh, this, this structure. Mm. And I, I like it. Here I can take like this, of course, right? Yeah, you probably have to because the pawn's hanging. But now, um, a5. You mentioned the knight on b b3 is weak. Yeah. I agree. a5 not, might not be the right move, but I'm just like curious what... Yeah. Well... Okay, I'm going to tell you, in general, I don't mind this position as white because I got the spade you do, and you I do got the secure. bishop pair. So as long as I, first of all, have... Okay, rook b1, I think, is interesting. Looks like a good move. I, I, Queen yeah. c2 is also interesting. Rook b1 is like... Queen c2 yeah. runs into my tricks. That's what oh, I, was like, I yeah, forgot that, about that. That's yeah. the only thing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my only trick. Um, yeah. So let's just say like a4, knight d2. Knight d2, yeah. And we are on I've run out of, I've run out of tricks now. And then yeah. I don't think black is uh, equalized. So you have to be a little careful here as black. Like if, I mean, where, let, let's think about where would the equality be? Because it's somewhere there, so it must be quite specific. I mean, do you need to move quickly to try to play the move f5? Yeah, or some the... Benoni ideas where you move the knight and go f5. It could be, I mean, queen b4 doesn't... Queen yeah, queen b4, move. bishop d2. And queen takes d2. Knight takes d2. Oh! That's your knight on b3. Yeah, not that horrible knight. That's the... Yeah, otherwise it'd be Yeah, yeah okay. Let's just show people oh, wait, what, what, what I blundered. So, like, I was hoping to catch queen Eric in this tactic, yeah. you know, where, like, we, we make this fork. But, unfortunately, we forgot about the knight that was going to recapture and or that square so i get the position now though this is the right move and you put your queen on a4 for sure yeah that, that, that has to yeah be yeah yeah and you have to like try to keep this pawn under pressure yeah yeah and the knight on b3 is just very poorly placed here and the queen on a a4 is safe yeah this this gives some kind of play i'm not saying black's okay but it yeah. makes some sense as a way of putting mm -hmm. pressure yeah because also you do actually want to improve this queen as well it's not amazing on b6 right could sort of stand a little more act actively. Queen a6, I'm curious by the way. Queen a6, same idea, but... Same idea, probably worse square, you know? I'm just wondering where, yeah. Yeah, because now, like, the knight can go to d2, right? Yeah. We want the knight to stay on b3 as black, because that's, like, a bad piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe knight d2 here, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so... Well, that's interesting. I mean, I guess... I feel like the onus is a little bit on black to play this accurately, like sure. yeah. to maintain that equal evaluation. Um, but they do seem to have enough counterplay. And I think Abbasov, he's still thinking after bishop e6, how to guard this pawn. Does he have any other options? So knight d2 just simply blunders the b2 pawn. Yeah, so if you go, let's say you go knight d2, it is an inter that's probably what he's actually looking at. Mm -hmm. Because queen takes b2, there's knight b5. Sort of... mm -hmm. You're trying to trap the queen. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, knight b5 is a soup, like, it attacks a bunch of things, and there's queen trap ideas, which yeah. I don't know if they work, but mm. it's close. It's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, actually, as black here, you'd also feel... I'd be scared of going scared, to this block, yeah. because everything's actually defended for white. Like, all the tactics work out. I feel like I'll make one move here for black and lose, you know? <laughs> like, for example, I mean, first of all, the queen cannot get out. I don't know, should we try rook d8, Eric? Uh, we should, but it's not going to like it. I, oh, it doesn't hate it too much. No, no, it doesn't lose, it doesn't lose. It doesn't lose, Where's, it's all yeah. right, it's all right. It likes it enough. It just, what, it just no, that's, that's, it wasn't love at first sight. It wasn't but, love at, no, that, that's... The onus is on white to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. There might be a way to... I mean, you can make... <laughs> make it is this a repetition? Like, I guess this queen is... Yep. 
not getting out, but we're not actually trapping it. So either no. way. No. Okay. We so, found a draw. Yeah. So there is something for him to think about. So there's and knight d5, be... knight d2. Honestly, I think knight d2 is more likely to be played. I think I, I don't I think white's like thrilled about that position with a knight on d3. Okay. Okay. Hold on, Eric. So you go knight d2. Yeah. Let's say I'm not crazy about taking that pawn. Let's say I go for positional stuff. Let me just think about what you're threatening. Is f4 a threat? But positionally, black played c5. That's such a mm. bad move that, okay, like you, yeah, you do have those ideas. So f4, I have still have knight c6. I have knight c6 I would just build immediately. Up this way. I'm just like going to play b3, rook c1. You do get the d4 square, but I'm happy that. The C5 move has been played. So if I make a really just like random move. That makes sense, yeah. What exactly is your way of getting an advantage? Probably like if you go F4. Do you F4, Knight C6? Knight C6, yeah. yeah. Well, we're in sort of normal King's Indian evaluations here. Yeah. <laughs> like. Which may or may not be good. You know, Black's risk factor has gone up a little bit. In, in yeah, one, well, one... a6 was not, let's say, the yeah. most productive move, but even that move is like Black's position is still playable. Um, but maybe if you don't want to take the pawn, do you think it's time to just start maneuvering this knight? Yeah, I just don't like... It doesn't feel like uh, this was the opening plan. Really? To just like get that d4 square, yeah. but give up. Like, why did the queen go to b6 type of thing if if not to kind of like play against that knight on b3 play against that pawn on b2 if you just wanted the d4 square you can there's other ways to like mm. get a piece there it feels like a very slow way to just put one knight on d4 okay let's go to Carolina Neto yes. because we do have some movements there um actually quite big movement so after knight of three, queen e7 was played. You see, this move, it was just a little too hard for a human. Maybe. Maybe. You know, like, I'm not surprised that Nepo didn't go for that one. Okay, he went for queen e7. Very logical. e4 by Fabi, also logical. Mm. And now bishop takes c3. So things are getting into a very specific, uh, yeah. concrete phase. I was never convinced by bishop takes c3. Because I keep saying, right. I think when white plays e4 and black dissolves or liquidates in the center, I like the bishop pair. So, this move. Big question, though. I mean, yeah, the computer does not queen love takes. this Let's idea queen at all. Takes. You want to do the queen takes and like play for the... Uh, Just to see e5. that first. Yeah. Because ideally, we, we want to take with the queen. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I mean, first of all, let's just point out white's simple positional threat of that. Yeah. Because that's already enough to give white uh, some kind of advantage. And that's not even talking about like more specific things, like, mm. I don't know, taking and trying to win the queen somewhere. This looks co concrete. Take mm -hmm. on e4. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes e4. Problem is, I don't know what to do, because maybe even queenside castling here, there's some bishop takes e6. Something like the position's opened up, and there's no more bishop pair. And the bishop that I like is black starks for bishop. Yeah. That's disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, you like Nepo's winning chances less after that trade? No, now no, my prediction looks really bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, my, my prediction is starting to look better. Yeah, yeah. Because all I said was one decisive game, you know, and Nepo's subpar, you know, trade here sort of makes that yeah. a little more likely. I guess we should look at what the options were because it's easy to make yeah. this decision. I can be a mm -hmm. bit critical, but maybe there's something about taking on E4 that he didn't like. Yeah, well, there were so many moves here for black, right? Because this so... is kind of my logic. Let's say you take on e4, like, quickly, like, d takes e4 here. Uh-huh. Uh, knight, knight how would e4. Knight e4. Probably, yeah. Uh, take on f4. I'm okay. just going to just... Yeah, you're just... I'm just going to say the bishops are good in open position. And now right. queen, and then you want to queen, castle. Queen castle. Five. And that... This is what I've been kind of arguing for mm -hmm. throughout the position, that it should favor the bishops, unless there's a tactic here. Okay, so really this move removes a lot of like attacking and counter-attacking mm -hmm. possibilities for yeah. black, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I hate the idea, Eric, that when we go into this position, we have the bishop pair, it's our main trump, 
and then we're supposed to hold on to it no matter what, mm -hmm. right? And like here, in terms of um, being better, it's going to be hard for Black to to make the case that they can ever really be better from this position. So yeah, a little. The surprising. case of being better is that let's say you take on e4, you can say like if you have time, which we yeah. don't, and you take on f4 or something. Just say g takes f4 that. If black gets castle, then white has all these loose pawns, yeah. isolated pawn, but tactically that doesn't work. So let's let's see the move castle's yeah. queen side. We were supposed to find a good move here for white. You're threatening my bishop. Bishop takes c6. We're analyzing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going for uh Okay. But bishop takes c6. It doesn't, doesn't work, work, does it? Does it? I was even just looking at like moving the king out of the way. Alright, you're gonna try to go like for ninety five somewhere. Alright, let's it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work because I think we just kind of we don't have step a follow away. No, I just wanted yeah. to check it. Yeah, okay. play a bad move. Get it out of my system. Okay, I'll, let's play a good move, Eric. Let's go here. That's a medium move. Is there some, let's look. Let's look for the best. Oh, what is that? Point that's ambitious. Eight? Oh, I like. Oh. Yeah, I like. I like to look for the best moves. Um, point eight evaluation. I can see why. Nepo, because I'm being critical of his yeah. move, but I can see why somebody would think this is good for black. Mm. And I would also think it's good for black unless we discover yeah. what the move is because white's position still looks loose mm -hmm. unless something punishes black's yeah. position. Like. So you're kind of saying, okay, first of all, like even if I do make this move, it's, I mean, not terrible looking, right? I'm threatening some sort of discovery. Yeah, so let's say... Queen move somewhere. D6? I mean, Nepo surely calculated this. Maybe this is exactly what he's anticipating. So yeah, let's say Queen D6. I feel like there's also... D5, are you worried about? or Yeah, there are discoveries on the Queen here. Yeah. I mean, if I move my king, and maybe it's this one that I'm worried about. Yeah. Right. So, like, there is a discovery, but Which that's is the why funny the thing king... is, this one I actually wanted to provoke you to do. Yeah. Then use the C file. Yeah, yeah. But this one I wasn't so sure. Like, okay, maybe I have to sack something here. Like, my actually the bishop's protected. So why am I worried? You. I thought you were worried about <laughs> bishop takes g4, knight takes g5. G5. Yeah. Which isn't the end of the world, but it's still a pawn. Yeah, but okay, let's say we make some other move for black, which maybe is more prudent with the queen. It's not easy to find moves. Yeah, let's give queen this one. Queen d6 is the main one, but... Give this one a whirl. But even d5 was concerning to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then I have to go for something better. Queen... Do you think it's simply bishop, bishop takes f3, f3 and, then and queen, queen f6? f6? Yeah. yeah, it could be that one, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, not that one. Why not Because if bishop one? takes c6. Bishop takes c6. Oh, right away. <laughs> like that. Hey, the idea finally oh, worked. I'm probably go. wrong. Good. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the discovery on the queen is powerful. Okay. So there's still some We're room here. We're struggling here. This is not good. Oh no, it's normal, Eric. That's how it works. <laughs> this is how it works when you when you gotta test yourself against the engine. You know, we I've been doing this for a couple of weeks, so we're doing fine. <laughs> you gotta give me some hints here. What do you think the engine thinks here? Yeah. So Where would the engine place the queen on e seven, or would right. it just like ignore it and play like? Well, the problem is with this move is mm. at some point, I was a little worried that you would take here. Is that not an issue? I mean, it feels like an issue. Then queen g7 or something? Is it like some really deep maneuvering? I mean, you know, that's what looks a little crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, no, no. <laughs> this one, probably not what we're looking for. But it is uh -oh. it is mysterious. Like something here is really holding the balance for black. Like in some clear way. We can try to, yeah, we can try to figure this out. Yeah. Um, so what do we have on the board? So queen c3 is on the board. So Nepo is thinking right here. G takes f4, bishop takes, he's, G takes f4. Uh -huh. and, then, and then maybe going yeah. for that. 
Uh huh. Yeah, because basically the discovery is not the most. Well, it is, it is dangerous. It is dangerous. What but is the, the, computer, the is on C8. I had to guess what the computer would be okay with, and yeah, it is this because let's say Bishop takes C6. Yeah. Queen. Uh, yeah, it looks scary because wow. the Bishop takes. I mean, there's no way like anyone is going for this. Because there's it's Bishop black. takes D7, double check, and Knight E5. So who's how how is this holding together? Exactly. Black? Exactly. This is uh, not what I signed up for. Yeah, that's, this is actually crazy because like no no human would ever look at this position and be like, I'm okay with this situation. But we're trying to figure out what Nepo saw because the positions aren't looking good and his decision will look questionable yeah. unless one of the, he plays actually one of these hard to find moves. But I think the decision is questionable. Anyway, because it's not a matter of him trying to equalize and yeah, simplify he had the another, game, he had right? Playable move that yeah. was better. Yeah, I mean, for his situation, like trying to get into worst position that holds is not like really okay for today. So, um, like, let's see what he's got in this one, though. This is some like computer stuff. So let's just say like queen d6 here. Yeah. Bishop takes d7. King b8. King b8. Really? That's yeah. That That's so be. crazy, though. That's so crazy. Like you want you want that c8 square to win my queen. Yeah, your knight. That's just insane, right? Yeah. yeah. Like this bishop is hanging. Uh, you know, but winds yeah. up a piece. They cannot hold the piece properly because of rook c8. Yeah, let's just say like bishop takes. I mean, that here. is such a crazy line. Yeah. The knight's hanging and rook c8 is coming. Okay, so this line will never ever happen. Yeah. Ever. You're you're safe oh, in yeah. that prediction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm safe. Let's let's go back though, because we did uncover some cool things. So basically, we don't really love what Nepo has done. Um, it's not clear, you know, what was the necessity for this whole thing. And I think really, like, he just missed a big chance in this position. This was the key if he wanted to keep this game going in like unbalanced way. It's not a hard move to find, but there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. For both players right now. To... I mean, I, I do think this move, is, it was kind of hard. Mm -hmm. But he might have had other options as well. But this one, this one opening the e-file, like at first we weren't really enthused by it. But then we were seeing how it actually works together. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he goes queen e7, very natural. But Fabi's move is also very natural. You know, protecting the pawn and just trying to open the e-file. While black's king and queen are there. So then he decides to try to bail out with his trade, but it's not so simple. So we're looking at DE, bishop, bishop e4, takes. and well, castle queenside was at least a natural try for black. But I think black Nepo's going to find that hard to play line. That's my prediction. A hard to play line. That computer line. But right. If you don't find it, you're really uh, in trouble here. Like, like you mean after rook h1, Yeah, right? because yeah. like this is all anticipated. Uh, both players are for sure calculating this. So it's just going to force him to... No, I, I, I think the chances of playing this move in this position are zero. Like, but if really... he's analyzing rook e1, what... We didn't find moves for black. So yeah, he would already get desperate, find, yeah. like, desperate like right before. We didn't find anything that was quite holding it together, right? Well, we saw, like, what did we say? Like, king b8 was not, like, horrendous, right? No, there were other moves, right? So, like, this was, like, so the human king, move. So, but then I was saying, are you just giving up a pawn, bishop f5? Yeah, I guess like, I somehow am. So They're, they're kind of human, like, because it's a weird position. You're, yeah, it's true. You do just you're you're giving up a discovered... Care. Attack, you're giving up a full pawn. The knight goes to g5. You do get like your knight to d5, d5. or something. Maybe so I... that's it. Maybe queen f6. Okay. Either way, it looks like even this line yeah. though, still hard to play. It's more likely than the other line, but yeah. it's not it's not something you want to have to resort to where you're you are giving up a, a yeah, full pawn. Yeah, and I mean basically like no chances to win at all for black, right? So um, yeah, Fab would be extremely happy to, to get this. But yeah, this is very tricky too for Black. It's like how to even get this compensation. And we didn't find other moves. Like these are. It's like I'm, all, I'm I just have I'm having to guess. 
right? So like, I don't know. Because F7 is mm -hmm. going to hang after knight g5. Right. So well, queen f6 is, I thought, oh, you're trying to guess what, I'm, is there I'm, a better I'm, move here? I'm guessing what can hold this 0.3 valuation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even this is hard, right? Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Very so hard. Then, I mean, well, the only other move is like... We only have an, one more move. Right. That's so, funny. Okay. All right. If that's what it is. I mean... Okay, so now out of all these moves, you think queen f8? <laughs> it's easy? No, I don't. I don't think this is very, very, like, findable for black. And I have no idea why this is not even worse than it is, because white has just won a pawn. Yeah. Um, why is this sort of holding together? Yeah, just arguing it's not a full in. pawn. The knight at some point will will find stability and doubled pawns. That's not giving it a full pawn eval, but very hard to play this practically. Yeah, difficult, and in his situation, certainly not what he wants. So, you know, it's interesting how in chess it's like you gotta catch those moments, you know, because it would have been way better for him to have had that big think before this position yeah right like what's the point of entering and now thinking for like 20 minutes it feels like he's overlooked something like yeah pretty trivial for it's his standards better better to have been thinking after night of three spend 20 minutes here and go for the right plan you know yep. so but it's a very common scenario right you just play the natural queen e7 it's the most obvious move and then you figure you can deal with things and then you can't yeah a bit of overthinking so we got e4 and this position on the board after bishop c3, queen c3, and Nepo is still trying to figure out how he's dealing with this opening of the center that Fabi has presented him with. And now, by the way, let's take a look at Naka versus Gukesh. Um, after b5, bishop a2, Gukesh decided to go for the isolated pawn position. I'm trying to simplify things with b4. And knight e4 is on the board. I'm guessing... Things are getting traded. Yeah. Let's say knight d7. Mm, interesting. Okay, development is your... We could go bishop b7. I just wasn't sure. Is, yeah. Do we worry B4, about b4 hanging uh -huh. or not? Or or you said things getting traded. So does that mean maybe just take on a3? You know, I, I bet we can even make bishop b7 work. You know, like knight of six. If you do go for that one, maybe, sure. maybe you need to go for like knight c5, right? Probably, probably you do. You know, but like right. if you were going this knight F6, way, Bishop F6. yeah, I don't think the problem is that we're losing this no. pawn because there's knight c6 in the end. Yeah, knight c6 looks right. I just kind of get all my pieces out and everything hangs. Black is very happy with this opening. The bishop on a2 can look bad sometimes. That's what kind of concerns me about the setup mm. is it just aimed at e6 if there's no, no other coordination surrounding that. Um, it's going to be worse than the bishop on b7. Knight d7 is very solid. Yeah. It's a very solid developing move. Whenever you get pieces out, you know, it's never a bad thing. So that's a move. Bishop b7 is a move. And yeah, pawn takes a3. I did think it was a move. Um, we might as well look at the most obvious trades. I yeah. think Gukesh is okay with that. And Because pawn takes pawn is not impressive. It really is not. This position, I'm yeah, I'm not optimistic at all for white. Yeah. Because it just doesn't wow. feel like black moves aren't challenging. So it, the position could be equal, but hard to play. You know, but we're seeing all these moves. They all look fine for black. But look, here's a possible scenario based on what we see yeah. in these two games, which is that this is going to be a draw and Fabiano is going to win. Mm -hmm. And that could lead us to a tie break. Yes. That, okay. So, I mean, it's at least kind of being a little bit visible, you know. You can you, visualize it. Yeah. Yeah. We're still far away from that, but I think... So far, if we had to predict, that would be what I would say now. Yeah, this game is looking more and more like a draw. And the problem with this position in front of us is if White or Hikaru is like, I got to go for the win here, then you're looking at situations where Black will just have a preferable position. And because of the isolated pawn on d4, trades only weaken that. 
where it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't even know how you press this for a win. Like, I, I would consider it just objectively not good. Right. And that just would just give Black uh, more counterplay. Yeah, well, you know, see, Guka, she's, I think, got the right idea with this B4 move. He's, like, really trying to force the issue, right? Like, and it's so unpleasant for Hikaru to be seeing these forcing scenarios where things are coming off the board. Yeah. So I do like B4 by by Gukesh, and I think, you know, so far he's handling this game very well. The opening has been a success from what I can tell, a big success, because um, this is not what Hikaru is, uh, was cooking. You can see by the time usage, Gukesh is up five minutes, nothing crazy, but it's certainly not a position I think uh, Hikaru has much experience playing and can't really... It's already like, yeah, non-standard, um, but not in a good way. Not in a good way for white. Where the imbalance is favorable, it's not here. Well, Abasa versus Prague actually, I think, went with that knight d5 move. Knight d5. By the way, it would be really cool if Abasa could get his first win of the tournament in the last round. It right? would be. Yeah. I think this will be a long fighting game. Maybe we uh, take a break now and uh, the next... When we come back, we'll have some more updates from this one. What do you think? That sounds great. Well, yeah, the atmosphere today, by the way, at the venue is amazing. So many chess fans are here. Yeah, there, there. I saw like a hundred people waiting outside just, just to catch a glimpse of the players. So some chess paparazzi. And we have a video good. for you guys um, to show you what's going out on outside the venue today. And we'll see you after the break. We're standing outside of the Great Hall where all the excitement is taking place today. Let's find out who the fans are rooting for. Good, good cash. Good cash. Great. Hikaru for sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. So I'm rooting for Hikaru. Yes, I'm hoping that he would win the candidates and challenge Ding and the, for the World Championships. Yes. And in the women, 10 or lay? Uh, for 10. 10. Yeah. Uh, for Karwana. Yeah, Karwana. definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think the Nakamura. Nakamura? Yeah. Karwana, Nakamura. Uh, the same. <laughs> uh, we got a good cash here at the back. Good cash. Not since the 2008 final round of the Olympiad have I been this excited. You remember it well. <laughs> Both USA and USA women were fighting for medals. And in fact, Hikaru played that tournament and was partially living in Canada. So everything comes full circle now, doesn't wow. it? Wow. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Thanks for having me on. Of course, good cash. Good cash, of course. Who are you rooting for? S good cash, for sure. Good cash. And woman, lay or ten? Lay. Yeah, she's done very well, mm -hmm. but I think, yeah, I think, think she can make a comeback. I think so. I think she'll pull through for sure. She's prepping for this day and she'll do very well today. Uh, I want Fabi to win. Fabi to win. Yeah. I want Fabi to win too. Fabi. He clinched the last, <laughs> <laughs> clinched, the, yeah, he clinched the last round, so, and we always rooted for him from the beginning. Plus, Hopefully. I, I listened to his podcast, he seems like a really, really nice, nice guy, guy. so, yeah. yeah. And he grinded his game against yeah. Prague for like yeah. six hours yesterday. Oh, to yeah. win. That was brutal, but good for him, yeah. And in the women, do you think Tan is taking it home or can Lane make a comeback? I think she has a pretty good chance. Yeah, yeah it just needs a draw and yeah. they're done. Yeah. I, I think she's got it, yeah. <laughs> good cash. Good cash. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's everyone's answer that I've heard today. <laughs> and women, do you think Lei can make a comeback or is this Tan's game? I think she can make a comeback. <laughs> So then we'll have tie breaks and we'll be here for some more chess tomorrow. Yeah, it's more fun if it goes longer. <laughs> well, I'm rooting for Gukesh because it's going to be very interesting if he get, gets to challenge for the world title. And he's 17, so young, but, you know, I think it will be very interesting. And I think he has a chance against Ding Liren because he's not been informed these days. I think it'd be great if someone like uh, Hikaru or uh, Fabi wins because I think it would bring more chess to North America. And I think... You know, that's what we really want. It's the first time we've had the candidates in North America. Um, it's like a real, it's a real treat to have this here in Canada. It's, it's awesome and uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. And so, you know, more, more chess in North America, the better. Um, probably Gukesh, but it's pretty exciting if anybody won, so. <laughs> yeah, Hikaru, Mr. Juicer himself. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll make it easier for you.
What was that about? I thought it would help. How does that help? You no, know, visualization and stuff. I'm not picking up the pieces. Sometimes you don't need to do anything crazy to get better. You just need to reassess your chest. I'm Grandmaster Maurice Ashley, and I'm presenting Jeremy Silman's How to Reassess Your Chest, now on Chessable. We're here with the man who needs no introduction, Rex Sinkfeld. How are you, Rex? Welcome to Canada. I'm fine, thank you very much. You know, when you usually say something like, uh, you know, you don't have to say anything about him or he needs no introduction, the real version of that is the less said, the better. <laughs> And uh, Rex, you've been in the chess world for a very long time. You've seen... Since the age of 13, yeah. You've seen generations of players coming up. You've seen the good, the bad. What do you think about today's chess climate? We've got youngsters coming up. I mean, Gukesh, just 17 years old. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's amazing. Frankly, I would like to see many more girls come up 
because we're still far behind in the ratio of girls to boys or women to men. And the only way that's going to change is if we get them early and keep them. See, we've, we've been getting them. at they, they start at the same ratio, the same boys, same girls, same number. But then the girls drop off. So we have to figure out how to stop that. And I don't know the answer. Of course, you run St. Louis Chess Club, which is the chess hub of U.S. and I think the world at this point. <laughs> Do you feel like you are doing anything in this regard of getting girls into chess and keeping well, them we're there? At it. We're very active at it. Joy Bray right there behind you is our manager. She's the one to talk to. Uh, but we are doing quite a bit. and We have a lot of tournaments for women. When we have a tournament for men, there's usually one right alongside for women as well. Well, that could help, like the candidates, what we're having here. We have, yeah, all of our big tournaments, we have a, a female duplicate right next to it. And uh, a lot of your big tournaments take place at St. Louis, right? Like you have really every huge tournament in the U.S. happens here. Do you think about spreading out at some point, or do you think that this is where chess is nestled in and this is the hot spot? Well, it sounds like you're asking me, am I thinking of, Today, St. Louis, tomorrow, the world. I don't actually have that mentality, but I like the way you're thinking. Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to, to keep them in St. Louis. It's easy for everybody to get to. It's in the center of the country, uh, and it's an incredibly beautiful city. There's loads of art and culture there. It's the home, you know, of the great British poet T.S. Eliot, who was born and raised two blocks from where I live. You know, and I like to tell you he learned his poetry from me, but he was many decades ahead of me. <laughs> Uh, of course, this is the first time a candidate is being held in North America. You have super GMs. I mean, Fabi Nakamura, they're playing for the title right now. Lots of big events. But an event of this stature being in North America for the first time, it's an exciting step for chess. It, it's definitely an exciting uh, event, but it's really surprising that it's the first time. That, I, you know, people could have made me bets that that wasn't true, and I would have taken the bet and lost money. Yeah, we have to correct that more often, though. Yes, well, we might have a challenger from the U.S., right? Oh, and this could... There. Yeah. And uh, speaking of, of course, we have our two Americans, but do you have a favorite in the tournament? I am officially neutral. But I'm not personally neutral, but just officially. <laughs> okay, well, then I guess off the record, we'll find out what your personal... Uh, yes, sometime. Thank you so much, Rick. It was lovely talking to you.
in the realm of kings and queens, only a select few dare to claim the ultimate crown. Witness the birth of legends, a victor in the open and woman section. We're back to witness one of the most important days of the chess year and to see who of Naka, Nefor, or Fabi can catch Gukesh um, in this candidates. And right now, it does look like Gukesh is holding his own against um, Naka and has played a very solid opening. And there's more of excitement in the game between Caruana and Nepo. Um, after Nepo took on f3, white captured with the pawn, and then after the next capture on e4, he thought for a while and decided to capture with the bishop, which the engine actually does slightly prefer to the pawn capture, which of course would probably be the first thing to think about, right, Eric? Like, why not yeah. capture with the pawn and undouble those pawns? No, that's much more aesthetically pleasing, but there's something concrete in the position. Just want to say, yeah. like, when you intro it, you know, just processing that Naka, Nepo, Fabiano, three players that have been top 10 elite players for 10, 15 years, it feels like, are chasing a 17-year-old making his debut at the Canada. Yeah. Like, that's kind of remarkable when, I, when I'm really processing that. And it certainly overturns the theory that experience is, like, the key element to win a candidate. Yeah. Um, because... Well, Gukash, you know, it's funny. He was asked this, this question at the press conference, like, how does he keep his focus or his stamina in the, in the fifth hour of play? Because that seems to be where a lot of his opponents are making mm -hmm. mistakes, and he's not. And he talked about, you know, physical fitness. And he's like, well, at the end of that, he was like, well, maybe age is a factor, too. Oh, okay. there we go. <laughs> that's, I think that's about good. as edgy as Gukash gets. That's a good one. You know? That's not good for Point me, but... Yeah pointing out that, hey, maybe I have an advantage in that because I'm only 17 years old and I'm playing these guys who are twice my age. No, definitely doesn't have any fear of, of those established uh, premier players. And uh, yeah, I, I played Gukesh 2019. He was like a 13-year-old GM. Mm -hmm. And then COVID happened. And then, you know, these guys emerged <laughs> super grandmasters. It's like time has flown by, but a very remarkable ascent. Yeah, well, Gukesh, you know, he keeps talking about, like, how he just tries to play one good game after the other, right? So, you know, same answer, day after day, very kind of uh, stable, mm -hmm. stable in that, right? Doesn't express too much emotion other than I'm just doing my best here. So, yes, there's pressure, but I'm just going to play my game. And, um, you know, that approach, it seems to be working for him. Yeah, I, I don't know where... If it's from coaching, you know, I was raised like to, to handle the spotlight the way he has been. Like it's, it's uh, usually takes a long time to develop, but yeah, he's, uh, it's true that I don't feel like he's under too much pressure despite the situation. Maybe, maybe because he is like 17, because no one really expected anything from him. He's getting this chance. It's not that like, you know, I think he also has the confidence to believe that he can win this. Mm -hmm. Right, but maybe not like the pressure that yeah. comes with being a front runner the way, you know, let's say someone like Fabiano is or Nepo. Yeah, and then with also like India now with so many premier players, you know, before Vichy was just carrying the country for a very long time, there are a few contenders, so it's a bit distributed. It's not like everyone here is, you know, from India just cheering for you know, Gukesh, they have Vidit, they have Prague. Um, but yeah, I was just in the, just went downstairs to, to check in. I saw... Fabiano's uh, second uh, Christian Carrillo here. He seemed pretty optimistic about mm. uh, how the game was going. Okay. Try to, you know, just check in and see how the vibes were. Um, and uh, I'm not too surprised because uh, I think the, the general feedback is Nepo made a bit of a hasty decision a few moves ago mm -hmm. and is now paying the price. Mm -hmm. um, Gukesh looking around actually at the screen to see what else is, what, what else is going on. Um, so we have a move finally from Nepo. He has taken on F4. Mm. Okay, I mean, certainly makes sense to uh, maybe double up White's pawns if that's the move that White's gonna be playing, right? Because White can sort of think about a move other than G takes F4. Yeah. 
It should take C6. Stands out. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, I don't know what's happening there. You know, there's Rook C8 as a move. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the logic, what Nepo's doing, I think he made that decision quickly, which I don't mind, is let's, if White recaptures the pawn, and there's some positions where White even wins the pawn, the quality of those pawns is so weak that there are going to be some situations where Black, Black has good holding chances, which, mm. although unfortunately isn't good for either player, um, is, is there. Um, yeah. White can be better, but just having a set of double pawns, isolated double pawns, that isolated queen's pawn. Yeah, actually, structurally, black is better. Yes. Yeah. So it's like things can go wrong here for white if they make some inaccurate move. Um, but of course, white still has a chance to like fight for the initiative with this bishop, like points it at the king, these constant ideas of d5. Um, but actually, white has to kind of act quickly in a type of position like this, right? Yeah, so I don't even like taking back on f4, maybe. Well, yeah, this would be good for my prediction. There's a lot of liquidations. I'm wondering if there's something right here after, you know, after G takes. takes. Yeah, well, I'm thinking like this move. Let's try that. Uh, so we want to go and like win your queen somehow. Queen side castle? Is that too crazy? Well, we've tried a lot of crazy lines. I think that sort of uh, fits into that. So you're saying, okay, go ahead and move your bishop to c6. Mm -hmm. I'll move my queen. And we've had that crazy line, right, where yeah. bishop d7, king d7 happened, or even king b8 was happening. Yeah, here queen d6 or queen f6 feel correct. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of trades are happening as a result. Let's say, which one do, would you want to go here? All right, let me just calculate. There's no more knight on bit. the board, so it's a bit helpful. So I go here, yeah. you're probably going to take. I mean, then king b8, you don't really have as an option. So your idea is what, king, having a king on d7? Yeah, that's why I that's wasn't sure about crazy. queen d6. Queen d6 feels more intuitive to me. Yeah, you can do. I mean, I feel like, okay, maybe that's not terrible, but like this is the position that we might be arriving mm -hmm. in, which, of course, at first glance, you look at it, it looks completely crazy. Um, they have a king on d7. But then we realize g3 is hanging, mm -hmm. and rook c is a threat. Yeah. And there's and limited there's no material the on the board. There's no checks to the king. So um, not a position I'd be thrilled to get into as white, unless there's something concrete. Uh, but just look how crazy this can get. I mean, black having pawns, and somehow the engine is still saying this is equal. Um, well, that's a very sharp kind of equal. For sure. Like, who would even be favored here in this equality? I think the onus is on white to, to make it happen, it. but right. um, you're, yeah, it, <laughs> there's a lot happening here. I mean, white this has be, to act quickly yeah. before these pawns march off the board, so you have to take advantage of this king. How would we even do that? Feels like moves like, you know, queen b3 is what you're looking for, mm -hmm. but you don't want to allow king c8. Right, you don't want that king to run back to safety, right? And that so. would be that would be like the end, probably. It's like one move and probably the game is <laughs> yeah. over, right? Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. exactly. As soon as that king gets back, you know, white resigns. So it's a very tricky position. Um, yeah, but you're yeah. right. The onus would be on white to prove something here for the pawns, right? So let's go back for a second. So Fabi could be thinking about rookie one. He could be thinking about pawn takes pawn. And the third move that you mentioned is this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here, right, so is the issue just rook to rook, c8? Yeah, rook c8, d5, and queen e3, I think, was the issue. Right, so you're just going to trade off the queens and then just calmly yeah. take that bishop. Yeah, unfortunately. Otherwise, it'd be very strong, but yeah. That so there could be something else here, though that we're not seeing yet. D5 right away. D5. Wow. Just to answer that capture with D5. Ignore. Could that be a move, you know? It's what you're striving I feel like, for. I guess, I feel like it can be. Right? I guess mm -hmm. this is it. You know? Another alternative for white. And by the way, you're doing a discovery on the rook. That, that helps. Yeah. This looks... Is it looks something... attractive. Okay, is it something crazy like castles, pawn c6, knight c5? Put that king on b8. Let's try it. Okay, maybe not the best, but still we have let's to take, explore. We can take a look. Why not, you know, like We're this. Give up. 
I was kind of looking for this position, and actually this one is okay for black, so you need to look for something here. Mm. I'm guessing it's like bishop f5 check here. Mm -hmm. King b8. And maybe like even b4, just questioning where that knight's headed. Mm, okay. Some sort of variation of that. Yeah. There could be some issues. It might not have to be b4, but oh, that's a bad move. Yeah. Okay. There's something here, <laughs> right in this exact position. Okay. What could it be? Rook, I mean, well, I mean, we could, at some point, you can even take here, but yeah, actually, at some point, you can. Would yeah, that take give, here and even queen e5 check. Yeah. Yeah, like, would that give us some advantage if we just took some? Yeah. Yeah. Because Black's King is kind Black's of Black's King is definitely weaker. Weak. Yeah, I know um, that's a bit far off, but But D five okay, so no D five is a move that I think Fabi is for sure looking at. Because very dynamic move, making it hard for black to castle. Now there's something here that sort of keeps the balance for black that we still need to find. Yeah, I've been looking at like moves like Queen F six, Queen E five. The critical line is still taking on C six. Mm -hmm. And it is weird that G3 is hanging on some of these because there might be potential to actually sack a piece and you get the H and G pawns down the board and that might be that equilibrium. So, for example, Queen F6. Mm -hmm. I was looking at like D takes, DC. EDC, yeah. Queen takes Queen, mm -hmm. Pawn takes, Pawn takes, Bishop takes, yeah. Rook castle, D8. Oh, look, castle, castle, long, yeah. castle Queen side is good. There we, there we go. go. That's, that's how we hold and it. And then... These are very ugly pawns for both players would be unhappy with this because this is right. Like this everything is, is coming off the board yeah. and it looks like we're headed to a draw, right? Like, yep. I mean, white can take a pawn, but this pawn is quite valuable. These double pawns don't yeah. matter much. So it's pretty, pretty balanced here. Yep. Um, so let's go back for a second. So Fabiano needs to make a decision here. So this one, we're saying that maybe even like one of these queen trades. Something like, like that. Like could be possible, right? Anything else we can do on queen f6? Because we went into this line, which was very natural. But maybe there's something else. Yeah, it's not forcing. There's moves like queen b4 here or something. Hmm. Queen d2 as well. Like something where you can't just castle comfortably. I kind of like this one. Oh, well, somehow black is okay <laughs> after that move. What would make this okay for black? Maybe one of your ideas of like queen side castling and just... Or maybe it. just take the pawn. Sure. Yeah, uh, we could yeah. try. We could no, be no. really greedy. Uh, oh. So this one is better for white, so it's something else. Queenside castling, take on c6. Mm. I mean, I kind of don't feel, don't feel like that's... Yeah, that's how it is in the studio, Eric. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the studio. The players are playing pretty fast, I'd say. I mean, Napo is a pretty fast player for the type of position that it is, where... They have a lot of end games to, to break down. And... Oh, Fabi played a move that we hadn't considered. That means a G4. probably a good move. Yep. It is indeed. That's probably I the think best that move. what the engine was liking and what we were trying to find but hadn't yet. Yeah, this is just yeah. better than everything we looked at. Yeah, immediately. so stabilizing. Interesting. Yeah, we, we did not consider using that pin to avoid the pawn trade. It's interesting because, you know, your opponent just took your pawn and you don't capture back. So it's not yeah. the most intuitive thing, but Fabi found it. You don't want those ugly pawns. Also, f5 for the bishop is, is a better square now. But yeah, we just get a better version. Um, assuming yeah. black plays h4 here, then when we go d5 or some of those other lines, it's a more stable... I see. Stable version, better pawn structure yeah, as well. Yeah, so h4, d5, I feel like could be quite painful. But maybe that is the best move. I don't think you want to let white get that passer. Mm. Yeah, like you're saying, if I castle a queen side, 
Mm -hmm. and you just like take here which way should you take that's a that's a good question and d5 is still a threat here right interesting so basically it's like three main moves yeah. that we, we need to consider um i mean d5 kind of nicely uses the pin it does it feels like all the pieces coordinate mm -hmm. this way Kind of curious yeah. what's happening in the women's section, by the way, just in that one yeah. game where... What about Hikaru's game? Like, just Hikaru, for one yeah. Second, yeah, yeah. When I say curious, like, I'm, I'm feeling, like, not optimistic at all about what I'm seeing at yeah. all. I... This is so, actually, uninspiring as a scenario. It's very frustrating to have this kind of position as white. This is not fun to look at. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and when I see this position, I'm like, well, it's good that Hikaru has something to come back to with the streaming, something else to think about, because, you know, in a must-win situation to have this position on the board after, like, whatever, like an hour and a half of play, it's kind of uh, depressing. It, it definitely is depressing. There's nothing to show for White's opening. Um, not even, like, I, I've been making the argument that Black easily becomes better here, Obviously, there's isolated pawn oh, maybe, on Maybe Bukes should just try to win. Yeah, you and know? the bishop on e2 is not, not it's, it's outclassed by the bishop on b7 for now. There's no tactic on e6, and there's even a, a pair of knights being traded, which happened, favors black. Favors black. Uh, so if I had to pick, I'd prefer black. Uh, yeah, I mean, because this bishop here is the most awful piece. I mean, what is, like, you know. None of white's pieces are good. Yeah, like, this bishop is not never single. supposed to be here in these isolated pawn positions, but there's, like, zero attack. The queen side's been liquidated. There's always counterplay for black. I mean, wow. This is like, I would just consider this like such an opening failure for white. Absolutely. So, like in any situation, any not situation. only in a must win, like in any situation where I had to play a game of chess with the white pieces, I would be so upset to see this position on the board. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Hikaru was actually kind of stoic in terms of his body language uh, because, you know, he was giving away a lot more yesterday when he was playing Nepo. Yeah, I don't know if he's trying to just realize, like, if that if he, you know, doesn't play this well, he's going to be worse, like, comfortably worse very soon. So he's just trying to, like, stabilize those emotions. Um, hmm. And he does know how he plays uh, affects the other board, you know? Like, if yeah. he goes crazy I, here... I actually think he will think about that. He, he probably because, is thinking you know, about that. Because he has kind of mentioned that he wants either himself or Fabiano to win. And I really, really think he should... Do his utmost to not self-destruct in this game okay to yeah. give fabiano a chance at least and maybe at a tie break i mean that would be incredible it'd be incredible like a uh, act of friendship <laughs> yeah <laughs> I th players you know i think then right now he's got to go into draw mode and uh because i think there's almost yeah zero chance well here's the lesson for our fans i think it's just that i mean like you know the fans watching is that yeah. you know a3 is not the Poisonous system against the queen's Bishop gambit, is, accepted yeah. structures. Yeah, man, but that, this game, it's just like, you know, it's okay to make a draw when you, you know, even in a must win, but at least you want to feel like you had a fighting chance. You want to feel like you made your opponent, like... Sweat. Sweat. There hasn't been a single, a single difficult decision, really, for Gukesh. Um... So far, this game. I mean, the only positive I can see from this is that my childhood opening, the Queen's yeah. Gambit accepted, is holding up really well at top top level chess. Yeah, no, I've I played it a few times. I think I've only made draws, so it's definitely definitely a very good solid choice. But uh, this might be a good argument. Uh, this might popularize it more. Bishop e seven. I like Black's position. Yeah. Well, all right. I mean, it does look like the best Hikaru is going to get is a draw for the moment. Um. You know what's really interesting, like in terms of the, how the players evaluate things. Like yesterday, you know, we were really impressed with how Gukesh um, declined the repetition mm -hmm. because we thought, well, the position was equal, and he declined the repetition. He kind of went lower on the clock. Seemed like a pretty gutsy move. Mm -hmm. You know, not not crazy gutsy, but like yeah. you know, a nice decision that I think he got rewarded for. But but in the press conference, you know, he was basically saying that he just thought he was better. So okay, why would he take him wrong? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just thought he was better. And when he was told, like, hey, did you know you were equal? He was like, really? You know, no, I didn't know. Then that kind of changed, you know, changed a little bit. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it wasn't that he even, that he thought he was equal and then tried to play for the win. He just thought he was better, which makes it a lot easier to decline the repetition. It's a good mentality to have.
it's absolutely you you get energy from that but i i didn't know when i was watching the game yesterday in Sally Reza, i did i liked his decision i thought i thought it was just very very on brand I guess his confidence these these players are very optimistic and are willing to play a wider range of positions than some predecessors um so Let's it's good to know that like mm -hmm. when you're playing a game you don't want like yeah you just it's it's easy afterwards oh somebody thought but if you feel like your position's better you often play the position better so um, yeah it's easier easier to play on right yeah. well we uh have an exciting game on the women's side that we haven't looked at at all Lei Ting Ji um has one of the most unusual positions that we've seen all tournament actually on the board against Humpy Conero, even with a queen sacrifice. Um, you know, Lei is still in contention for first place in this tournament. If she wins and Tan loses, it, it's a long shot, but still her game definitely matters for the women's standings. Let's see how this queen sack happened. Like, what was this opening that they played? It was a Nimzo uh -huh, with A3, right. So she went into that. Um, got the big center, sacrificed the C pawn at some point, I guess. Okay, not yet. She found a different way mm. <laughs> to sacrifice it. For a must-win game, this is uh, this is good. This is what you're looking for. Yeah, and there's some tricks here, like there's no knight e5 because I guess there's queen h7, right? So. I mean, for now, it sort of looks like black is doing okay, just visually. I don't really see the problems. Um, black cannot castle, but black is up a pawn and doesn't really have bad pieces. So what's the problem with black's position? I'm not really sure. C6 is a bit of a weird move. It's not the first thing you do is like weaken that square when you see the knight, like trying to come in there anyway. No. Do you understand this move, Eric? Is she just trying to try to trap the queen? Yeah. yeah that, eventually trap the queen or something. The queen. I think it's a difficult position though. You're up a pawn as black, but you can't really improve your position, and you know white's knight is coming to e4. Mm, look at this! Look at this unusual threat. I mean, knight b8 is a funny way to trap that queen. Mm -hmm. So she played king d8 in order to do that. Okay, so I can, I can see Comfy's concepts now. I get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually looks, you know, quite uh, risky for white. Okay, I mean, certainly, like, the whole game just feels crazy. Whoa. And then white just responds. With rook b1, huh? Like, yeah, just take... So, yeah, black takes the queen... And it's not even, yeah, it's not even it looks... like Rook F7, uh, I guess. I, mean, I guess she could have gone for this move, but maybe there's just not like really not enough, enough compensation for Yeah, Knight D7, maybe the Knight goes to D5 eventually. Mm -hmm. So she goes Rook B1. So this is pretty extravagant, like this whole position. You definitely right? don't see that very much, like no. a piece for a queen. Well, like, just, let's just look, look at that again. White gave up a queen for a knight and then proceeded to just put a rook on the open file. But look I, at the clocks. This is uh, kind of gross. Yeah. I think white, white was prepared. This looks you like... Think, you think all the way... It's true that she has... That's you know, so much time yeah. on the clock that... Mm -hmm. it yeah, there's feels... no... Well, right now, actually... Yeah, so she had an hour 22 at this point. With a queen already sacked. And I think... And I think, okay, her big thing has been here. So with her queen sacked, yeah, it hasn't taken her long. So you, your guess, Eric, is that the queen sack was prep? Yeah, I think I think when you put your queen on a6 and she did it so fast, that concept, they looked at what mm. happens if, because it's a very logical way that black played. She spent a few minutes on it, 130 yeah. to one, two and a half minutes. I mean, I agree with you that... I don't know how you can play that, how you can get to a queen sack position in eight minutes. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of time from increment. No, I, I think it's a prepared idea. But maybe it's not, and I'm not. I mean, certainly credit. for Humpy, it wasn't, right? She's been spending like tons of time. Mm -hmm. But definitely spectacular events here with the queen sack and then this move. Okay, so let's just, you know, take stock. White has one bishop for a queen. Okay. It's not a lot, 
No. But the position according to the engine is still balanced here because, you know, we're trying to obviously, you know, get the queen back, get that pawn back. We have very powerful pieces. And that's partly why I also think it's preparation influenced is because you're not going to like win the opening for the queen sack. It's more likely they expected Humpy to be well prepared here. And this is a line that poses practical problems. It's, it's equal with best play, but how do you play this as black? Well, is this just a draw on the board? Is this just like some perpetual that is coming? Because like, I mean, you know, at some point white needs to capture something. So do you think it's knight takes f7 here? Can you... Well, yeah, for example, that's like, that's the perpetual that I'm thinking about, like, but actually king f, king c8. Yeah. And then... Then that's not like, necessarily it's not, perpetual. Yeah, it's not necessarily that I have to go king d8 here. Yeah, queen takes d6. Right, I can also run consider the giving up my queen. Um, and then taking the rook, mm -hmm. and then we have to evaluate this unusual position where black has same amount of pawns as white, but I guess white does have a powerful mm -hmm. rook and pass pawn. I mean, I guess the engine says this is okay for white, mostly. Um, but let's see if we can make something cleaner for white. So basically, white can take the pawn at maximum. They have like kind of a draw with that line, but black can try to get ambitious. Mm, so maybe it's just rook f7 right here. I mean, if you give up your queen. Yeah, we can show the draw if black mm -hmm. wants to here, right? Like queen takes rook, mm -hmm. knight mm -hmm. takes king c8. King c8, right. Knight. Oh, it's oh, not. We have more than a draw. We have more. <laughs> How do we get more than a draw? I'm guessing it's still knight d6 knight and then d6 bishop and then... e3 or something. Bishop e3 here. Is that a good move? I want to do bishop. There's king e7. You don't think it's just something as simple as me taking that pawn and like... I don't know. I have a lot it's of good. pawns. It's good. I was just you have looking... rook b8 though. Uh -huh. Yeah, rook b8's coming. You still can take all the pawns. So mm -hmm. your line is still good. You just want to take, yeah. So like, because the issue is king e7 mm -hmm. and then there's knight e4. Mm. Problem, yeah, this is hanging, this is hanging, this is hanging. Yeah, so, but this is something that black could get in time trouble and run into, misevaluate that white's not winning immediately, but after a couple of mm -hmm. accurate moves, you don't have a way of dealing with the, with the pin. So rook here, what is black's best then? That's why, yeah, taking and taking going king e7. And going king e7. Not giving the knight a tempo. Ah, uh, I see. So king c8 is just inaccurate. Okay. But you're going to, you have to calculate knight g5 here and realize, okay, I'm not going to panic. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to touch that knight and allow bishop h4. Right. Right. Because this move is definitely possible. You can't but then really it's hard, take to, it. hard to evaluate. Yeah. Because white actually comes out way ahead once they win the rook back. Um, so you can't take there. So, like, let's just try to understand who's who's playing for a win here. I think white. It's white, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because white has this like active rook. But hold on, Eric. But yeah, if the rook yeah, covers the ball. Let me just uh, let me just challenge that rook. I feel like your rook is a little too strong for my liking. Let's challenge yep. it. Rook c seven. Rook c seven. Okay. I just don't so think what if trading rooks. Continue? I want exactly. It. Yeah. No, I, I I think that's a draw because I don't think white can allow the rook to get to b3. Yeah, I mean the the thing is like, well, if you trade, I feel like, I mean, why should black be doing badly? You know, this bishop is not great. Like these pawns are not that fast. Yeah, white can go knight e4, but as black, you're definitely playing this position with the side. Like you're, yeah. you're happy to not be getting mated, not be dealing with a rook pinning your pieces. Mm -hmm. And if white happens to hold this or win this, okay, you're like, good for them. Like, I can't complain about my play, getting rid of that rook. This is like 100 moves of prep. You just live with it. But it feels the pressure is off for black if you can trade off. Right. Like, she, she's like way lower on the clock. Yeah. But at some point, white just has to come uh, to terms with the fact that they're down a queen. <laughs> and they have yeah. to get that material back. And so we're going to go into some sort of simplifying lines mm -hmm. right where like it's it's very beautiful though i think the whole concept i've just never seen a position like this 
just a, a bishop for a queen. Yeah. And it's still equal. Yeah, Black's rooks are not in the game yet. So basically, it does look like the most likely result here is a draw. It doesn't look like Lei is going to get her win. So then, I mean, that would put Tan in a very safe position where she risks nothing. Actually, let's take a look at how Tan is doing against Anna. And she is doing well. Um, by the way, you won our bet. I did, because this position is... I was excited for white. And yeah. And maybe this is a sign that Anna's just out of form, but uh, um, something bad happened. <laughs> Very we bad. We predicted f4, bishop f6, and then we were looking at this. This was kind of what needed to happen for me to at least have a chance to win the bet. But queen d3 happened, which is immediately a bad move. No, just a bad yeah. And is... by the way, isn't that weird? Like, because white had so many nice looking options, and to play the move that yeah. immediately puts you at a disadvantage. What happens? I don't know. Maybe this happened, or yeah, that, that is what happened. Which isn't even hard to anticipate. Right. No, she's just out of form. I mean, that's. Yeah. That's, that really just kind of letting that capture take place. You can't take because of the night hanging. If you take an f6, you've kind of lost a pawn. Just like letting that happen is so strange. Your knight on d5 was the best piece. So these wow. exchanges well, don't Well, we did sense. not predict this move from Anna. No. Right. No, White had a nice position here. But, you know, Tan's opening paid off again. It did. It did. I, uh, I wish we got the position because I was not... I was like, I wanted to see a very uh, imbalanced position, yeah. but it did pay off. She's been making the right decisions at the right time, uh, and her opponents are believing it. Too. Yeah, I mean, we There's had like, now... look at the options we had. We had like beautiful attacking options like this, you know, driving in the pawn. Yeah. We had options of, you know, attacking on the light squares. This should really be an automatic, um, or Anna. I really thought this this is an automatic line. Yeah, but instead, so queen d3 happens, just blundering this f5 pawn. It's not clear what the blunder miscalculation. Mis yeah, misvalue. You know, it look, looks like a blunder. But I don't even know what the... What it was that she blundered, yeah, right? Yeah, because black's moves are forced. You're just... Yeah, maybe <laughs> she forced. missed this move. I mean, it's not... <laughs> it's hard to know. It's hard. It is. So basically, black just has a very strong knight protected past pawn the king is now pretty safe very safe compared to whites pawn is quite powerful and tan is trying to exploit that immediately and it looks like the white has a big problem here let's figure out what exactly that problem is you don't have a good move that's the problem well let's play so, the obvious like so, rook c1 yeah um, is there a queen b6 and it's is it yeah it's kind of over for me isn't it hit the bishop hit the king yeah Ooh. this is a disastrous game for for anna here so you know oh it's it's interesting i get it now like if you would have started with this mm -hmm. king h1 right then at least you know the like we can save the king and you can't really win my bishop without losing the knight so Pushing up the e-pawn has this benefit that, like, you're getting rid of the rook off the d4 knight. Yep, the idea you showed is very simple. It's brute force, but it just works. The pawn on e2 is strong on queen b6. It just exploits all mm. the weak dark squares. In, in so the maybe position. rook d3 is, like, the only move? At least you don't lose your rook and I'm that like, one. Let's say we go queen b6 here. I don't even want to go king h1. Yeah. Because, like... You don't want to go king h1? What, what else can no, you do? No, no, I mean, <laughs> we have to, yeah. but this feels like it's losing, that the queen's going to get to f2 somehow. Like, I'm... It feels like there's a win right here. Okay. But the back Yeah, rank... knight c2, knight c2 even here is kind of interesting. I mean, it's I I don't know that like this move works yeah. at all, but I can just say like, uh, it's interesting. It wouldn't surprise me if like rookie eight or something is what the computer says. Although bishop d five is a threat, but there's a win here. Yeah, uh, like maybe no, maybe this is not it because we can go. I don't know, rookie two. Mm -hmm. Right. So this one is probably not it. It's like I think we just blundered, or, or what did we blunder? Well, um... Yeah, maybe just queen c. 
Well, Queen Queen F2, I wanted Queen F2, yeah. actually. I, have, yeah, I that, did have that, some that idea. That does work. Yeah, yeah that, there was a point to my move. Um, but okay, Knight C2 is not the winning move. There's something else. Queen B7, Rook D4, Queen B2, something prosaic. We could, we have Queen B2. We could be taking that. Yeah. I like it. You like it because you like that. Like there, there's ideas of like knight c2. Oh, computer doesn't. Yeah, computer doesn't. He's very, he's very particular <laughs> guy. Go back. Let's see here. So there's something, something getting rid of the rook on e1. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sharp right now. Um, you know, we'll there's find... a funny. There's a funny um, idea. And that doesn't really work. I guess you can take with the rook. I was looking at that too. Yeah, because like that would have been cool, like in some lines to try to like get the queen in like that, but it doesn't really work because you take with the rook. So, so what could it be? R rook f8. How about curious. one second? What, what is there? Like that would be hilarious if something like that could ever work. You know, like trying to save the knight and go queen f2. Um, okay. Yeah. You're like Irina is crazy, right? No, I'm. I'm trying to. My you know? head hurts. It's, it's, only, it's only a draw. It's still, like, still a possibility. Can you try rook fe8 and just see what the response is? Yeah, we're just bringing in pieces, yeah. It's good, it's but it's good. not the move. It's yeah, not the move. It's not, not the killer. Well, we have some developments I'm hearing in the... Uh, Nakagukesh. Yes, okay, which let's, I wasn't let's go expecting. There. Okay. But it looks like the woman servant should be decided shortly. All right. So Naka has sacked the pawn on d4 somehow. Mm. OK, I mean, you know, interesting decision by Gukesh. He took it. You don't have a chance to recapture yet because this is hanging. Rook fd1. Well, I would say in a way, Oh, that's a classy move. Yeah, like in a way, I don't, I'm not that sad about losing the D-pawn and getting the bishop pair. Like, I don't feel like that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Of course, you know, White's chances to win this position are not incredible as more and more material comes off. It, that's the thing. It didn't really increase. Usually you sack a pawn, you get the bishops, you're pretty happy. But we're looking at the position and... Oof. Black has no bad pieces. <laughs> Black, no Black has no bad pieces or weaknesses. And white still has that weakness yeah. on a3. So let's say a6 is a little loose, yeah. so is a3. But black's pieces are placed perfectly. I mean, the question is whether black can really make something of this extra pawn. Like, what are the chances, like, for black to win this? Well, what I, what I like here is that Gukesh is up a pawn. Yeah. You can see the other board. So until then, you're going to try to improve your pieces, maintain some play. And if you notice that the other game is ends in a draw, okay, you can offer a draw, clinch the candidates. But if you see that maybe Fabiano starts to push against Nepo, then you can play this risk free. Mm. You are like black can play rook d8. Uh, black, well, black's up a pawn. Uh, I don't see the, the risk in playing on. So Gukesh at least is in a very privileged position right now. Um, yeah, it's not that easy to like launch an attack against this pawn, right? I guess we should try. Um, shall we just take a look at what happens on queen b7? Why can't we directly attack these pieces? You definitely can. I'll just go bishop c5 here. Mm, you're gonna and counterattack. <laughs> I see, I see. So you're going to like try Ooh, to yeah. torture me in this end game. Oh, what did I miss? Nope. Well, I, yeah, I thought there was going to be I missed something yeah, that would hurt you. Something should hurt, hurt you. At some point. Um, even like queen h4 here and knight g4. I didn't calculate at all, mm. but we're getting close. Yeah, then I have to move the queen somewhere. Mm. We'll find something right here. One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely feels promising for black. Like, you know, the problem is the worst cases, I can just trade the queens and go rook a8. Yeah, well, that's the one. That's the reason and I played like, queen a6. But like, you I was like, can't I do that, right? That's the thing. Like, you actually like can't. I think at Unless this point he can. Settled? I actually you think, think at will? this point he can. I don't, okay. I don't. I don't really know. Like it really like he's gonna try to play this position like he's better when he's no, worse. not better. Just 
No, I mean, like, well, I mean, my point of this moves. move yeah, was yeah. kind of to yeah. take the pawn. So I wanted to at least try it. Like, so, um, but okay, something else Oops. is happening. Oh, he actually played queen b7. There you go. So our Bishop. line can be somewhat relevant. This is a loose line. So queen takes a6. Yeah. Um, there's just a, so, so after queen takes a6, right. there's definitely a move here. Okay. Hmm. There could be a sack. Oh, I kind of have a good feeling about and queen this. Queen d4. And queen d4, knight I, d4. I was trying to calculate. Okay, we can continue. Let's that. go with my intuition. Let's let's leave the calculations for later. Okay. Well, you know your position is bad when even like yeah, there's a you're really good move, and this is also a very good move. Yeah. Like this is pretty good for black. Queen I mean, d4. Queen check. d4. You don't have the block. Is it knight g4? It's a king f3. Everything is loose. Just to have some fun here. Yeah, king f3. All right. Well. He's got his, like, he's got a draw if he wants. Maybe queen g4. But then that's the problem. Wall. If Yukar was looking at this and he's like, yeah. oh, I need to make a draw. It's going to help, let's say, Fabiano or whatever. Right. This well, is not the way to this do is it. Not, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. The queen a6 is basically some kind of a blunder, but it's sort of a natural move. But, but encouraging black to play bishop c5, like, okay. bishop c5 is great. I like, got it. I got yeah. it. This is it. That's it. Well, sort of. It seems seems logical to at least try to trap in that queen. And so let's say I go a5, for example. Ah, that saves your pawn. That's the move, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then black is up a healthy extra pawn. And this position, black can definitely try to win. Okay. So Hikaru's move, apparently there's some way to hold balance after bishop c5. This looks terrible. But it's not an easy <laughs> one to find, is it? This, uh, is it like bishop e1? Because it's just like so many things, you know, all these squares that we need to cover. And bishop e1 is like... Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is, which... Um, I want to play h3, I just need time to do that. Yeah. So you just defend this pawn, protect the bishop. It's not inspiring, but uh, I think white does have to start looking at, at a draw. Yeah. Any, any couple more like moves that aren't in that direction and black will have a more sizable advantage that yeah. Kukesh will just play on forever. Right. Well, certainly, again, well, we already said it. It's a miserable scenario for Hikaru. I guess mm -hmm. we don't need to belabor that point. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that the only suspense in this game is could things go wrong enough for him that he could lose? I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. It's a weird situation to be in where you need to win, but now all of a sudden you're the realization, the reality is you have no winning chances. Yeah. But your your result influences the other board like a lot. A lot. It well, it influences like another person's yes. fate. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know, yes. it influences their their life. Yeah. Um, like imagine the situation where, you know, like Fabi wins. And Hikaru loses. And Hikaru loses. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, couldn't you just help me out by making a draw mm -hmm. so like one of us could fight for the title? Yeah. You're well-intentioned, but yeah. it does it, it backfires. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do kind of hope that Hikaru can put his uh, foot on the on the gas. Uh, not on the gas. What's those? The brakes. The, the brakes. brakes at this point, you know? I think it's too late for the gas. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at what's going on in Fabi versus Nepo. Is he making anything of this position? It looks like he is. Wow. Fabi is in the driver's seat here. More driving analogies, Eric. Yes. Have you been watching some Formula One? Is that why I think there's no, a No, I, okay. I don't know why it's coming to my mind. <laughs> All right, so Castle's queen side by Nepo. I mean, supernatural. The engine doesn't love it. I think let's just take a look at our current position after yeah. D5. When, when we stopped looking at this, this is everything White wants to achieve. I'm not looking at ugly pawns on the F file. The rook on H1 is putting, we're, we're about to get outside, like just the pass pawn on the H file. Bishop on E4 is stronger than it's ever been. Pointed at C6, but also mm. as, as F5 is a square. Mm. The queen on C3, double duty. Also, horrible situation for Nepo. Like when you see this position and White getting rid of that isolated pawn, like you know that, you know, you're not going to get the result you wanted in this game. It's again, it's not, it's not even the evaluation, which is bad, but it's like there's barely any pieces on the board, and you're just worse. Yeah, yeah. The, the 
kind of position where, yeah, like you're just suffering. You're like, well, this is. I mean, I guess the only scenarios are like if you somehow manage to keep this pawn and have it on h4 and like not lose your whole queen side, then black, you know, can be in it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's. I, uh... This game feels a bit like um, when people sometimes bring up Nepo's chess and play style, and the candidacy has generally been a bit more solid. He's had tremendous results, but he has a track record of sometimes playing a bit hasty, over committal, and there was just that middle game decision or, or late opening decision that it was fateful. Was Queen really that was just really rushed, yeah. and, and he used to have that sometimes played too quickly. He plays slower at the candidates than you know he used to play like. Blitz out moves mm. all the time. But it seems like some old habits kind of came up a bit this game because yeah. the opening was fine. It looked Great fine. Opening. And then really just the sequence of uh, some misevaluation that he played fast was, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a two-result game. Um, maybe one result like this. This is awful. I, I don't know. We haven't found a move for black. So you're making my little dream, okay, trying okay. to make this dream scenario work. So we're going to get a situation that you were proposing earlier, but worse, where you're yeah. going to go knight c5. Yeah, that was kind of what I was going pawns. for, like trying to make my king safe and, you know, at least keep this pawn on the board. That was my best mm. scenario. At least I can challenge your bishop, which is mm. really powerful. Yeah, probably like bishop f5 here or something. Yeah. Maybe not, but... Fabi's playing the right moves. He's playing a bit more accurately than, than we're suggesting, but uh, maybe against the knight on c5, we put the bishop on d5. Is that ever a situation? I'm not sure. I mean, of course, you know, the move itself, like, it looks, I don't it like, looks normal. It like, looks normal, but it looks a bit artificial, too. Yeah. Well, what could be, okay, what could be really convincing here for white? We could pin the knight. Queen b4. Yeah. Well, queen b4, maybe not this one. Because um, it hangs. Yeah, it hangs the queen. <laughs> it hangs the queen. Yeah, maybe not that one. If you really want to pin it, I guess this is the only way to do it. Although it also looks a little... The queen looks good on c3, right? So maybe I'm just looking at the yeah. long squares. Well, the question is, we do want to save this bishop, don't we? I mean, it could be bishop d5. Do you think there's a chance of a crazy move like rook h1 here? Mm. I would say no, right? I would say no. That's just my intuitive feeling. Because the eight, yeah. I really like this bishop. I mean, I don't know, like something like that. No, bishop d five. Yeah, it, it's definitely supposed to be on that diagonal over the f five one. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't think like this queen trade. You're, I mean, you're gonna get like a few pawns, right? But like, I guess I can probably, if I, well, if I even decide to take, I guess I don't have to. Yeah, because king c2 right. is actually viable here. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, are your pawns getting too strong? Because they are quite powerful, right? Yeah. So maybe I should not be trading here, but um, I have a lot of other moves. King c2 is really strong. Yeah, you like king c2, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a Fabiano type of move as well, though. Everything all of a sudden is coordinated and defended, and, like, mm -hmm. it all works out. Yeah, maybe somewhere we can actually play b4. I don't know why I want to do that, but I mean, your knight is pretty strong here. Somewhere. Yeah, black only has the h pawn. I think, like, this would just, yeah, this is just lost. Like, let's just play h3. Yeah. Let's just do it. Yeah. And now we just have to uh, find, trade a, good pro find a good move. Mm. We can be really patient and play, like, rook h2. Sure. You know? Look at that, losing most it of just our doesn't, advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. Something more convincing? Well, I think like one of the critical questions is what do you do after rook h e1? Mm -hmm. Could be uh, wrong there. Okay, yeah, I agree. Because this pawn's not really running, maybe we should just force the queen trade, right? It works, but it's not as good. Yeah. I, should we go for the crazy b4? Which Sure. I think everything's winning, everything except is like, what we're doing. You know? Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. That's a little too crazy. There's something here which is like the computer is loving. Rook d2. Rook d2. I yeah. kind of like that. I kind of like that, rook d2. You know, I have a good feeling about this. Nope. Oh. 
we're, you know, we're, it's, we're it's finding good, everything, you know? but not the... Everything is like folding, but there's actually some winning move in this position. Is it like something greedy? Okay, so the... Like bishop f7? I mean, it, it doesn't feel like that should be it, but maybe. Queen, yeah. Um... You don't have really queen f3. After that, I think... I mean, I don't love the look of this move, but who knows? Maybe we should take and like promote the g-pawn. That's very reasonable. I mean, it's like I'm running out of ideas, so let's just try. Okay, it's decent, but it's not... The problem is, like, yeah. Nepo won't go into this position because yeah. it's so lost. Like, we're struggling to find those, but you can feel good about this as black. Sure. Like, you know you're playing, like, a lost position. And, right. and, and it's bad with, like, so much time on the clock. Well, okay, but go ahead and try to keep yourself afloat here. Like, we just played D5. Where is the line where he's going to get comparative safety? Queen it's, c5. Queen c5. You just do that and wave goodbye to your yeah. chances. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Queen yeah. c5. Take on c6. Take on c3. Take back. Put a knight on e5. It that shouldn't work, but I don't. I don't see any good moves here. Yeah, so you're thinking just kind of bail out, maybe try to get a queen trade, yeah. That appears to be... Trying to, like, hold a position down a pawn where maybe the knight gets to rest on e5. It's very sad, isn't it? It, it is It is very I sad. I feel like, actually, sad. I'm not a fan of how things have gone today. No. Be I mean... But it's very sad for two people. Like, they've lost hope a bit earlier than you would have hoped. Exactly. Like, yes. Yeah. You wanted these games to go on until the last minute mm -hmm. for there to be a lot of suspense, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't feel like we're getting as much of that. Like, Gukesh is basically, you know, with Black, doing great. Like, where was the pressure? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't see pressure. It. Um, and then this game, it's like Nepo could have created this big fight. He makes some bad moves. In the middle game, the next and then bad he has move. No more chances. Not really any chances for anything. So I feel like we're not getting the suspense that we pay for. Eric. It's true. We didn't get two games going down to the wire. And, you know, we get mutual time trouble. What's going to happen? Yeah, it could have been epic. It could have been. And yeah. now it's looking a little bit more ordinary, and it's looking like, well, first of all, actually, hold on. Things are things are still not so bad. Let's look in the positive side. Right, the positive side is Fabi might still win. Yeah. And then Gukesh, if Hikaru holds on, There's a tie we can still get a tie break and get a lot of excitement tomorrow. Yeah, so, so there is that one positive scenario we could root for. Yeah, we can admit it's a lot better than the two games ending in a quick draw. Like, just like <laughs> a, a, a dull draw and there's no tie breaks, no decisive games. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is still relatively okay. Yeah, so Queen C5, okay. I mean, but the only thing, though, is that for Nepo, make actually it's quite difficult to make psychologically this type of move. for sure yeah for sure okay so how does fabi though like show some accuracy here and maintain the advantage i think you just take on c6 mm -hmm. um we trade or we take mm -hmm. or we do what i was also this knight is hanging so i guess we gotta i wasn't sure yeah. At some point, also, I can win this pawn. Can't I finally like go after that pawn at any point? Maybe not. Like maybe now. Can I? Mm -hmm. No. Now there's rook takes h5 well, rook doesn't takes work because you can take right, five. But I guess there's gonna be some sort of like Queen trade and, and like knight f6. six. You know? Yeah. Start That's a problem actually. Actually, because yeah, black gets the. Or maybe rook h6. There you go. Hold the pawn. Yeah, I think you want to trade off at least a pair of rooks, but there's probably something better to do with the pin. Yeah, so like, so, we need a little bit of precision here as white. Um, ah, you're talking about like maybe even... Bishop f5. Bishop f5 yeah. somewhere. Even now. Even now. But what if I just... Uh-huh, I see, and then at the, at the end, you're, you think you got the advantage? Because like... I wasn't so sure about this position. King c7. No, yeah. it's true. The h pawn's not enough for, for the end game. So we have to be, you're right, we have to be more precise. Mm. Or even, like, look at this. Maybe h4. Maybe that's the move. And then king c7. Yeah, don't even give that pawn. All right. So as Fabi, we need some precision here now. What is this move? 
Hmm. There's something really good here. Okay, well, we get a better version of trading queens and bishop f5. The knight doesn't have any f6 or e5 square. If what we do you think about a... this? Yeah. Is that... I mean, this at least is some advantage for us because... It's very annoying. Mm -hmm. It's very annoying because you, you can't play rook h8 at the end because yeah. of bishop f5. So like, this just loses on the spot. Yeah, like here our h pawn would be yeah. really strong, lots of things hanging. Um, yeah, that, yeah. So we are kind of expecting, let's say, Fabi to take. Let's try to find a few decent moves for Nepo. Should he just tr throw in the queen trade mm -hmm. first? Yeah, so like this is my original idea for black. Where you just go like, in for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And try to play a pawn down. And I can go rook h5. I'm not actually up a pawn at that moment. Um, where is our big edge here, though? Because we already saw a lot of lines that were like transposing to this. Like, we know this is bad because of h4. We know this is bad because of rook h6. Um, so white needs some accuracy here. I don't really believe in that. So I'm thinking like rook h5 is still... One, one sec. I, let, me, uh -huh. let me see here. I was trying to like calculate some bishop takes e6 because mm -hmm. it wasn't one of the moves we played. But... Yeah. Hard to believe though, right? I mean, is a c-pawn going to be so important? Exactly. Like I'm gonna There's going to be like five. fortresses versus just a c-pawn. So if I had to guess... I would still bet on this for us to have that one pawn advantage. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think this is it. Yeah. You know, because this pawn is hanging, so you don't really have time to move your rook. But if you trade, you're actually making things worse because this yeah. H pawn is super powerful. What's the, even the move after rook H5? I think you're going to have to give me this pawn, right? Or... Actually, also, this is a threat. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's what I'm... Yeah, rook, rook f5 looks lights out. Yeah, I mean, it's like you can go king c7 and rook f5, for example. Are there other moves that we can do here? Maybe a little bit better. You want to go, like, rook a5 first? Mm, well, that's, that's a finesse. But then there's king b6, knight c5. Blacks play simple here, but depressing because you're just trying to hold on to a draw. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah, why yeah. we're not sure this is going to happen. It's it's tough. You know, for, I think for Nepo to find himself in the situation where in his, he's been leading the tournament the whole way and to kind of see it slip away in this rather, like, not yeah. even dramatic fashion. Yeah. It just slips out of your hands like that. Like, like, what did he do wrong? He was leading the tournament. He made a draw with Naka. Suddenly he was behind. And then suddenly... He has, he has to win, doesn't really get that position, and it's just kind of over for him. Yeah, at some point during the tournament, I think, throughout the event, people are getting the feeling it's going to be a three-peat for Nepo. He just, right. things go his way during the candidates, he plays well, the results were favoring, and just towards the very end, but credit to the field and the like interesting games we've had, that there's been some other variables. Because at some point, it just looked like, yep, it's going to be Nepo and Ding rematch, like, um, which still is technically possible, but slipping, slipping away by the minute. Well, I think Hikaru is doing his best to hold things together. By he, the way, here, oh, I was uh -huh. going to say in the very last uh -huh. position, to continue what you're saying is like, probably Rook H1 would be the move. I would continue ah, playing. Okay, like that. Okay, we'll come back to yeah. that. So Hikaru did find a move, Bishop E1, very important to like guard against all the tactics against that pawn. And after A5, he plays queen b5, which I kind of like. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, white is getting closer to that draw. <laughs> you know, if you can get these queens off the board and you probably deal with the a pawn. Um, so Hikaru, I think, is settling in to at least not just give this game to Gukesh. Yep. No, this, this looks like a good way to handle it. Um... This forces the queen trade, doesn't it? Well, let's just say like queen f4. Mm, you want to keep attacking. Okay, that's the ambitious way. Right, so it's like you're not giving me this pawn for free because you've got a lot of ideas with knight f4. G3 is probably a move white wants to play. It's a good move, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to keep some, some material on the board. Yeah. Mm. 
There's a way to make this annoying for Black. Maybe I'm I'm not sure about it, but Gukesh is definitely looking at at it. Because mm. if you trade the queens, yeah, you can torture your opponent. Yeah. But it's an extra pawn on the queen, uh, king side. It doesn't. Definitely still playable for sure. Yeah. How would we even defend that pawn though? Like bishop b6. This should be six. Yeah, maybe this should be six. Rook b one. Yeah. Feels like White's made progress because yeah, what do you do after Rook Rook a b one? Okay, so I want to in general put my knight here. Um, so probably I will be putting it here. Yeah, maybe here I'll go like Bishop d three or something. Move my bishop out of the way. Prepare Bishop b four. Rook b five. I might even have some other moves. Bishop a six. Like bishop a6. And then yeah. return to like c4 or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, hold on, Eric. You can find ways for black to blunder. That might... Uh, yeah. Well, I found, I think, a way for white to blunder. Oh, okay. I was like, just taking a look at that move. Yep. You know, yeah. just taking a look. It smells then, like a blunder. You know, yeah. But you know, it's like knight c7, right? Mm -hmm. Oops, we got to see those knight retreats backwards. So white needs to... Keep those rooks together, I think. Okay. Shikaro's holding on. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if Gukesh, he's still thinking. How's the time situation? He's got more time than Hikaru. Um, Seems comfortable, his body language. Yeah. He's probably like, what a gift today. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> for the A3 yeah. move. For the All A3 right. and this whole, you know, play yeah. in the Queen's uh, Gambit accepted structures. Okay. So let's look at Fabi versus Nepo. So we... Um, got the oh, move. this is the all-in variation that we kind H4. of expected. Yeah, we did expect this age four. Like, it should be losing with accurate play. So DC. It's it's a logical way to play it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in it. But I would probably do it too in the same situation. Yeah, Nepo trying to at least keep this pawn on the board as a potential chance in this game. I think it makes sense. Yeah, so we actually did really look at this, didn't we? We looked at like knight c5 here. I think that's what was played. Yeah, and we're analyzing. So we took on b7. Right, we took on b7, king b8. Yeah, and then bishop and then d5. And bishop d5 was like our choice, right? That was it, yeah. So we had actually gone into this position and, I mean... Black has only pawn islands and, and you're down a pawn. Um, that's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. Yeah, all the hopes on this pawn. That's it. There's not much else good about Black's position. This king's not getting mated. That's good, too. It's kind of safe behind that new yes, pawn. Yes, yes. But otherwise, I mean, Fabi definitely has good chances in this game. Yeah, and he's, like, so good at converting these kind of positions. Like, he doesn't mind sharp, sharp conversions. And, okay, yes, the h-pawn is there. There's a knight on c5, but... It reminds me of some other games he's had this event, like maybe it's Vitted or something where, yeah, the king can have, you know, be a little bit open or something, but he's he's going to have everything covered. There's no time pressure here. Um, I was very impressed with his technique yesterday. It feels like he had a bit of a bumpy start, but towards the end of the event, you know, he's coming into form. Well, let's take a look at the game between Tan and Wuzichuk. Is Tan getting closer to her title? I mean, it seems like she didn't find the knockout blow. It's also hard because she only needs a draw to win the event. Mm -hmm. Whereas, oh, that's true. If it was a different type of situation, you're, yeah. you're really looking for the, the knockout. Yeah, so she played queen b6. We also couldn't find like that clear win here. So no. she's going for this move, which I think is just a good practical decision. Uh, simplify the game. I mean, yeah, like when a situation where you only need a draw. So she traded, which apparently is this one. It really loses a large yeah. part of the advantage. What could have been but better? It, but it's probably yeah, the best move for the situation. It forces, yeah, it, it, I think what it doesn't like is there's some perpetual opportunities, or like some you know queen takes yeah. up five or something. Yeah. Like because after rookie eight, which mm -hmm. she's gonna play, like there's no way. Black ever loses this. Right. I mean, everything is sort of hanging in the position. Always the back. I don't even know issue. what White does here, for example. Like, I know it says she lost her advantage, but. Yeah. Uh, 
Why, right? Like here, queen d2, probably. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where, that's where, that's yeah, there's the like perpetual a perpetual or something. Yeah. Because if you try to like not give perpetual and like try to defend this rook, this is probably not a great idea. How do we win here? Um, I'm guessing it's just rook c8, rook c1. Yeah, that's very prosaic, yeah? But hold on, there's something better. Something better? Something more accurate for sure. Let's see. I mean, first of all, let's start with this. Let's start. Yeah. Should we? Because yeah. there's, there's queen, queen h4, two. but something about that move feels good. I agree. It's something, you know, we want to force that queen off to a more passive square. So and let's say you refuse. Let's say you, like, insist on staying active. Looks like I really want to set this up, but I'm still not ready. Right? Because you have king g1. You know, if I sack too early, yeah. Yeah. you know, it actually doesn't work. It's like very close to working, but the king is in time to help out the, the yeah. queen. So we need... Okay, we'll find the win. We'll, yeah. we'll, find, we'll, we'll earn this. Okay. Um, it's probably going to be like a quiet move that we're like, oh, man, I can't not see that. Well, let's think. You want to give me a check. I don't think there's not a perpetual here. So the king can walk f8 e8 but it's like do we really want to like give white exactly we want to we want to like do this smoothly yeah minus eight and a half i think it's, <laughs> it's convincing right convincing edge for black i mean queen d4 okay now rook c3 where's mm -hmm. the because we don't we have everything covered uh huh. You don't have the check from c5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You've got it. So you can only give one check. Two checks. Two checks. We run. But then after queen h6, there's king e8, and there's no more. And then eventually we get in on the yeah. back rank. Okay. So basically, what we can say is that we don't know if Pan's gonna win, although there's a pretty decent chance she will. Um, but she's definitely not going to lose, and that means that she is going to be uh, the winner in the women's tournament. We have Rook E8 on the board, yeah. and yeah, she's not facing any risk here. She's actually up a pawn. Yeah, no, this is going to be a draw or a win for her. I still probably it's going to be a win, uh, just the way Anna's been playing. Even if there was like some miracle way to try to hold, haven't been... Doesn't feel like she's in that, you know, the, the form isn't there right now to put up maximum resistance. Um, so I'm definitely predicting a win, but um, yeah, we're definitely is clinching the event uh, shortly. Yeah, so we're going to, we're expecting Tan to be the winner. We're thinking there's a good chance that Fabi is going to win. And we are thinking that, you know, Hikaru may be able to hold on for a draw. So therefore, we do still have chances for a tie break tomorrow. And there is, Plenty of excitement still on the board to come. Yep. Hikaru's going to have to hold things for Fabiano. So Yeah. It's teamwork. It is. It Sometimes. Is. Well, yeah, we'll they think chess we'll is not a team sport. But. We're going we're gonna to see how it plays out. But, uh, yeah, we'll for see the how much Hikaru really likes Fabiano. Yeah, we're gonna, that's what we're going to learn today. That's, that's really yeah, that's, that's the question of the day. We'll see you guys after the break.
the realm of kings and queens, only a select few dare to claim the ultimate crown. Witness the birth of legends, a victor in the open and woman section. All right, we are back and let's take a look at what's going on between Anna Muzichuk and Tan Zhang Yi. Um, right now, the rook on e1 is hanging and does black does white have really any alternatives here although i do see an interest in well she doesn't even have this idea eric nope i mean you know my <laughs> idea was to give you perpetual check like this which does it doesn't even why nope. is it not working oh because you have rook rook eight. Come, yeah, come yeah. back and then um no i mean the king goes to f8 and then ah the king yeah. goes to f8 yeah. okay yeah yeah but of course you know i don't even have that move because there's immediate checkmate on c1 so how does white deal with this attack on the rook i mean does she have to just go back to g3 or h4 yeah one of those two squares so we looked Bit at something a... similar yeah i mean uh Definitely black's not playing the best moves and most of the advantage has disappeared, but yeah. white can never really win this normally. Um, and on the other hand, so I definitely don't agree with how black's been playing, but right. you still are in the driver's seat in terms of, I don't see how you lose. Um, it's even material, but there's a pawn on e2. And Humpy is making progress against Tingji. So even though mm -hmm. the only person who can theoretically catch Tanzong Yi well, wow. that king is very, very good on e4. Mm. And uh, you're not getting mated anymore either. Trades have happened, which always feels good for black. I would definitely predict, which isn't a bold prediction, but this is, this is winning for black. So basically, Tan is just Tan, completely Tan is like way, at way, yeah. Her victory in this tournament is very safe. Okay. I think it's without a doubt in the women's section what, what's happening here. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, Caruana has played King B1. So not too much has happened. Although, Eric, we did see Bishop F5 check um, rather than, you know, pawn Taking. takes pawn. So King, Bishop F5, King B8, and then simply King B1 by Fabi. So actually a very interesting choice to not take this pawn. I, I love watching this because it's uh, after Fabi plays it, I kind of get it a bit more. There's a certain stability in the position with the king on b1 yeah. and bishop on f5. We looked at ideas earlier with queen b4, but our king was on c1. But let's say here after king b1, and yeah, uh, yeah, there's ideas like that. But... This is such a crazy move, but do you think like we could have just had that to examine? I mean, we should. It's a move that needs to be examined instead right? of king b1. Yeah. Let me just look at it. It's interesting. I mean, my idea is like if you take with a knight, there's some sort of fork. But, maybe. but there's a queen trade, right? Isn't that what we don't like? Knight takes d7. Yeah. I was a little bit enthused by this. But yeah, we're not really making much progress, are we? Mostly just trading off our mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great pieces. Okay. It was a fun move. It doesn't lead anywhere. Uh, so king b1, much more sound. Yeah, because we were, we were taking b7 earlier, but is Nepo really going to take on c6? Like, otherwise, this move order is pretty clever uh, by Fabiano. Um, yeah. I think there's two moves to consider for the most part. It's bc6 and, I don't know, like h3 or something. Well, it looks like b6 is on the board by Nepo, giving well, Fabi a very didn't consider that. sizable advantage of almost three <laughs> points. Um, now our job, Eric, is just to look for the win. You know, I guess we need to look at all kinds of active moves. Or, I mean, anything like that. Because now we have to kind of... You know, we're right. getting closer to your Rook D7 move. We're getting Because this is actually like weak in mm. some squares that I like, but I'm not going for it yet, but mm -hmm. trying to make it work. I see, I see. You're starting to appreciate like it work like yeah like it no it does work yeah but there should be a better version of it that seems pretty this good. Is really weakened the two, two and a half pawns with a forcing move like that well you see like the difference right mm -hmm. so let's say knight takes d7 oh yeah i see the difference and we're coming well, back it's here it's like this is like 
Yeah. Making your line like on steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we like that because I mean now you have no king safety and I don't know. I mean I'm very tempted to just go for this. Yeah. And I don't see how your king is really going to survive. I don't really take that move too seriously. No. Nope. But going there. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, what I could do is I could take first, so you, don't, you can't even go to C8, right? Yes. Yeah, so that way I limit your options, and I force you Now there's you no out. risk here. And then it's just a question of, like, how I mate that king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, let's think about how we're going to mate that king. You I mean... Have some fun here? I was actually thinking that like queen C7 mm -hmm. is, like, the most annoying move Ah, uh, because possible. you're pinning me. Pinning everything. Yeah, and that's you just really like annoying. Run out of moves. Yeah, yeah, bishop, yeah, yeah. Bishop d3 now. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. That that's. What do you think about b4, Eric? What do you think? Can we make that work to like stop you from going like knight c5? Yeah, I think everything works. Yeah. That bishop on e4. It's. I mean, uh... I actually think. Well, I mean, rook d7. How are you reacting to this move? I can see Fabiano playing it. Yeah. Because there might be one move that's technically also like very strong, maybe, but this is a human move. It is a human move to see, easy to understand, easy to calculate, relatively yeah. speaking. So I could see this being on the board. I mean, the only question is, do we take this rook or that rook? Because it kind of both looks somewhat uh, attractive. Take on d7. I want to like open up the c file mm -hmm. for the tactics that are going to happen. Oh, okay, nice. And this the is rook is hanging. This is with tempo too. And then you're gonna go like some sort of. Well, rook, you have a rook, lot of moves. I was thinking about rook c1 to prepare b4. Because mm, I'm not really threatening anything. No. Yeah. So there's that. There's. there's the thing kind is, of a lot. There's even yeah. those like queen d7 here. Oh, sorry, queen d4. Mm -hmm. Just going for this pawn. Because to go in for the pawn and you're not in this situation to take on d7. Yeah, if you, you take... You shouldn't be. We can look at the lines. Like, yeah, I doubt it. Because there's like page three, but, but the problem is we're not just looking to win the knight, we're looking to checkmate. Now there's queen yeah. takes f4. Yeah. Wow. So we already found one move that looks pretty good for white. That looks winning. Your, yeah, rook d7 looks winning. Um, other ideas... Well, this is like very forcing, right? That's the beauty of rook d7 is that, you know, because you're threatening c7 check like they basically have to take your rook in some way so fabiano i do think he's going to be focusing on this move um and hoping that naka draws at the same yes. time quick question yeah what's the position of prague game fabiano's on like we're, he's gonna find the killer here yeah so prague is better okay i just wanted to see an update i, I was encouraged by black's opening play like yeah. king's indian structure and this is Probably going to be a win for Prague. That's for sure. I think yeah. Prague's going to win this. Yeah, it's going to end his tournament on a little bit of a better note. What about Naka? I think Naka? he can push for a long time, and I think that'll work. N Naka? Naka's holding on. You know, he's really... He's working for uh, the U.S. Yes. Yes. Um, no, you know, the fans will appreciate that, right? Because they like there's a lot of people, it's like it doesn't matter too much to them, whether it's Fabi or Hikaru, but they really would like an American to get a shot at the World Championship. Yeah. Nine Canada and the US are rivals sometimes, but we still generally, you know, support would want, the uh, neighbors. Yeah, support the neighbors. Yeah. And I so I feel like, you know, Hikaru is not really is not just playing for himself now. No. Right? So it's a, a lot on his shoulders and right now it's looking like he's defending, but you know, Gukesh, I mean, getting I, yeah. such an easy game. Such an easy game. At the same time though, at least now I really don't think there's much winning chances for Black. So I really think it's becoming, like, very clear that we're going to have tie breaks tomorrow. Are we just trying to double up on the C-file? Yeah. The A5 pawn is great for white to have. The mm -hmm. bishop on E1 just always targets it. And it's very hard for black to make any progress um, as it stands with that pawn on A5. And yeah. you don't want to, like, black could overextend, like... I don't think there's real losing chances, but mm -hmm. even if we try to find a move for Black here that like keeps five percent winning chances, I would struggle because um, I don't even want to yeah. play pawn to e5. I don't want to expand too quickly. 
Oh, yeah, I, I played a move. Let's make um, some more moves for So, Wade. okay. So let's say go here. Yep. And kind of like forcing me to trade mm -hmm. a bit, I yep. think. We trade, trade. What do you want? Rook c6. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Maybe know, even moves like h4. Yeah. Uh, let's go h3. I might be good at finding a way to lose this. Yeah, I'll I, feel like, I feel like I'll you're trying trade. hard there. But I, but I should trade the pawn, I think. I don't want to keep my pawn. Yeah, away. I agree that this might be possible. Because just somehow this rook h4 idea is going to get you the pawn back. By the way, Nepo has made a move, so we... Yeah, we can stick to that. Yeah, that, that game well, is huge. And rook d7 is on the board. Yeah. Bobby went for it. D takes d7, like you were saying. It really looks like Caruana is going to get, like, what was it like? How many games has he won in a row? Like five? Four, is it his fourth win in a row? He started with... Is it all in a row? So he literally was... all in a row. Because he went from, like, 50% to somehow ca getting up to, like, oh, we, we have the results. So, oh, there was a draw with Gukash somewhere in the middle. Okay, Just so the draw of block against the tournament leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's actually, it's going to feel like it's four in a row because I forgot about that draw with, yeah. with Gukash. So, it's only going to be three in a row. Okay, but still, that's, very no, that's impressive. An, that's, that's an insane finish. Yeah. Um, really found his form in that second half. Really did. I think that it, was just that, it was that desperation, just the desperation of his position in the tournament that made him show his best chess. And definitely the field helps. Like we're seeing a few streaks in this tournament. It's been a type of field that's really encouraged fighting chess, which mm -hmm. at least when you're in the hole, you have a chance to get points. Players are playing aggressive openings. Players that are doing well, they're not just satisfied with the draw with block, so... Uh, things have worked out really nicely. Uh, today, Jan has just blown up against Fabiano. Just this yeah. inexplicable decision. Bishop c3, this middle game thing. And uh, The funny thing is that Jan's body language is not yet giving away like how dire things are for him. Right? He's sort of like immersed in the game and he's not showing us like frustration yeah. or despair. And all of those are emotions that he's certainly capable of showing. So do you think, I mean, he must know that things are not going well, right? Is he just doing better at keeping that to himself? I think so. I think so. I think he's just doing better. I think this is, he must be so frustrated um, to be in this yeah. spot. Well, what do you think about his so game reckless. yesterday with, with Hikaru? Don't you feel like he kind of had his chances in the opening to make it more interesting and he just didn't? Yeah, that's... Yeah, what he did with the deep pawn there. Yeah. No, he definitely, definitely could have pushed for more there, and maybe that's definitely something he's probably looking back on and regretting. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to play black kings Fabiano in the final round, like no matter what, you know. Yeah. Um, I have to say also the two draws against Abbasov. Yeah. You know, it's very hard. I mean, it's, it's much harder to win the tournament when you're not winning any points against the lowest seed. And your rivals are. And yeah. Some of them are right. And two draws against Abbasov, although one of those games Abbasov kind of had, a, I would say, just a great game with the black pieces that, like, yeah. I can't really fault Nepo for not winning that game when Abbasov played it like, like a computer, basically. Um, on the other hand... That was the Rook end game. In the yeah, end was rook, yeah, that was in the end. That was like the Rook and Bishop end game. But it, it could have ended in a draw much earlier if Abbasov had been more precise. But he handled the middle game so well, and it just miraculously ha held together for him. Let's quickly peek at the Hikaru game because I mm -hmm. see pieces being traded. Yeah, on C4. Your Which prediction C4. coming true. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a very immediate pressure here of like Rook B1, Rook B5. Black's not even going to want to deal with that. Like, Black's going to mm. look to force a draw. Okay. I think soon. I, I mean, like, Black's not risking being worse. It's just at a certain point, you might be like, I got to realistically, I'm not being Hikaru here. Yeah. Um, let me just start mentally preparing for tomorrow, saving up some energy. Yeah, ex ex yeah, this is... That's what it is. It yeah, just, night before, is that, that's what that move said. It's like it's an offer of a draw, isn't it? Just, well, because basically you're saying like you're okay actually with the Bishops of Opposite Color end game, which um, I guess white probably is also quite okay with, right? I think you can right? take, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we you should be able to. Everything we've learned <laughs> like, the only way is like... 
letting Black's King run in. Yeah. I mean, so, do you think f4 is what we do here, or...? Yeah, I mean, we can, like, f4, king d6. Yeah. I could probably lose this with white, for sure, but it's a dead draw. Right. For, for, uh, and, some, and he doesn't some... even have to go for this move, right? That's, that's true. That's true. He doesn't have to, but you kind of have the sense that he will, right? Like, is he just, it's hard to say no to the bishops of opposite color and then finding something here. Like, maybe just king d3. Just like, what's the cleanest way to make this a draw? I, I don't know what the cleanest way is because those king side pawns are in dark squares, right? Yeah. So, you know, king d3, you're worried about bishop b6, right? King d3, bishop. But Hikaru looks comfortable. He does, he does, yeah. No, this was the whole game plan uh, at a certain point. To get to this type of position. Yeah, with the bishop yeah. on e1 pointing He defended out. well. I, I do think he defended that worst position well. He doesn't look like he's going to be suffering too much. But let's take a look at Fabi's game. Because yeah, think, that game was probably going to end by the time control. I think we can, yeah, stick to this until, until, until yeah, queen d4. All analyzed, and you can't even use your h pawn as like a sacrificial lamb. Uh, you're getting like mated real soon as as, as black. So, but Eric, I'm yeah. sorry to yeah. Like, let's talk about the drama a little bit of what we're what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. I mean, the fact that Fabi is the one who's going to be in the tie break and not Naka or Nepo is the height of irony, yeah. don't you think? I mean, he's been trailing behind these guys the whole tournament. Um, he's had to win so many games in a row. He needs to, you know, count on like the right result in Naka versus Nepo too. Yeah. Um, so for him, yeah. I mean, to make it to the tiebreak is just incredible. Yeah, everyone was focused on the other leaders and he just quietly, I mean, not quietly, one of the favorites, but people were counting him out and the focus was on other players. He's just uh, been, been a bit consistent. They both have their factors like Fabiano against um a basov i know he's trying to push he didn't get the re desired result in the second half mm, he drew, yeah. drew a basov hikaru there's a bit of irony there but he did lose twice to vidit so even being in a situation where you're playing for the candidates playing for first is pretty remarkable to recover from from yeah. two losses two to losses, yeah um because i don't think Actually, anyone out else... of all the players yeah. at this in this top group he's the one who's had the most losses yeah, and I remember looking at um, tables of the candidates in the past or top level events, and you rarely see somebody near the top with like two losses mm -hmm. in the, like the the you know the round robin cross table to somebody in like the bottom half, and that they're actually like close to winning the event. Yeah. So. Um, I do think it's sad for Hikaru. I mean, I feel like he's brought so much, you know, fighting chess and entertainment to this tournament that for him to somehow get shut out of this tie break um by this one kind of not great game at the end it's it's definitely a bit sad for him um you know well you know the way has opened up for fabiano yeah i i don't think he's gonna have so much regret about i mean he's gonna be unhappy about how this game played out but winning on demand maybe wasn't you know you're always expecting to win on demand oh that's twice good catch mm -hmm. um but I think he's going to have some, like he's been saying in his interviews, he doesn't have as much pressure. And I don't think generally when he goes to games, he has this must-win mentality. He's very good at taking advantage of mistakes, just playing really well. But he has found a way to take some pressure off himself. And yeah. I think he probably adopted that mentality still a bit today, where it's like, going to play my moves. Let, uh, if opportunities come up, they'll be there. Yeah. But it still didn't feel like he played with desperation in today's game. Um, because it's gotten him, you know, to this point where he, he has been a bit more relaxed and the results have improved. I, I just didn't get that impression from, from the opening and maybe the timing of some of the moves that he feels as much pressure. Um, yeah, like the urgency. The urgency. And it's not to say he's not competitive, and I do believe him sometimes. Like, I do think he cares about the result a lot, but he wasn't... Uh, he knew there was definitely a, a decent uh, chance that he wouldn't get much against Gukesh today. And he's probably happy that he's like contending for that. All right. Well, so Fabi's got his chance to pounce now. Yeah, I think Rook D1 was the key move because of all the pins. 
Yeah, you don't, you don't want to take the pawn first because there's queen e5, five. Five, right? So that's why it's kind of important that we start with the pin. And that's why he went rook d1. Yeah, the, so the threat is... Queen to c5. Is checkmate here. Hmm. Okay, so funny kind of idea, trying to use this h-pawn to save yourself. Yeah, but queen takes, if queen takes a four check, what's the yeah, move? Yeah, that's, that's sort of the, what there. we're expecting. But just to show people, like, if queen takes, I don't know, c5, pawn takes, it's funny that even though you can take this knight, um, it's actually not, you're not going to win if you take the yeah, knight, Yeah, you can right? lose after rook takes d7. Yeah, like if <laughs> bishop takes... Um, H3. H3, or even I would say King C7. King C7. Yeah. You can yeah. try. King C7. Right? Yeah. Like you're winning the bishop um, because if the bishop tries to move away, the pawn promotes. So Nepo's moves are based on this trick of the H pawn running. Um, that's why, okay, the knight cannot really be won straight up. But there is this capture. It's a nice pawn to take with check. And what could be the idea on that? I mean, what, c7. it's so terrible, right? Like, you're pinned everywhere. You're not, you're not going king c8, it's queen c7. Right. And now, so queen d4, queen c5, you can sort of try. How do we win? Queen d4, I thought Nepo would play h3. Mm -hmm. Not that it works, but that you're not, yeah, like, you're not necessarily... Mm -hmm. I just realized there's like a funny idea. I don't know. If I could one day also try to attack you on that diagonal. It's not completely crazy to think about that, is it? Like maybe no. it doesn't quite work, but certainly there's like something to this diagonal. Well, it also covers h1, so there's, yeah, there's potential. I mean, the problem with this move is that you're going to go like queen c5, I guess, again. Or... Probably everything loses, <laughs> to be honest. Like, like all these lines, like, yeah, you can even take on F7 there. Like, the H pawn shouldn't... Shouldn't be that strong. Like, no. you can just continue taking material. You do have to calculate a little bit. Okay. But, you know. The game ended Tan uh, versus Muzicic in a draw. So, Tan, Zhang Yi is the convincing winner of the 2024 FIDE Women's Candidates Tournament. And she has lost only one game in this entire event. Yeah. Won a boatload of games, and I think there's no question that you know she's the deserved winner. Yep, definitely a model of consistency uh, in the tournament. She played very fighting chess, um, lots of interesting opening choices. The only game she lost, she declined a repetition in. So I think. Um, oh. Oh, there are still. Checking to see if they made enough moves for the repetition. Well, okay. in any case, I think yeah. uh, we have some moves here. Queen c7 on the board. All right, let's find a nice way. So we kind of liked this one. This is pretty good. I like that move. I'm looking at queen d2 also, trying to figure out the differences. Queen d4 is a bit more mobile. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is that white just, one thing that they, white definitely doesn't want is to, like trade queens, right? No. <laughs> yeah, Bless because you. thank you. Yeah, you trade the queens, you actually lose all your advantage. So <laughs> that's not what Fabiano is going to be doing. Is it, I mean, yeah, we can you, look at queen d4. Yeah, we can look there, but I mean, I really like keeping black pinned. Oh, yeah, no, no, I think it's, I think that's super important. Um, let's say h3. Mm hmm. And now, do you want to look at your queen d5 move? Queen d5, I mean, it seemed like it was good. Maybe it wasn't the most powerful. Should we consider, like, if you want we bishop take bishop e4 first? h2. That one kind of, does that one just work out for black? Like, there's no way I can really make this one work. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, doing for other things. Okay. Bishop e4. Okay, there we go. Made the engine happy. <laughs> Um, we are winning threat is that you can't move your knight. You can only move your queen, but the only place you can move your queen is C5. here. So now we just need to find the winning blow. Mm 
And what could it be? It's going to look funny, but let's say queen d2 here. Mm -hmm. And my point is, is that it's not, well, it's not the best move, but if you go queen c7, I go queen d5, I'm threatening queen h2 check. Mm -hmm. So I just like struggle to find a move here for black. Oh, right, right, right. Because you're not pushing the pawn as long as that pawn is not getting closer, right? It's pretty good. By the way, they're playing some fast moves um, on the board. So queen, actually, queen d2 happens. Okay, so that has D4. the utility of queen h2, though. So that's... Right. So they're trying to make it to the time control. Actually, that is the question. You know, Caruana has to make 10 moves in a little over 10 minutes. Yeah, okay, that was confirmed. 10's result. Mm -hmm. So we have h3 on the board. Nepo is trying to make that pawn be dangerous. We can't take that knight. So do we go bishop e4 here? I don't mind bishop e4 because it yeah. makes sense to me. But what else would be super accurate here? We have to keep the pin. That's why bishop e4, I mean, yeah. it, it, it doesn't add to the pin, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's more accurate because it's like this attack does nothing. Um, where else could the queen go? Like the pieces are optimally placed, so. Right. Bobby just has to find something that is winning. It doesn't have to be the most yeah. winning. Yeah. I don't know, like queen d5 is running into this queen c5 mm -hmm. always. Like if you take this pawn, I just don't know if it's really worth it. No, no, no. Right? Like I don't really want to see this pawn. You don't want to catch <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to even look at these lines where <laughs> no. this pawn is getting closer to queening. So I really am kind of yeah. leaning bishop, towards this idea. Bishop e4. So bishop e4. And so... I'm trying to find an alternate, alternate move, but... And the point is here we can actually maybe even just win that pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just give the check. Send the queen back and just maybe pick up the dangerous pawn or or not, or there's something more winning here. Mm. That's a mystery. Well more winning than queen. Rook d six was what I was looking at, but it's uh this doesn't feel like how somebody's trying to convert it. And rook d six no. doesn't work. It's not it's not the move. I mean, I guess the problem with this move is like you're not pinned anymore and you've got So yeah, you can try to play down things. a pawn. It's right. true, it's true. Okay, we're not I'm not doing a good job. We have to keep keep the tent. The, but the something tent here tent. is like really, really good. You don't think it's queen d2? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. We just came back from d2. It is how, a mystery. How could there be something really good here besides taking the pawn? Strange. Or right? d6 or right. queen d2. Well, maybe, you know, maybe what it is is that we go back. Yeah. And then we try again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we try again from this position. Maybe yes, it's maybe not we try it again. To... Yeah, it's, uh, maybe it's like, uh, <laughs> I'm getting close to like B4. Like, I'm starting to get... Yes, yes. I'm actually thinking that as well. And so, then you go Queen E5. You kind of continue holding. Uh, Fabiano did play Bishop E4. Okay. Because yeah, b4, it's queen e5. Queen e5 sort of holds on somewhat. But we have something amazing here. Which, oh, rook c1. Rook c1 should be good here, right? Or you have something amazing. Rook c1, queen e5. And then I need to move. It just felt like I was maybe yeah. winning, making progress right. with the c file, but it's not. No, you're right, queen e5. I'm not good at uh, finishing off games today. So here. Hmm. Okay, is there a chance it's pawn to f4? I'm thinking, so right now, like, the good thing about the queen here is that you're, like, completely pinned, and my queen can go anywhere it wants. So maybe I should just, like, pick some good square. I don't know, does h6 do anything? Or can you just go back to c7? Where should my queen go to be optimal? What does black do if white does nothing? Put the queen on e5? Is that... Yeah, probably like, the, probably the queen just has to go between these squares, right? I have an other idea. And you don't want to do f4, because that loses all of our yeah. stability. Yeah, so let's say we go with queen f4. Okay. Okay, look at that terrible move. Why would it be so bad? I mean, it's strange that it's so bad, right? But let's say, here's what I was trying to do. 
Oh, we we repeated the position. Oh, wrong. maybe that's why. That's maybe why. that's it. I was gonna be like, that's hard. So, right? Because like, well, what I'm trying to do is like harsh. keep you pinned, and I'm trying to get to d5, and I'm trying to tie your queen down. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. Like, how do you actually stop this move? I think there's a problem stopping it. Yeah. No, I think we just made the position too many times. If we wait, go back... wait, 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 wait. Oh wow! They can stop it. That's that's the problem, uh -oh. huh? And then the h three pawn is uh, still alive. Yeah, you're doing a discovery on my rook, and you're stopping queen d five, and then it's a mess. So I've messed it up. All right. So there are some practical, pra practical like difficulties for uh, for Fabi, for sure. I mean, at least for us. Queen, yeah, <laughs> Maybe no, for no, us for sure. So queen, queen c5, they're, they're, I don't know why I can't find a move. Queen c5, I mean, there's, there's a really good move here. Mm -hmm. And it's eluding, it's elusive. Okay. So let's think again about what black wants. Black just basically wants to go queen e5. Just kind of hang around. Hoping that we can't win their knight. This is going to look funny. Okay. Uh, rook c1, queen e5, queen d3. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go queen away. a6. Yeah, and we're like... queen a6. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see your idea. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's see what they're doing. They've made a couple of moves. What do you think? Oh, of we this? actually have a queen d5 on the board already. Because a5 was like, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So this one looks like Nepo is not defending. Maybe even as well, because a5 lets the queen in. That's kind of worse than what we were looking at. Now, what, I guess king a7 is the only move. Yeah, I just thought this was losing because white can just play f4 or g5. Like, yeah. <laughs> queen f7. Okay, so you're like completely pinned. Completely pinned. And I guess the pawn is going to try to get to h2. And even if it does, h1 is covered. And then maybe at ever... some point you even go f4. Yeah, you can just do it right away. h2, f4, like, yeah. there's nothing here. Like, make it really safe to make sure that your bishop covers yeah. h1. I mean, yeah. nothing, the, the worst pins. Wow. Okay, so let's go king b8 there. So, well, we have, yeah, queen f7 is on the board. Mm -hmm. So, so h2, uh -huh. king b f4. Ah, oh, you want to keep H2 going up here. King B8. But here's the thing, though. You're just gonna go back. Yeah, I can go back. Let me let me think about what you want. But okay, yeah, I'll go back. Yeah, King A7. And then I think I'm like kind of getting ready to push my pawns. I think. You're gonna. Yeah. We're going to just queen the G pawn. This has been a surprisingly easy game for Fabi. Like, the resistance has not really been there. I mean, admittedly, Nepo's position just got worse and worse. Like, it was not easy to play. But, you know, we're going to get a result probably by around move 40. Yeah. It's not going to be, like, a super long end game. It's not going to be, like, the struggle that Fabi had yesterday to beat Prague. Like, it just feels like a much smoother game. Like, in fact, like, there was, like, a little suspense, actually, in this game. Yeah, I mean, definitely it wasn't the highest level of resistance. But I think all the psychological factors that were you know, in this game affected that. Yeah. That that Jan felt a lot of pressure based on the tournament situation. Yeah, and it didn't really allow it's a bit him of to a play feeling. Yeah. He was being kind of leading for most of the event yeah. or in a comfortable situation. Having mm -hmm. to win as black in the final round is yeah, that 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 might have just changed his mentality. So So we have the position on the board right here. Bobby has to make time control. He still has seven moves left to make, so he still needs to, you know, calculate accurately. But we're suggesting the move f4 to give a little bit more gu guidance to the h1. Yeah, we need a diaper. Square. We go f4, even if we blunder, we're, we're going to survive. Okay, F4, but F4 instead queen yes. h7 was played. All right. He likes that the pawn on f3 is, you know, just Guarding anchoring bishop. that bishop, but... Uh, yeah, I loved how the bishop could guard that square. Um, you know. Okay, I'm going to go... Well, rook c8 doesn't do anything. So yeah, also, the queen was so good here because it could always come back to d5. Like So yeah, his move, you know, it's fine. 
you know, yesterday uh, his technique was still very good. It was very, very good. It yeah. was different than, uh, but I, and I guess Rook H1 is a threat if you want. <laughs> Two pawns is enough. Yeah, you think he just wants to make it that prosaic? Maybe that's a little boring. It's a little, yeah, it feels very uh, sad to like let go of Rook that. Rook D2 would be file. more accurate. But then it allows, yeah, rook c8. So that's why I was going rook h1. Yeah, yeah, that's a little trick there. <laughs> By the way, let's take a look at how Hikaru is doing for one second here. Um, looks like, okay, he's won a pawn back, so their position is just like a dead draw at this point. Okay, he's not even down a pawn. So, you know, good save from Hikaru. Um, let's get back to Fabi. So Nepo has a lot more time than Fabi, but what can he move in his, his position? The rook doesn't move, the knight doesn't move. King V8 is really the only move, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but then you're also kind of going into this. So then he's like, oh, I have to go there. But yeah, he does play King V8 because there's nothing else. Maybe white can find a better three or something? Because we take on H2 with check if they move the knight. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. So just like a three for classic move, yeah, just make things a little bit safer for this king. Because I don't see a move for black. Yeah. <laughs> so and if he hurries with this move, what's the problem? It sort of drops a bit of the advantage. Maybe knight of six, maybe like that. You know, maybe at least we sort of separate these. Yeah. Lines. Oh, like well, you blunder rook one. Everyone blunder rook one. Yeah, not good. Um. Okay, well, well, what I meant, what I meant, Eric, oh, was yeah, yeah, that's what right, I meant was this one, where, you know, the pawns become separated, and I guess white is actually winning quite easily. For yeah, sure. Because you just put the rook behind the pawn and you push. Um, so, basically, there's not really any bad moves for white, like, even rook h1 is enough, but he can make it, like, a little bit more, um, use Zugzwang a little bit more. So, nice choices here for Fabi. I mean... Certainly, there's no way he's letting this position out. You know, when you get a chance like this to win the candidates tournament, you know, you're not letting go of the no, advantage. No, no, no. Nepo, Nepo is still not, not showing too much expression. But, um, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm just guessing that he's still thinking about his mistake. Uh, yeah. Uh, because there's not much to analyze in these current positions, but definitely beating himself up for that mistake earlier. That's just a guess, though. I'm not a. But it's it's been a it's been a depressing game for sure for Jan. Um, much different than his games and during the rest of the candidates. Yeah, one thing is that Jan came here with just one person, you know, his second, and Fabi does have more of a team here, and maybe that also makes a difference, right? You feel just like kind of more support, and for this tournament, you know, I guess Jan's. Uh, other potential people like they, I mean, because he normally travels with a whole entourage, right? Mm -hmm. At least he certainly was with one at the World Championship match. Okay. Yeah. And um, and here he's like much more alone than I think he's you know used to being. So I don't know, maybe that yeah, could, would yeah. be, could be a factor, you know, that you don't have like all your close people with you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, I guess I guess for uh, I mean he's been been in a few of these cycles now, but. Uh... I like to have uh, more people around, so some of the players have their preferences, but... A3. Yeah. Yep. You predicted that one. White's not in a hurry to do anything. I given... can't find a move for black. Yeah, that's the thing. So, let's see. Black can move the knight. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Then, I guess, your concerns about that... Taking pawns with are so like, nice. Yeah. You feel like those two connected pass pawns are quite enough. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with... Uh... And then we can... Even what can we do? Like we can King even A7. play like Queen H seven if we want, and just back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There doesn't appear to be too many chances for Jan. So I mean, let's talk about the positives of today. Let's start talking about that. People, I mean, I think the crowd. I'm not at the fan zone, but an American in the tie breaks is is gonna decisive game. That's that's gonna get a lot of people excited. Absolutely, and I, one more day of chess. Yeah. That's 
So that's very important. So now that's going to be um, on Monday. So maybe not as many people can enjoy it live at the venue. Yeah, but... I wonder. I mean, I've been told they may try to open up the venue and sell tickets. I don't know the update. Mm. But I'm sure a lot of people would want to, like, watch this live, you know? Yeah, two-game match, 15 minutes plus 10 seconds. If still tied, going down to blitz. If still tied, sudden death games. Um, sudden death games means what? Like, no, I didn't really understand what that meant. How, how, that, third thing, oh, how that third thing was different. Was it One game, if draw, another um maybe it means it's like it means like the first one to win i don't really get that get what that means if it gets to the very final yeah 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 first, first one, one to, to win. win eventually yeah. eventually it gets that to that okay first one to win in the blitz will take the spot which makes sense because at some point you got to end it at right? some point yeah but they will have a lot of chances at each other Right, like starting with rapid, then blitz. Yeah, even even the two rapid games, the chance of that being tied, it's 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 very possible. But we've seen so much fighting chess that I I would expect it to actually be decided even in the rapid. But I'm all for Armageddon and as much excitement excitement yeah. as possible. By the way, Hikaru and Gukesh, they've made time yeah. control. They're at move forty one, so they actually are allowed to offer each other a draw at some point um and i think that will happen you know very quickly i think it'll be almost simultaneous like fabi's win and gukesh's draw with fabi with with naka so yeah, yeah. no i i uh gukesh is just checking to see if there's any any tricks or any pressure left but with opposite bishops hikaru's body language is also showing you like he's he knows he's going to draw this he's comfortable it wasn't like the middle game where you're down a pawn and you have to make a couple moves. And, you know, it's funny in the way in which Fabi is going to, like, justify the pre-tournament predictions, isn't it? Okay, so we got Queen E5 on the board. Bye. Not a bad move. Mm -hmm. Right, so one thing we cannot do is take that knight because that pawn will promote, so we got to look for something else. I was curious about this move, queen h6. Hmm. What do you think of Interesting. it? Interesting. Queen h6, okay. Yes. Didn't even cross my mind. I want to target h2, target mm -hmm. b6, prepare queen c6. Mm. And the question is, again, I can't find a move for yeah. black. Black is running out of moves. Yeah, queen h6 looks good. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, when I, when I, Heard you, I was like, let me stop looking at the dumb move I'm thinking about, you know? Because I, because I was like, this sounds, this you is so G5 practical. No, 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 it's much worse than that. Actually, right? G5 makes a lot of sense. Oh, well, much worse. <laughs> yeah, no, I was looking at something ridiculous. Oh, so no, then no, let no, me... no, 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 we're going to okay. keep that secret. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, then I forced myself out of my little reverie, and I was like, let's just, let's hear what Eric is saying. It's Queen H6, it's like very sensible. Yeah, that's a good idea. You want to come here. You want to keep targeting this. And also b6 is rather weak as well. Yeah, I can just tell the way Fabian was playing this position. He never pushed that f3 pawn we were looking at. So I know there's a certain construction and stability that he's using. Yeah. Keeping the rook on oh, d1. Oh, he played your move. And, you know, Nepo was like, huh. Yeah. Nepo probably didn't see it. He did make a little bit of a reaction there. But, you know, Fabi is getting lower on time, right? So... Of course, Nepo is going to keep the game going until time control because Fabi still has to make four moves. He's got like a little over two minutes to do it. There is definitely some suspense on the clock. But the position is getting really, really. Yeah, good the chances for him. are running out. Yeah, so Queen H6, and what can Nepo oh, do? Queen C7. Queen C7. Rook D2 or Rook H1. Mm. But Rook D2 makes sense because I want to take on H2 of check. Makes yeah. me happy. You're like managing to keep your eye on that square and there's just no tricks, huh? No tricks. You're gonna take the pawn and if the knight moves, there's gonna be a trade and you take on h2 yeah. and that that's the end of the chess suspense. I feel like, you know, while this pawn is on the board, there's always a chance for black. Yeah, right? yeah, no, I'm I'm glad they're playing it out. I hope this game gets played out. Yeah. Well, we're definitely gonna play out to move forty. I mean, the only question is is there gonna be like, you know, Still moves after move 40. Yeah, queen c7 is the only move. You wouldn't really 
Yeah. Or like his king a7, there's queen c6. Yeah, it's funny, Hikaru and Gukesh are still playing their like rook and bishops of opposite color position. So I think like in Gukesh's shoes, like he could have made a draw and you can offer it whenever he wants, but mm -hmm. he probably wants to make sure that he doesn't have the mentality that he's like kind of coasting. Like he wants right. to stay as sharp as possible right. and like just maintain that mentality that he's had throughout the event of just playing the best moves. Yeah. Not even thinking about like just just trying to play the best move at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. Not everyone like it's hard to maintain that. When you get close to the draw, it's easy to be like take the take the pressure yeah. off. Yeah. So rook d2 is like this key move that we're expecting from Fabi right, right now. Very nice move. It's like so like psychologically it's a little hard to like let go of that square with one more piece, but you can still do it. The queen is enough. So let's see if he does it. And if you really hate it, you can go rook h1. Because two pawns up yeah. is still good enough. That's but... still good enough, yeah. yeah. But basically the reason we're going here is because we want to get that rook trade, right? And I think he did it. Nope, he did something else. He went g5. Yeah, so when I said queen h6, mm -hmm. I realized g5 was also really good. Because black is in some Black, Yeah, black can't move, and it's the same thing. You move the knight, yeah. we take, and we take on h2. So. Okay. But they're all winning. They're all winning. Yeah, so. this is way of doing it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, this has higher chances of a checkmate because mm -hmm. they'll take queen f4 allows queen c6. Mm -hmm. Queen e5 allows queen c6. This is better, <laughs> better for seeing a mate. Yeah, it's interesting how you come down to the last round. And sometimes, like, purely in a chess sense, you feel like other rounds were more exciting. Yeah. Right? It's that's like, true. This one was supposed to be the most exciting, but maybe that's what we're going to get tomorrow. I don't mind that. I, I came for the high stakes round, but maybe not the most exciting. But Fabiano, like, winning on demand is... That's a big deal. remarkable. Yeah he's, yeah, he's my closest friend in the field, so I'm very happy for him. Um, let's set the bias, but I feel a bit bad for Jan because I was really expecting this, like, very double-edged fight, and... He's been playing at such a high level, every candidate's his blunder today was just super uncharacteristic of, of what he's shown recently in recent years. Cause um yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, Rook G. I wanted it, yeah, more of a struggle there. Yeah, you wanted more of a struggle between these two titans. That's right, than we got today. So in Rook G, how is White gonna wrap this up? Fabiano's got three moves left to make with a minute and 15 seconds. And Black is finally out of the pin. He's finally dreaming of moving that night. Should we just go G6 and hope for the yeah, best? Yeah, G6. Right? <laughs> you know, like, like, you know. It's a, Knight C5. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the most, you know, ambitious move, right? So I, He's got something planned. Rook H1. Okay. Okay, that's good. So basically, at this point, we just want to play rook takes h2. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have rook g5 there. It's going to be queen d8 in the end. So this is in, the big In which line? So let's say knight like, c5. Yeah, well, I'm saying, like, if, if you played here and then you took, like... Yeah. I mean, I, I could that? take and then just give a check. And I'm win. wondering if I take right. the bishop off first and then do <clears> that. <throat> Oh, you mean, yeah, so you're saying it's knight yeah. five, right, right, right. I was just assuming we don't even, like, make a move for black here. Um, but, like, let's try knight c5. So you're thinking rook h2, or... Yeah, rook, yeah, rook, h2. rook h2. It just does give a pawn back, which is... Or maybe we should even try maybe bishop d5. Yeah. Bishop rook d5. D, rook d8. Rook d8. Okay, let's, let's stay with the game. <laughs> yeah, we can watch with the... Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let Fabi convert. So knight c5 is on the board. And how many more moves left? Two moves for white. So he needs some precision here. He went for bishop h7. Interesting. Putting the bishop in front of the queen. <clears throat> I mean, he wants to get rid of the rook and just play like queen here. So rook, D8. rook g5 is what Jan is calculating mm. right now. 100%. Wow, okay, rook g5, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. At least it, like, removes this bishop off the board, and... 
it's not what you want to see as white. Like definitely yeah. it's not converting the way I would, but mm -hmm. uh Yeah, rook d2, that move that you had that it was really convincing. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. What do we do now? Okay. Well, let's actually just I guess we just go king a1 bit. there. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only, well, it's not the only move. But. Okay, it looks like something is happening in maybe in the game between Naka and Gukesh. Or maybe Gukesh is just interested he is. in the other results. Yes. Maybe that's what he's... Because he's going to play on as long as that, like, he wants to know exactly what, what the situation is. So you think Jan might find a little bit of hope in this? Temporarily. It's losing, but you feel it, good to give some checks. What about, like, Rook D8 or something? I guess just... Yeah, like why not here? Uh, okay, so let's go queen takes... H2. Yeah, I was kind of hoping like maybe I would have... I blundered. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think you blundered no? here. It's of probably king even king c2? c2 or something. Because of king c2, right? All right. I'm pretty king crazy. B, king a2 would be a blunder. <laughs> wait, or wait. What am I saying? Am I, I'm just, I think I'm just giving bad lines, so... Let's not allow any of this. Hold on. What's going on here, though? Why does it say that... Why are we winning? Yeah. That's the question, isn't it? Because I mean... Oh, oh so the queen is pinned. I'm really bad. I thought there was queen f7, mate, after king e2. Oh, Just king right, e2. right. It's pinned. There's See, no we're at a <laughs> yeah. really long day. That's funny. That's funny. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what Nepo just did. Yeah. He took on g5. Yep. All right. It does give Fabi at least a pretty yep. obvious move. Um, but then he's going to have to decide how to get out of check. So definitely... Mm -hmm. He's going to go king a1. He needs to like not panic. Okay, he took the rook. That's good. <clears throat> First good step. And now, how to get out of check? King a1, right? King a1. Because you make the knight give you a check, and then at least there's not a check on the next move. He's... Yeah, they've made time control. So, we go here. Now look at that. Holy smokes. Don't that would be me. insane. That would be insane. So somehow black is now mm -mm. not losing after that completely natural move. What is going on That there? I made. Fabi hasn't made that. Right, right, I, I right. suggested that move. But I mean, it can, I mean, it, it can it's, happen. One, of, it's it... one of the two choices, right? Mm. I mean, no one's going king c1. So it's like one of the two. The white king can go to it. actually looked really natural. So the fact it that really it, did. Mm -hmm. I I'm trying to understand if like why why yeah what like why is King A two Queen F seven check so good for right white? so you can start with this I guess I mean there's also like maybe Queen C two <clears throat> I don't know if there's like a difference I don't know maybe try maybe Queen C two. See what happens. Bring in the queen. No, but the, yeah, this is this is right. Like, why, why so, are we? How did this happen, right? Yeah, just to kind of maybe show the line. Knight b three, knight, knight b three, and we actually make a draw, for example, like that. That would be drama. Right. So, um, king a two, I guess, is the right move. Which is a bit counterintuitive. <laughs> mm hmm. Queen F7 check. Queen F7 is the only check. And then you go back to A1. Yes. And that's why it's a bit counterintuitive. It's that you have to draw the queen away from the C2 square. Not obvious. And then on this check, then King B1. you're going all the way to C2. Well, yeah, there's no yeah. check here, so that's nice. And then wait... You and go queen h7, yeah. And then you have to go here. And I was actually even trying to enter this position as black. Ultimately, I chose to not do it with the knight on b3, but um, yeah, and the difference is because there's queen g8. I see. I see. So yeah, we're that's not trying why, to win h2 here, yeah. Yeah, that's why the knight should have been left on c5, or at least like that's why king a1 was worse than king a2, because um, we, here we win the knight. So. Oh, king a1's on the board. King A1 is on the board. Is that right? But, but King A1, wrong? Yeah, no, you're, you're right, but that's the wrong move. Yeah, it's time no, to no, get... He, he actually played King A1? Yes, he actually played the move that we said was the mistake. This is actually what happened. 
This is incredible. Okay, so remind me, after knight b3. No, yeah, it's queen c2, I think we were saying, not knight b3. Oh, we yeah, yeah, we, have to, we have to go king c2. It was queen, queen c2. c2. This is just incredible. Incredible. After it's move 41, it's this famous 41st move where people have tons of time. And, you know, well, that's what I said. It wasn't clear because this is so anti intuitive to walk into this check. It was my intuition, too, but I. Uh... Queen c2 can hold the draw apparently for black. I mean, it's a nice active move. We no, this, is, this, would be, this would be completely insane because Fabi had so many winning moves. Right, no, Fabi doesn't win it. It's just tragic. Tragic. That, that is one of the most winning positions I've ever seen. But at the same time, what he did makes sense because you just assume you're winning after king and one. Sure. But the problem is, you know, I, I gotta say... Practically speaking, this gave Nepo life. Like, yeah. this was just totally... Yes, yes, yes. Different. I mean, like, you can sort of see the danger to the white king. And yeah. honestly, like, you can feel, actually, that things are getting out of control, yeah. right? Yeah, we're playing blitz. None of us would want to allow this as white because we're, like, walking, you know, like... Wow. Watching out for mines with this 9p3 check. Well, so let's queen, look at this move. Queen c2, what move would you play as white after queen c2? Well, I mean, we okay, so we already know that the check and taking the pawn is a draw. And it's a very well-known draw, like it's a very right. common pattern. So ne Jan will play queen c2, 100%. I'm right. very confident right, he'll right, play right. it. It's just in line with the entire yeah. setup of block. Yeah, which is insane for him to get like a draw out of the position that he had where he couldn't even move anything. No, that rook d2 move that you were saying, I really liked it for a reason. It you was, know? yeah, it was. It was, it was just yeah. like, come on, use the pin, win the pawn, end the game. And what he started going with is bishop h7 stuff. That was <laughs> shocking, because I was like, he kept his bishop on e4 for a reason. That's why the pawns went after. He really liked it there. But then the, the structure changed when he started playing g5, bishop h7. I thought I knew what he was doing. He wanted the pieces, like, all, like, Defended and coordinated, but then when it went bishop h7 g5, um, something. Oof, something okay, let's let's just talk about this. Like, the, um, first of all, White would like to win this pawn, but it, we already know that there's like no scenario where they're winning this pawn right away. Well, we have doctor. This is like, unless the, the engines are on something or we're on something, this is a draw. Right. And it's a it, it's not a draw that's hard for Black to find. The only player who can find stuff is White to try to play on but I don't even but what is black's threat like let's say we I don't know we go queen well that's why I was wondering yeah I mean let's just say yeah. we make that move like what is black's threat are here? you okay so I'm gonna go king a7 mm, you want to just do nothing I want to go queen g2 mm. because see, what see. if you have to play very passively then yeah. it's like yeah that's a good move. Get out of the checks. Get out of as like many it, checks as you can. You're up in exchange, but if your rook is on h1, you're not a happy, happy exchange up. You actually are fully tied down. Yeah. So queen g2 is a huge problem. Here. Yeah, yeah. No, I like king a7. That's a good point. So basically just secure the king because the check doesn't really do much, right? The check is just no. like, as long as you don't have that check, there's no point in even giving one. But that's why we know Yan won't give a check because it's just a yeah. bad move and you want to hold the check in, like keep mm. the tension. And also, the knight is actually pinned to this pawn. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, like, king a7 is great in many ways. Defending the pawn, unpinning the knight, and um, getting out as, as many checks as you can. Mm. Who said we wouldn't have drama here at the... No, I'm, 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 like, in total shock. Oh, you're just in shock, This right? was, like, the most winning position we had of the candidates. It really um, was. It really was. And just was. one moment of, as you said, move 41. It's, I often blunder, uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, this is definitely a big thing because, you know, now he finally had time. So he, he did have time to work this out. Like, I don't think this is easy. It's not like what he had before. But he could certainly sense the danger and start really analyzing the difference of these two checks. Right? So, again, the point of why this move is superior is because when you provoke the check, then you go back to a1. The queen cannot come to c2 where it's really good. And if they check you, the knight is actually not that good on this square. And then basically you come back around to this position 
and they cannot even like hold a knight there. So it's good for you. Yeah, can we go? So so after king a2, uh -huh. what if black plays the same way? Let's show the difference. Like, so let's say queen check. Queen check. Or actually, um, let's say queen c2. Right, queen right c2. Away. So I think the difference is, yeah, there is a big difference. And it's the fact that we can win the h2 pawn. I know that like we can yeah. go queen g8 and cover b3. But how well, can do we, we just can we just go here yes, though? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's just that we're basically taking that pawn. Yeah. And then before, when the king was here, we you had, had that draw. Yeah. But yeah, now you right. don't have knight b3 with tempo. You have like one useless. Or wait, you have this check. King king b1. But again, we're always going and we're surviving, yeah. and and then, then we win with the extra material. So you know, this is so crazy. Like what the tension has done to them because you know to not even really think for that long on move 41 in a position where you should already have feel that you've kind of messed up a bit. That's strange. Yeah, I, it looks tricky to me. I was so shocked that that's what Jan immediately like, this is, this is, this is exactly what white, uh, black has been dreaming of. Black couldn't make moves for 20, last 20 moves black was tied down, pinned. Like actually had no moves until Fabiano gave him this. There was no moves. It's like it was a master class in control. And he was depressed. He's probably thinking, like, I mean, I can't still can't believe I blundered. And then this hope. Yeah. Uh incredible. I mean, like, just like going back a little bit to show people how easy things could have been. Like after move 36, so just five moves ago, it wasn't yeah. like ages ago, we were so winning and yeah, I'm, I'm, all I'm you had to do like why even bother with pushing this pawn right just like win the one problem by the way that pawn is still on the board for some reason didn't have to be on the board that's anymore. true that pawn. no i i i'm speechless because everything about this position makes sense you've earned you've played a3 yeah. so now rook d2 you've really earned i can win the pawn back mm -hmm without any counterplay. Like I actually no, don't see counterplay. There's not even any calculation. Like the only calculation is like, oh, they move their knight, I take their rook, I give a check, I have two connected pass pawns and I win, that's it. Yeah, save king and I have the bishop on yeah. the right color. And instead, look at this, like we're like going with g5 for some reason. And then, I mean, this, okay. This, this shocked me right here. This, bishop this. h7, right, was also kind of, kind of strange. Yeah. But he was afraid of that line, right? Of, of knight takes bishop and rook takes g5. Yeah. That's the problem with rook h1. Mm -hmm. there was so this he was afraid of this. Knight takes here. Knight takes, pawn takes, rook g5. Yeah. Even though... Because bishop h7 is unnecessary. Yeah. So this could have been on the board. I'm guessing it's winning because you play the queen endgame and you put the queen on d5 and you push your e-pawn in some way. This is probably a technical win, so Fabio could have gone for it. Um, yeah. But no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it says I'm this wrong. One, this one is not so I'm, easy. I'm wrong about that. So, it must be some other right, way. Right here. Got to be careful, right? Or you want oh, to wait a sec. Wait a sec. So I'm just looking at. Uh, Queen H8. Queen H8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen H8. I have to go Queen C8. And then you do something good. Maybe just Queen D4. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Look at that beautiful centralization. And then we just go Rook H8 and hit B6 and everything. So, I mean, he even could have gone for this, right? Like, it yeah. wasn't... That's where the time trouble came in. He saw probably, like, you know, some yeah. checks, some spite checks, and he yeah. didn't allow it. Yeah, I mean, because bishop h7 just looked, it looked weird. Just moving the bishop out, like... Black had no mobility, all of a sudden the knight's on c5, all of a sudden the queen is is, is in the game, and uh, the pawn's still on h2, yeah. This was um, really bad judgment by Fabiano. Yeah, I mean, and then, and then just like not to take time on move 41. Queen c2 is on the board. Yeah, Nepo thought for a few minutes, and now Fabi's been thinking for like three minutes. He's going to have energy. He's going to play quickly. And Fabi's going to have to play this position. Like, he's got 27 minutes right now, but Black knows exactly what to do. King e7, Nepo will find. Mm -hmm. Time pressure will come quickly for Fabiano. 
You think and, he's going to spend a lot of time here now? Yeah, because I don't even know. Not only do I know why I now, know what to do, but I don't know. Like Black knows what to do. So Nepo yeah. will play fast, but pressure. He does yeah. that when he's like, you know, uh, playing from behind. He's going to play quickly, stare at Fabian. Like probably he realizes there's a blunder on the board, or at least that the the job of converting is is much harder yeah. than it was. And so there's just going to be a great amount of like pressure on Fabiano from himself. Like, yeah, it's incredible. Might, I, I can't imagine the emotions that he's going through right now. It's um, such a big shot. You know? If it starts to set in that this is so, I guess let's analyze a little bit. Um, uh, for example, Queen D8 check and Queen D1. Mm -hmm. What can White trade that? You know, Queens off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, Queen D8. King A7 King or A7, Queen B7, A7, whichever. A7, okay. And let's say Queen D1. Queen D1. I'm just curious. Okay. Trying to find. Um, Queen I was saying G2. Queen G2. Because there's threats here. Knight B3, Knight D2, Knight okay. F3, Knight G1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knight here, you said that? 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 Okay. <laughs> A little... And you can't even trade queens in that position because it will still be knight two one. Like just some. Well, why don't we just start with knight d three? Let's just yeah, start we can with that. You know, uh, let's, let's take a shortcut. What, but yeah, once once Fabi starts seeing positions where the queen is on g two, you know you've done something wrong. You've realized that, like, because all of a sudden the rook is useless on h one. I felt this like is, this is you know, incredible. you know, Eric. I felt something has gone wrong the moment I felt some danger to the white king that I've never felt before. Yeah. Well, I I suggested king and runner. I'm like, wait. Peter's like, nope. Yeah, yeah. No, this has been such a dramatic turn of events that I don't know. It's heartbreaking for sure. Uh, heartbreaking for Fabi. Amazing for Gukesh. Yeah, Gukesh must be thrilled right now. Uh, Hikaru's probably in shock. He's probably in shock. On I mean, Fabi. Hikaru I did, so, uh, did so much, like, you know, to save that position. Yeah. I'm just trying to find winning chances. Like, we do have to make, uh, you know, special mention. Vaishali won her fifth game in a row. Right. She which is remarkable. Logno with the black pieces. That is amazing. Lose a bunch, then improve that and like win five in a row. I don't yeah. know if she lost three in a row. She should be so something. proud of her tournament. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because shows so much strength of character to come back and turn such a disaster into something that you can be happy with. And then you have that valuable experience yeah. and you have that like the character that you've built up. I mean, let's just take a look. She started winning in round 10. So she lost from rounds six to nine, and then she won from rounds 10 to 14, starting with that very lucky turnaround. I mean, it's amazing how that one game set her up because mm. she should have lost five in a row, yeah. right? Like she was so lost yeah. in that game. But after that, it's just been one win after the no another against some of the, you know, well, everyone here is high rated, but you know, she got to play like all the top seeds. Yeah, no, five in a row in, in this field is 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 incredible. And she also Whether had that fourth the loss with Tatan with the white pieces. Yeah. That was like her fourth loss. So it just looked like everything was everything going downhill. Going yeah. No, that's that's I'm I'm very impressed. Yeah. Um, by a lot of like the, the youth in the in this tournament that have taken these losses. Really yeah, well. I can see now I, I feel the pressure in Fabi's face. You know, I can see that he's really like coming to terms. With what's going on and he's he's feeling frustrated the rook is stuck on h1 we want to win the pawn on h2 but there's a draw so the only thing left is your f pawn you, either the queen somehow on g5 find something optimal or there's literally there's no moves to play besides your f pawn and that doesn't look like it i get the point i'm making is that not only do i think it's going to be a draw i don't even see how you can try to improve yeah. the position unless jan makes a blunder I don't even see where there can be equal positions. One side's, you know, easier to play than the other. I find all the pressure here to be on, on Fabio's shoulders, and I don't even see where you can deviate. So, so let's say King A7. Yeah. What do we even try? Because I'm just mm -hmm. so concerned. Okay, so um, once again, so Queen G3 is the move. Mm -hmm. King A6 here or A4 or something? Is that the move? Mm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. But here I'm just already giving knight B3. Don't I just give that? And, and that end game. Is oh, oh, okay. you no. give, oh, I see. You wanted to give up the um, exchange, yeah? 
Yeah. I'd give Although up. I think I think maybe I it can is. manage this. Yeah. Because it was like F one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I'm managing this one because I'm I'm just giving perpetual right away. Why? Well, oh, you, you wanted B3, to play B three. But then there's a B B three. Yeah. Queen F seven. Mm. And now you have and A four and coming. Queen takes F three. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, like this queen cannot cope with all the tasks. She when she guards the pawn, then this one comes and then she can't. Yeah. Really, I mean, we can try. You can try. Yeah, we can try this one, right? Just the king will be like he's going to try. Yeah, but, um, I mean, but maybe we can do better. We than can that. do better as black. I mean, I feel like first of all, we haven't even really. And this is me tried, not trying to yeah. play tough moves as black. This is yeah. just like. So Fabi has played king a two. Okay. Um, and now. That makes sense because okay. I didn't want to move the queen. I don't want to move the pawn. We can't move the rook. Yeah, and but intuitively, I'm like a four kind of always feels like a good move to have included. So, for example, after knight d three, there's queen h seven check. Oh, look at Lay's reaction watching all of this. Oh yeah, she she was watching the games um, on the screen. What happens after knight d three here? Is knight d three the same type of draw, but uh, with very knight forcing? One, uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, I blundered. I blundered. Don't listen to me. No, nope. I got tempted. But let's fi find out why this move is wrong. Though. I was going for the, you know. Yeah, knight c1. Knight c1. Now we figure out why. Hmm. You think it's queen g7 check and queen c3? I hold everything and you win the pawn. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep, Eric, when you suggest good moves, I tend to agree with them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, I have to, yeah, I need, my move was off. Okay. But so, it feels like after after king a2, there might be something forcing here. Can we just improve our pawns and like maybe get that b3 square Yeah, back? do you want to go a4? I want to try it. When black's able to make these moves and it's <clears throat> good and, and it's... Uh... Probably. Yeah, I mean, I really want to have access to b3 for my knight, for my queen sometimes, if needed. And I want to, I guess I want to play knight b3 next, right? Mm. Like, for example, let's just make, like, some random move. How is the pawn still on h2? This is, <laughs> like, I can't believe oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's, it survived. And it's going to hold the game. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to push the f-pawn. And um, let's say we go, shall we go here? I feel like we can, although you still have that, hold on, hold on. You still have this idea of like queen c3, but then I'm going to have like queen g2. Okay, yeah. let's try that. Oh, let's see. We yeah. found a way to lose. We're finding ways. That's good, though. We're learning yeah. about the position. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. How does white win this one? He's definitely got to stop this check somehow. Um, so we start with, again with this. There you go somewhere here, and then we find. Yeah, well, let's go queen, queen c3. Queen c3, right? Yeah. So it's always the king there. is bad on e6. Mm. So queen g2. Now we can go queen um, e1, or for example, and we have the f pawn, f pawn pushing, and mm. queen f1. Like the king is just bad on a6. That's what I'm. That's what I think. Mm -hmm, but, uh, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a bad move. But okay. something like that. Something. The... You know what it is. It might be. You think it's queen, queen c4? c4? Feel. Maybe I can try to play for checkmate at some point. Uh -oh. You know, like where, yeah. you know, like we, like in general, like I'm already thinking, hey, maybe I can move my rook somewhere, like starting at queen c8. You know, try to move my rook and then like mm -hmm. queen, and maybe I can get a mate somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay, yeah. let's try to be more precise. So king a2. A4. Uh, A4 seems to be one of the decent F5. moves, and F4. And we just need to yeah, find yeah. like where, what to do with this knight that isn't bad. And the other interesting thing, so let's ask the other interesting question. So if I check you, and then I go to C3, mm -hmm. the difference like here is what? The difference here is that there's just queen g2. Well, the knight's better on c5. We only right. wanted to b3 when we were threatening. Like right now, there's this. The king is more stable for black. Mm-hmm. Like we want to keep the options open. Knight b3 is committal. I only want to play knight b3 if it's like concretely good.
So Queen E1? Right here, yeah. Mm -hmm. And knight to d3? Yeah. Got a little bit of a problem. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's go back. So I think we understand why the queen can't go there right away. So, so we tried at four, and then we still have to find a move for black. Yeah, what's black's general drawing setup? Um, Could be knight e4. Good feeling about that move. Maybe. Potentially. Maybe not. Yeah, I was trying to calculate I mean, like you have queen to calculate, 7 obviously. and then queen d4 or queen h7. Yeah. Yeah, what did you calculate after queen h7? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I just randomly said this move that it looked interesting because, you know, we have these ideas of knight c3. But, yeah, of course we need to calculate something. So... So let's calculate. Knight e4, queen h7. King moves somewhere. And queen takes queen h2. h2. And do we have an interesting move there? I don't think I see it. I thought black's setup was a solid draw, but I need to find the idea here. It's not mm -hmm. it's elusive. Yeah, so there is actually, like, despite the fact that certainly Fabi has completely, like, messed up, there are still chances for him to win. Yeah. Yeah. Problem is, for himself, like, the pressure he's going to have to put, like, like, and what he's dealing with emotion, emotionally, like, after being completely in control and winning. Right. Um, he just has to reset everything. And be like, how can I be as challenging and tricky as possible? Mm -hmm. For not going knight b3, not going knight d3. King a6 is a funny move. You play queen a8, I go king b5, like no harm. I don't know if it's necessary. Okay, let's let's try a bunch of the knight moves. All right, so this one was bad. Because, yeah, queen h7. Yeah, queen h7, and then you just take... The pawn, and there's actually nothing, yeah? This check is not dangerous. Block isn't very good. So the knight has to be very careful about how he moves. Now, what about the other one? This was the queen c3 line. Right. Queen this is the one, yeah, 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 where we are coming to c3. So actually, I mean, look, we managed to make a losing move with the knight on every turn. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're losing this. So how already. about, let's try this king a6 move. I'm not so crazy. Like, I'm trying to, like, get a feel for the position. Yeah. And what where the f-pawn plays a role. Because white wants to give up the f-pawn to win the h-pawn. But the queen needs to be on the right diagonal, because otherwise black will take the f-pawn and just check along f7, f1 or something. There's a, there definitely is a lot of play in the position. Nepo is playing the moves quickly. Like, he's mm -hmm. playing a lot of moves that we're looking at A4, like... But King A6 doesn't look like an easy move to find. And then, in this position, like, what happens if F5? Is this a draw because just up a full exchange, it's a draw? Is that a possibility that, like, F5, Queen takes F5, Rook takes H2? Is, hold, is holding. holding for black? Is that is that a thing? But isn't there anything we can do, maybe based on the fact that our king is a little safer than he used to be? Because, like, I mean, seriously, so your first question is this, yeah? How to evaluate that? Okay, mm. no, we can look at. Uh, I mean, I feel like okay, you know, white is going to be relieved. Yeah, white right? will be relieved. So that's, yeah. No, that's what I figured. I just wanted to double check. Yeah, like there's at least decent chances to win this yeah. position. Agreed. So let's go knight d3. Mm -hmm. Your king a6 move is good because we realize that the queen g7, queen mm -hmm. d3 mm -hmm. is a su super important resource. Mm -hmm. There you go. So very important that the queen cannot come here with a check. Wow. And the problem is like rook h2 in some positions you might want to do if you can win the knight. But black's not even going to take the rook. They're just going to go knight c1, knight b3. Like, like in some position, what I mean is like, the queen, uh, oh, this is what I mean. Queen A, queen A, A check. Mm -hmm. You want to take after. the mouse for yeah, a second? Yeah, I'll take the mouse for a yeah. second. So let's say queen A, A check. 
king b5, queen d5 check, king a6. And I want to play like rook takes h2, so that after queen takes, and then queen takes d3, white's, white's up a pawn, but the problem is black's not interested in the rook, they're just interested in this drawing setup. So even if white gives all the like, gets all these juicy checks, it's it's the um, perpetual. It's not really the h2 pawn, it's that the rook vacates c1. Because I just don't see how white improves the position past this besides going for that. Yeah, because like yeah, knight c1 is always coming, yeah? But here it's like an immediate draw. Like, we're not very far from this being forcing. Yeah, we're, but we're... still, you know, I'm feeling like, okay, they're certainly going to play this for a while. Right? So a4 is on the board. Because Fabi's down yeah. to 16 minutes, Nepo is playing it, you know, mm -hmm. with haste, and it's like, if we don't play, if we don't play f3 to f4 here, I don't know. I mean, there's still a few chances, I think, for we Nepo to, to mess moves. up. There are, right? no, there, there are. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to get a read if I, he understands the position. Right. I mean, because first of all, like, f4... It actually took us a little bit of time mm -hmm. to realize like the knight couldn't move anywhere and then king a6, this subtle king move. King a6 is a really good move. Yeah, yeah, it's actually the way to go. So I think this is this is the main difficulty for him to find that move. If he does, yeah, I would say pretty good chances that this game will end in a draw. Um but yeah, I feel I still I feel like there's more drama to come. I mean like yeah, we, maybe we, we the else... drama was over. There's more drama in this position no. than in what we what we had before. For sure, maybe the players, other players playing, see this and it influences them somehow. Yeah, I mean, well, let's take a look. I mean, I think actually with Hikaru's game, like the pieces are coming off the board. So there's really not much going on with Hikaru. Just to show you guys. It's about as undramatic as it can be. And it's funny that they're still playing this, right? Mm hmm Like, well, I don't know. I mean, who, you think Hikaru is still trying to do something? No, he's trying to draw. Gukesh has the e-pawn, so he's just trying to play bishop g5, rook d2 check, and hint that that e-pawn can, you know, create something. But as long as black's king is cut off. Mm -hmm. then... Right, you don't want to let the black king enter. But I don't see how that happens. So what was his last move? He was trying to come in with the king. Just making yeah. Hikaru sweat a bit and keeping options open. Mm. Bore your opponent to death. Uh, what is Prague? Just I'm uh, just quick, a quick glance there. Ooh. Okay, so Prague is winning. Yeah, I guess he's finally rounding up this pawn. Are you trying to win the pawn or go rook three, three check, check and ninety four? Maybe win that pawn. Yeah, you're like right. All the, it looks yeah. like everything's falling. This is a. Uh, how did this happen? This is like completely lost and there's no counterplay because you have a terrible bishop. Like I don't even want to take on d5 because that bishop is so bad on c6. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Like this is the pawn that black wants to win. All right. Well, look, we're going to take our final break. Yes, our final break. Yeah. yeah. And there's still there's still games to watch and there's still suspense left in this end game between uh, Fabiano and Nepo. Fabiano has definitely blown a big chance, but who knows, in this final time control, yeah. maybe we can see more drama. So we will be back to you guys in just a few minutes.
this one's you. The king sucks. He can only move one square. You've got to reassess your chess. Grandmaster Maurice Ashley presents Jeremy Silman's How to Reassess Your Chess. So go to chessable.com slash your chess and start reassessing your chess today.
the realm of kings and queens, only a select few dare to claim the ultimate crown. Witness the birth of legends, a victor in the open and woman section. All right, we're back and Nepo is still thinking he's been checked on G7. So, I'm just whoa, what, whoa. I thought he had a good handle on position because he kind of just made a blunder that... Yeah, that we had figured we, out was a blunder. But oh, he played man. it immediately. Well, well, not immediately, but like... Yeah, what well, he was thinking for a while. You know, um, he was thinking for a while and he did not go with this move king a6 which we eventually hit upon as the right move he went for knight b3 we knew all the knight moves were bad because it's too committal and now queen g7 is on the board this queen is coming to c3 and white has a chance to win this game after all in fact white's probably gonna win yes i mean amazing didn't we say eric before we went i know i was break? calling i was sure jan would like once he had his knight established that you know, he'd take his time, not make the mistake that hurt him right. earlier in the game. And it is hard to find these moves, but I definitely think King A6 is, is something you come to understand once you realize you don't want to give White this very important Queen G7, Queen C3 resource because you either find that move mm -hmm. as Black, you anticipate that move, or you're like, oh, I'm going to make a draw. Unless he thinks after looking at this, there's still a good variation for black right what, I don't, how I don't do you know think why. we win this position as white well you were suggesting giving a check and bring the rook in which i don't mind ah right so we actually looked at something similar yeah mm -hmm. right so you can keep going up with your king but just yeah after king a7 we can show then the rook line d1. Is, uh, it rook queen, d1. is it queen d7 check first and then uh, rook d1 you wanna, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Queen d7, because then you can't go king a6. Right, right, right. Okay. I could be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no king a6 because of queen a4. And when you go back, then rook e1 looks very convincing. Yeah. We're getting that checkmate. So, okay, this is probably all going to happen because, like, yeah, he has to go... Like, probably king a6. There's no real points going with the king to the back rank. But after queen c3, obviously you can't trade queens. You gotta go to g2. And of course, it's very important that there's no you know, knight c1 here because you can take it with a rook. Yeah. And then somehow this knight is not well positioned, right, in terms of protecting the king. You know, the repetition black's going for is on c1. And there's two squares, d3 and b3, that both have access. We didn't want to commit to either. They both had drawbacks, which is how we came to the king a6 conclusion. Do you think even queen c4 is good? I mean, it feels okay. I mean, it seems like it's not as good as queen d3, um, but it's kind of a similar idea. And well, what? Yeah, like queen d3 is pretty annoying because there's mm -hmm. also queen h7 check after. I know I was looking at queen d7. Right. There might even be okay. the other move because I mean, no it's going to be amazing if Fabi still wins this right well, we're headed like i know it keeps switching like you know like winning to draw to winning but i mean uh, but finally for so many of his fans i mean that yeah. is a huge result that gives them at least a hope you know that fabi can fight tomorrow in the tie break right like absolutely i mean this this is a momentum changer i uh it's actually yeah like if he, fabi ends up winning this game i mean Going through all the emotions of, of, of playing this tomorrow's tie breaks, I mean, uh, might feel a little uh, easier to play. When you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm even so lucky glad, to be here. I'm lucky to be, I'm so glad I got that second chance to win the game. Yeah. And that might actually like make, make it a bit easier. Okay, so queen c3 is on the board and queen g2 was Nepo's pretty much only move. And he played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were looking at all this and I'm just so surprised, like Nepo would anticipate these moves. So what? Is he misevaluating here that, like, that we've, I think I think he just, you know, I actually just think that maybe King Ace, I don't know, King A6 wasn't, like, the most natural first move to it, look it, at. It wasn't, but we kind of already played King A7, but King A6 just tucking it in. 
it's something I definitely think he, he should have found, um, but it's not an easy move. So queen d3. Okay, this is the winning move from Fabi. Um, Are there other winning moves? Because I'm not convinced by this queen g2. I know queen c4 looked a bit suspect, but what happens after queen c8? I think you had suggested that earlier when we looked at this the first right. time. Right. Queen c8. I'm just curious. Queen c8. You know your variation is a bit <laughs> dodgy when... Yeah. There's well, he actually, I think moves. he goes for c4, which is yeah. actually, I don't know if it's as good as the other ones. Yeah, we know the computer didn't yeah, like it. Yeah, the computer it. didn't like it, but what's the difference? Maybe it's it not a huge does. difference. It probably does. That's why I'm like a little surprised by Jan. What is Jan going for for this line, or has he like given up on the game? Like to, He played a line where white has like three or four good queen moves. They're, they all work, apparently, right? Mm. And so that's like... Maybe just king, he just simply didn't see king a6. It wasn't like that he thought he was going to make a draw here. He just didn't see it. But it does surprise me. Um, okay, so the point is you can't really go to a7 or a5. We don't want to lose that pawn with check. So you're going to go to b7 or like let's or yeah. pawn b5 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, let's go pawn b5, sure. And you were suggesting let's checkmate, and I like that idea. So let's yeah. go queen c8 check. All right. Get that done. And uh, rook d1 next. Yeah. It doesn't matter too much. Yeah, d1, e1, probably d1, sure. Ooh. Oh, I have blundered. I take that. I, I didn't. What did uh, we just blunder? Is it not checkmate? In a long is, day. I mean, it is checkmate. We blundered because it's not checkmate. Oh, no, no, it's not. Yeah, queen queen yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Oh, this is terrible. Oops, yeah, oops, I, oops. I, that's my bad. No, I. Okay, I then black defends. Yeah. So we need to find, but we are winning here. So we just need to do it better. Also, can we just win? Is there some way to win this pawn? It would be nice if we could. Can we just like do some sort of walk? I don't know. Oh, wait a second. So we know the king can't ever go to c6, right? Because of queen a8 check. Maybe we should do another check. That's what I mean. Yeah, 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 exactly. King a6? Yeah, and then, then you... Um, no, but then the queen c6 still, is still... Still idea, yeah? We're missing something here. We'll find it. Yeah, it's funny. Like, so the moment I move this rook... You make a queen We're... and we lose. So it needs to be something else than that. Hmm. So, okay, I have to mate you in a different way, though. You're right. You know, I need we to. We realize, yeah. like, the, the, the queens are doubling on right, that diagonal. We have right, to avoid, right, right. We have to avoid the, the whole queen diagonal. Queen six, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now I think I'll, I'll get you, like, the... here. I mean, okay, I don't know. I can go there. Well, be careful. The queen c6 stuff is coming. But not anymore. Yeah, it's true because the king is... Yeah, so, now the king's not yeah. nearby, so I can sort of afford to do that checkmate. Okay. Um, so we have king b7 on the board. So now the game is in Fabi's hands. And, okay, but we were looking at b5. We were looking at b5. Right, that so wasn't good. This one is relatively better. We're going to be comparing rook e1 and rook d1. Mm. Uh, knight c5 is something right. we anticipate. So which rook makes e1. Me think rook e1. Right. Now you can't queen because this is definitely checkmate. Yeah. It's coming. So you would have to bring back your knight. Yep. Try to stay alive. And. Yeah. After king c6, you're kind of here. safe, aren't you? After king c6, you're very safe. And so. then black is winning. That's yeah. funny. It would be funny if Nepo won the game. The knight is still good on c5. That's why I'm really surprised Jan put the knight on b3 because it really is like... It's not hard to understand that your king is safe on a6 or c6. Like, the construction of a knight on c5 and upon an a4 is generally very reliable. And so we're back at it. Like, now... Now, if we want to find something, I'm going to guess. Um, 
I'm not going to guess. Yeah, it's hard to guess, guess. actually. It's not, like, <laughs> obvious at all, is it? Where are the winners? Well, we're going to find it. Uh, sloppy. Bobby is down to, like, under six minutes. So we're about to see it a second time scramble. Nepo is at 14 minutes. Um, I think this game still is going to contain some drama. Because when you're down to six minutes, That's true. it's not completely obvious, right? Like, like how to win. This is less winning than the previous position yes. you messed up. So I, I can't, I can no longer uh, be so sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Naka's game. Okay. Mm. Well, in Naka's game, he has a rook versus a bishop and pawn. So actually, Naka is the one who's nominally better, which is funny that Gukash played all the way into that. But, okay. Maybe Naka will try to win. He cut his king, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. He'll be on the better side of a draw. Right. But it's very difficult to actually make progress with your king and rook without letting the, the, the things the e-pawn queen. So, and we, yeah, we have a move in uh, Fabi's game, rookie one. Mm hmm. Okay, and knight c5 by Nepo. So, this is so I guess we can't really get around it. We have to figure this position out. We were trying yeah, to take a little we break were from that. We were trying to avoid it. Yeah. I mean, there's moves to look at. Okay, like... that game is actually finishing. Maybe we can just take a look. Um, you know, they played until Bear Kings. They stayed yeah, at the board. Yeah, we got to appreciate time. that. Yeah, you know, I think Hikaru taking it very stoically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Like, you don't see too much frustration or anything on his face. It's all, we're almost like, well, he's had a lot of time to come to terms with this result. Yeah, yeah, he has it the last couple of hours. Yes, and, you know, he was defending a worse position, and I think he's just going to have to console himself, you know, um, by saying, well, it's not the end of the world. I've got a lot of other good things going on in my mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a good tournament. Um and it just didn't work out in the last game. And it was still a good result, like, objectively to be, you know, consistently competing For in the last two candidate cycles. Yeah. yeah. It's, um... Absolutely. Yeah, it was great to have him here. And I hope we see him in at least another yeah. candidate. Um, all right. But then we, now we got to get back to this position. This is our... Big intrigue of the day. You know, is there going to be a tie break tomorrow or not? Right now, Fabi does have chances all of a sudden. So the question, though, is this pawn wants to promote, and so we need to, like, get to this king before that happens. Yeah, Hikaru has at least one or two more cycles left. Yeah. I know sometimes he says, you know, he doesn't want to play past 40 very much. But right. He it'd be does very good that. for chess if he, if he qualified for a match and had a, an opportunity to, to play in a match. That's kind of what every mm. one of these players is looking for. Fabiano's had a chance. Mm, look at that He's move. Oh. That, so he doesn't try to mate him. He just tries to stop the pawn. Yep. Which so actually, king, the computer likes this move. Queen d5, shot, king b1. Yeah, king b1. Mm -hmm. This time he... Goes in the right place with his king. It's yeah, actually kind of learned, funny. He's learned. Yeah, because this one would like you know wind up losing the queen. So he goes king b one. Oh, that's a bit easier then. <laughs> when you realize like it's the only okay, yeah. Yeah, and all right. So the pawn is under control. So somehow this has been positive for Fabiano because his rook is more active than it was on h one. Yeah, I mean we can look at like the checks. Queen right. f five check. Yeah. King A1. Mm -hmm. Knight B3 check. Then you go King A2. Yeah. And... But we have, like, much better queen and rook, I guess, position than in the last. Oh, this is a huge, huge improvement. Pawn on H2 is hanging in some lines. The king mm -hmm. on B7 is worse than mm -hmm. A7. So everything's kind of improved here, which is probably why. Right, and we have a good chance to win this pawn, right? I mean, because black... Actually, you know, black also has to constantly watch out for, like, attacks with the rook as well. So queen f5 is on the board. You know, do you think if Fabi manages to win today, he's going to have, like, energy for the tie break tomorrow? No. You think he will? No. Okay. That's good to know. All right, so he's in check. He, we're expecting the move king a1. Yes. And it looks like Prague uh, defeated, Abbasov. defeated Abbasov. So a very right. good end to the tournament for him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that puts him at 50%. Abbasov definitely looking dejected, I would say. So 
from his body language. I mean, it has been a rough tournament for him, as it was predicted. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> he probably did worse than... Yeah, uh, he did worse than probably... His, well, rating, his would, rating would indicate, for, yeah. for sure. It's just one of those things that your rating doesn't always indicate. Like, you just play up every single round. What right. toll that has, you know... Yes. Uh, on your... <laughs> on your psyche. Your yeah. psyche, your confidence. Like, yeah. Okay, King A1 is on the board. And, well, Black is kind of running out of checks. We do have a threat of check and take the pawn. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel pretty good now about Fabi's chances to it's win. It's true. I mean, it's huge progress. As long as there's a, something on the first rank, there's no knight, knight B3, knight C1. Perpetual, as long as there's something covering C1. Mm -hmm. I just don't see a move for Black. Black has lost the setup. Yeah. Well, like, let's say we give a check. We try to put the king here and... Queen F7, are you looking for something like... Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe spicy. even like that. I didn't want then to do you this go queen, queen H1, H1. Yeah. yeah. Trade to queens and win, so you have to... Yeah, I was looking for this. Trying to find at least a discovery. But you know what's funny? Um, hmm. Do we even have a good discovery? I guess we kind of might, right? Like, so like, let's say I start with a check. And you go somewhere like here. My first thought was, can I take the pawn? It looks fairly dangerous. I would say probably, probably not. Because of the knight f3 fork? Yeah, like it just, I don't even know how You're I'm right, getting. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all of this, right? There's just there's just a lot here. I don't know. There's checks coming from everywhere. So I don't feel good about that. So so we need to move. Okay, and I think well we're seeing queen c two by Nepo. So he goes queen c two right here. Okay. Trying to hold on to the h2 pawn. It's just a much better setup for white for the rook to be on e1 and the queen mm -hmm. on f1. Queen can still defend h1, cover a6. Mm. But the rook, rook on e1 needs to be useful. You so, know what I'm curious about? Like, is it move like how bad is like f5? That's the no, f5 looks uh, amazing. Yeah, because you know, I don't really see the threat of that. I wasn't sure what the threat was or of that because I can go kind of. Rook e2 after knight Yeah, two. yeah. Um, no, not blunder. At least rook b1. At least yeah, rook, rook e2 is the blunder. That's uh -huh. uh, you shouldn't play. Yeah, because this way we kind of give black a little bit of a gift. It's, but, it loses the game. It's funny. Yeah, but rook b1, we guard, and, you know, we just kind of put our hopes in the f pawn, advancing up the board, and it looks like it's going to do that. So I am thinking, yep, and he goes for it, f5. You want to keep the king on b7, so you don't want to check black at all. Like, just push the f1 because mm. everything else is in a good square. This queen is covering everything so nicely. So, it's looking solid for white. And a very clear plan of okay, action. Okay, so let's, what's, what's a tough way for black to... How can black try to trick white here? I have no idea, all right? Because, like, this way... Because we can't even get our queen on the diagonal. You're probably going to get mated with, like, rook e7. Uh, I don't know, maybe not, maybe not rookie seven, but like queen. probably something great here. So queen g2 check? Yeah. And you don't have a good place to put your king, because I can take on h2 the check or go rookie, like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends where you go. Okay, we got rook b1 on the board, so he guarded the checkmate. Yeah, the king is so bad on b7. Right, and so the rook is just doing a good job, and I don't know, the pawn just continues to run up the board. So if he goes back to c5, right? Because, I mean, he can't just stay there with the knight. The knight here. F6. Do we just keep going? Yeah, because the queen covers uh, c4. So you basically can never even set up any threat. So let's just say knight wow. d2. Let's say knight d2 here. You're going to... I was going to give a check first and mm. then figure it out. Yeah. Most likely here I can go queen h1 check and rook c1. Ah, uh, clever. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how did Lei do in her 
game. I feel like she lost. Yeah, she lost to Humphy. Yeah, and it was looking pretty bad when we were there. Yeah. Just tough, uh, tough end of the tournament to her with two consecutive losses. Um, wow. This is this is the one game that all of our attention is yeah, on. Yeah. And I think we're primed. We're we're getting ready for that tiebreaker. I said it tomorrow. earlier, I was really wrong, but now we're back. Now we're back. Okay, do we have a bet going on, Eric, today? Well, Oh, can you be, remind me what that was? We had two. In the Muzi Truck game, they didn't... Yeah, one of them play. I lost. That one's over. So it's, it's probably going to be a, a tie, you know, 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I did think the Hikaru game was going to be a draw, but uh, this one, yeah. One yeah. decisive game. We said one decisive game out of these two, and it looks like we, we're going to get it. We're um, running out of tricks for Jan. 19 The first five. trick he had Fabi gifted by allowing the whole idea... Now I don't think uh, he's going to give a second one, a second idea. Yeah. Your coffee smells really good. Oh, thank you. I'm just yeah, trying to survive here. Yeah? It's tough when it, when it gets to 7, 28 p.m. Yeah. You just really need to go to sleep. I'm going to hibernate for a while. But not yet, because tomorrow there is like... Uh, oh, are you going to be back tomorrow, Eric? No, well, I don't know if I'll be back, but I'll be... I'll, I'll, I'll be around. I'll have to watch like what's happening, like... You guys make some bets with each other, and the one that loses has to go do commentary here. That that could be a good idea. Yeah. I mean, well, it's not that like whoever loses goes to the fan <laughs> zone. Like it's uh, fan zone is also pretty pretty hectic over there. So it depends. All right. So we got some moves. The F pawn is running up the board. It's actually what we were looking at. Queen on F one. Knight B three, yeah. King A two. That's the current position. And yeah. Yeah. This pawn, it kind of knows its job. Let's see what Jan is going to come up with. Another move of the knight. And this is where you came up with this nice queen h1. Um, queen h1 yeah. and then rook, rook c1, c1 saving the rook and avoiding the check. I think he did it. Very nice. The, the king is so bad on b7. Bobby's not missing his second chance in this game. No. That first one was so painful. I just don't even know like how I would live with myself. For these stakes. Yeah, it's know? impressive that like once he got that chance, like uh, Jan blundered again. By the way, out of curiosity, let's say King A7, mm -hmm. uh, Rook C1, Queen mm -hmm. B3 check, mm -hmm. King A1, Queen F7. We need to find one more accurate move. Mm. I need one more accurate move. <laughs> yeah. Because you do have that. Knight B3 check. Yeah. Uh-huh. One last. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. It's a tricky one. Okay. Do you okay. Think, I see there's. Do you think it's like rook c8 or something? I was, yeah. That actually has, I think, a decent chance of being it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Let's see what Jan played. He actually played, okay, he played king a7. So what we're looking at is rook c1, queen check, king a1, queen back, and then. Rook I think this is it. This is important. Ooh. I blundered. How'd Look you blunder? That. How'd you blunder? How, you get... How did uh, it check, happen? King B1. What did I do wrong? Oh, wait, 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 Eric. Uh, that doesn't work, right? No, I can't. No. There's, rook H, there's rook H8 in the yeah. end. Um, so check. This is so annoying. Here. I thought after Queen G6, King A2, I was safe. Yeah. Oh, you are safe there, but there's something else going on. Oh, it's just it's just this. Okay, so let's see what they're doing. Let's see what they're doing. Oh, we have bad. got uh, rook c1, king, queen b3, king a1 on the board. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> no more suggestions for me. I'm finding ways to blunder. So queen f7. So actually, we did see that rook c8 is not winning. So white is winning here, but we don't know exactly It's still not how. like you still... So that's why I was like, there's one last annoying move. Mm, I agree, right? Because knight b3 is definitely annoying. How easy is it going to be to find it? Oh, I have an idea. Oh, you're going to like this, Eric. Mm -hmm. I promise you're going to like this. Wait. Okay. I really want to go. Hold on. I really want to go rook c2. I, I thought you might suggest that. Okay. There go. It's convincing enough. Because f6 isn't hanging, so you're probably like, yeah, like knight b3, king b1. Yes, I really want the rook to cover this square, because you're always giving me checks from there, attack the pawn. 
And also what's important is that when you're like, well, I know this is not a key line, but my point is like, in the worst case, I'm always guarding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. okay, he went queen e6 instead of queen f7. So it's kind of similar. Mm. Do we still try this move? Is it the same? Should we throw in a check first? We can throw in a check. I think that's what he wants. He wants this check? Yes, yeah, see, there wow. we go. That, 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 that's so that's very a tricky. There is, a, there is a difference. No, wait. no, checking is always bad. So wait, so this is bad? This is bad now with queen f7, it was winning, but now it's not? Well, that's really tricky. Okay, that's really... This is a very tricky move by Jan. He's... Yeah. Yeah. That's... Okay, so we're still winning, but... Fascinating. Okay, I, I think we just have so to figure rook out... D1? Rook D1? Rook Where do you D1? go? Out of curiosity. Okay, Rook D1 is winning, but Rook C2 is not, so... Yeah. But do we even understand why? Well, I know I'm trying to, like, keep everything on the back rank. So here... Um... I'm guessing the move is like queen, I don't know, like queen e3. My goal is to go queen g1, mm. but that might be wrong. Just like, yeah. Oh, I, I blundered. What did I blunder? Checkmate. I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, um, where is the checkmate? It's... Check. We're not going to find the fastest, but we'll be able to find something. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be really proud if I can see that checkmate in two. Um, okay, I think I see it. I see it. I see it. Yes. <clears throat> Yay, we rounded up that king. Okay. Um, well, no, queen e6 is tricky, though. Yeah, there's, some, there's something if the rook goes to c2 that the back rank. It has to be a back right, rank thing. Right, right, So rook c2, we haven't really found why this is bad mm. yet. Um, you know, the thing that I'm concerned is like, if we can't find it, Fabi might also be like, oh, this is a reasonable move, right? So that's why I want to try to see if it's really clearly bad. How, how easy is it to see it? So basically, there are threats of this always. It's actually amazing that rook c7 wasn't like, it wasn't mating because I guess the queen still controls those squares, yeah? Yeah. Knight b3 check, king b1, and then there's definitely some, like, move, but beyond me. Wow. But, I mean, that, that just means that, you know, he has, like, less than four minutes to figure out, like, where to move this rook. So we found, yeah, rook c7. And rook c7, rook c7 is, rook c2. like, is apparently not even good. He has to spend time on this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and be like, oh, I'm not winning this one because somehow this queen is covering d5. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is commit all your pieces there, and then you... Then you can even like lose this if there's no mate, which there isn't. I'm still not sure how this game is going to end. No, it's true. I've, like this. Fabi needs one more very accurate move. Yeah, like let's, let's try to understand why the computer loved Rook D1 because it's not like we really got it that clearly, did we? Well, well, if we want to keep the pieces on the first yeah. rank. Right. Yeah. So this is kind of why you're going to hide your king. Yeah. And you're trying to like keep the first rank guarded, okay? But I'm trying to figure out why rook c2 specifically, right. like. Well, he went rook c7. Oh man, rook c7. Apparently. Oh my goodness. You know, it was just too tempting to give that check, and now there is no win. Okay, but who knows? Maybe it's going to be hard for Nepo here too. Oh my, the pawn is still on h2, Irene. This right. is the. This is like giving so much counterplay. So check right. Is he getting out of this perpetual? I don't understand too much about what I'm seeing. Like, what is going on with this king? What is exactly the plan? King b1. Yeah. And then which check are you giving? Well, ah, uh, that's a good question. Well, I don't know. I was planning on this one. I guess you're going to c2. Yeah, I'm going to c2. You're going c2. to c2. Okay. I mean, I can see why he decided to go for this. Right. And Nepo needs to stop and think a little bit. He actually has time, and he should... So king c2. Right. He, went, he, he went queen f5. Queen f5, losing move. Well, at least that's... That's... I don't even understand this move. Exactly. What, what, what happens on king a2? Like, that looks like a terrible move. 
Why would you do? Why would you do that? Check no, with the queen, queen and not find any. Actually, back. so, but it's almost like he's giving Pavi a present. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't be, understand it. Because yeah, there's, there's no follow up. Because there's no follow up. There's no check after King A two at all. Why and would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that instantly? Like really? Like don't you want to just sit and think a little bit? Like so, out of curiosity, knight d two check, king c two. What is the move? This is hard yeah. to see. So I understand why he didn't play it. Right. I get it too. Absolutely. But hold on. Okay, let's just keep following the game. Maybe we can okay, come back. Yeah, exactly. Knight c five is on the board. Yeah. Yeah, we'll follow it. And now white is completely winning, and oh, it's actually really easy, isn't it? I mean, isn't mm -hmm. there like a check and a promotion? Mm-hmm. And then if queen e6 check? Uh, then that's uh, <laughs> not, not so easy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for asking. Um, okay, let's, let's think about how we're going to do this. We, so you're threatening me with a check. Hmm. What's the accurate way to do this? Kind of tricky. Well, no, I like the idea of giving the check. I like coming out. I feel like, hey, there's, I have another check. That might be the good one. And then, and then I still can't promote. Hmm. This is one of those games where if you use an engine, you kind of don't appreciate the struggle, even yeah. if it's two of the absolute best players in the world. And, like, I um, cannot promote to a queen here. You know, because I'm still missing a check. So. Yeah, there's so much for them to calculate that that is understandably like yes. induces mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right. So right now we have knight c5 on the board, and so we're thinking queen a8. There could be some other moves. Right. What about queen h2? Queen h2. You give me a check and just perpetual. Okay. So I can't take the pawn. Queen a8, that's why it sort of made intuitive sense to me. Queen a8, king b5, like you can mm. even give up material in some lines. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, queen a8, king b5. Mm -hmm. Bobby's under a lot of time trouble. I mean, a minute 40 is not a ton for this position where there's like so much pressure on him. Yeah, Nepo is very tricky. To cover the two checks, right? Yep. So, rookie seven. Mm-hmm. Or key seven. Oops. Mm -hmm. okay. I've made a mistake. I mean, is it's, it's not that simple. No, is it's it? not. So it's, it's like not. queen c6. I mean, I'm covering the two squares, but I can't really queen. Yeah, my my average move suggestion is like running into all these traps set by Nepo. Yeah, no, Nepo is, uh, is tricky. Very, very, very I tricky. I mean, yeah, like we thought he was just completely losing. Okay, Fabi goes for queen a8 check. Okay, Nepo has only one move, so it's easy. They're actually the last game in the whole tournament getting played right now. Which is kind of fitting. I yeah, think. yeah, no, this but is... All of our attention is to this one remaining game, which is so crucial for whether we will have a day of chess tomorrow or not. King b5, queen c6. Does Caruana see a win here? So we're going to see where the king goes. I don't really see him going to c4. No, no. the time situation is, is a huge factor here. Yeah, well, you definitely don't want the king up the board, so he's going back, right? So you need to keep this diagonal open for the black queen. I'm very frustrated that I just, for some reason, don't see the right move for white here. Yeah, it's very tricky. I mean, the H pawn is still on the board. You constantly the have to watch. H pawn has been bothering me the night on C5. This is so crazy. I mean, you know, like if things go really, really badly, I suppose white can lose a position like this, like yeah. blunder something and lose. But right now, it says it's winning. And is this a position to go rookie seven? Yes. Rookie seven right yes. here. It's going to work. It's going to work? Yes. Sure about that? Yes. Because you're holding everything. Yes. Okay, but he didn't do it. I think he just repeated oh. a couple times. Okay, they repeated. Okay, queen a8, king b5. Yeah, he needs to gain some time. That makes sense. Very practical. And so you're saying... Uh-oh. How many times can they repeat? Right. This is insane. So, rookie seven. is. The... Oh, wait, you've tried that one before, right? 
And then for some reason, it's still a draw. Why is I, it a draw? I'm failed. Like, I, I'm just, uh, I'm struggling. Oh, wow. So the only winning move here is this queen eight move, but it's going to be a threefold repetition. So somehow the winning method was this, which is like absolutely crazy. I mean, yeah, you can find it maybe, but hold on. So there's a problem here that they, Different. how many re repetitions have they had? So the knight arrived here. So this is one. And this is two. Mm -hmm. And now if he goes, this is a threefold repetition, it's a draw, and, and it's the, the only, only winning move? method. Oh. So he can't, He what he should have done was gone for th like this, this, and this. And then this, oh man. I mean, I can see the virtue of the queen here now when, now when it's in front of me. And b5, and then... So king a5 gets mated, yeah, yeah. to rook a7, so, okay. Wow, this is insane. Yeah, this is... Uh... So what do we have on the board? So King, he went rookie seven. He actually went with your rookie seven move. But now somehow Nepo has a draw, but is he going to find it? I really, I mean, he has time. He actually has a lot of time to think about this, which is good for him. Time on the clock and there's no threat from white, right? Kind of. I mean, the threat there is, is a queen threat. and then F8. Yes, check and but queen. I... Yeah, there is a threat. Okay. It's a big one. So what can, what can possibly be holding the balance here? I feel very useless so far. This has been a very tough one. It's okay to just witness these yes. events, Eric, right? That's, what, that's right. We're just witnesses to what's going on. Um, well, let's find the trickiest move for black. So we can't move our knight. We can't move our king. So we can move the h pawn or the queen. That's just... Is he really about to make a move like so quickly? Like he really has worked this out? We have to make a move with the queen, right? Unless we're just giving up a pawn. Like we either queen the h pawn mm -hmm. or we move our queen somewhere. At least I can figure that out. Okay, Process he did move of elimination. to f1. Okay, it's a good move. Wants to queen, oh, wants queen to perpetual. Four. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh man, this is dramatic. Okay, so queen a8, king b5, queen, queen c4. Oh, that's, yeah. That's going to be a draw, yeah? Yeah. That's where you the knight... You tried, like, this one? Yeah. And then you make a queen. Yeah. But unfortunately... Queen c4. Oh, wow, black even wins? Well, yeah, here because oh, h1. Oh, there's a queen. But if you keep the yeah. queen on a8, it's the same thing. Right. But, so, so queen now. So queen a8, king b5 is on the board. If you and queen, queen e8, well, he did play queen e8. So maybe he's going to gain some time, right? He's doing this to gain time. King a6, he's probably just going to go back. Not a whole lot that white can do. No, this queen c4, king b1, queen d3, you can't, you can't go king c1, knight b3 is mate. Yeah, and like rook e1 doesn't really feel so, very so safe. So let's, let's say queen a8, you know, yeah. Well, can you try rookie one? Yeah. yeah, we can try it. You know, it's a we one can of, try it. No, yeah. we can definitely try it. And how does black just make a draw? It's probably just queen c4. Oh, maybe not. Was there a cleaner way queen. to do it? Queen on it. H1 queen. H1 queen. Does and you that think work? You got it. Yeah. Take, so like I take take take, take queen. queen. Queen c4 Queen check. Queen c4, like somehow, yeah, this is a draw because like no one's even around, yeah? Yeah. You can't go here, it's checkmate yeah. with knight b3, yeah. That's always been... Wow. When we lose wow. the first Nepo's rank. actually just got up, got, got up off the board, so he's so confident that this is a draw now, which is... And there's yeah. no other games to look at. Yeah, there's nothing else, so that just really be betrays a lot of confidence that he thinks he's got this holding now. What a game. So many twists and turns in this one. But you but I mean Fabiano will have a lot of reason to be unhappy with yeah. himself.
Did it not easy to convert. Um, I was in like the computer thing, so right. you know, it's easy. But I've been no. There's there were so many moments where uh, Nepo set a bit of a trap. Where yeah, I think the Nepo wrong check. was very tricky in a way. Queenie six, right? Yeah, Queenie six was a really great move, and I I don't think he can fault himself for the conversion after move forty so much. It's actually the things that were happening uh, up to that moment. Yeah, this has shown even more so that the allowing the knight versus rook in the pawn and h2 like was just a very bad practical decision um because even even good versions of this have been extremely tricky so um, this is now on the board so how many times have we had this position yeah when there's nothing on the first rank there's a draw yeah so That's he went 28 i mean is it just a draw or is he going to try rookie one The problem for white is that it's very hard to hold that square, and now like this pawn is out of control. The H pawn is 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 incredible. Refuses. Look, to Look, he looks unhappy. I mean, it's kind yeah. of like even though now he's defended himself, he's done some brilliant defense. Like even though he's going to get the draw, he still realizes like it's not good enough. Gukesh has taken this tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's setting in probably for both players. But rookie four. Oh, Fabiano, he's not giving up. Although, okay, he's trying to hold the c4 square, I see. Wait, do you understand this move? Mm-hmm. You do. So what happens? Well, any move that avoids the draws, kind of uh, like immediate draws. You're basically move. saying yeah. check, and you're doing the perpetual. So oh. you're, you're letting me queen, basically. Wait, there's a checkmate no. here. Yeah, yeah, this is queen a8, rook b4. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. that's the one so I didn't Nepo, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so there's a trick there. There's a trick there. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything that's not forcing, Fabi has to go for. Okay, so he's he's doing his best here. Okay. Give now. What if I just? You can take, take on e4. Yeah. yeah. So the queen takes a4. Queen takes e4 yeah. check. But it doesn't make too much of a difference. But then we yeah? might. Well, it'll be two versus one, potentially. Mm. Queen and two pawns versus queen and one. Anything else that he can do so after rook e4? Then we'll be here for a long time. Yeah, well, <laughs> queen a8, rook b4 is like a nice uh, checkmate. If that were to happen, that'd be insane. Yeah, like Nepo, just like now. Because, you know, I, I thought it was just the, perpetual. I, can, you know? I can see how somebody would blunder that. Yeah, rook b4 is a little unusual. It is. The setup, the yeah. knight on c5 is like smothering the king. Right. So very tricky. So queen eight is a threat. No more queen c4 check. This, black doesn't have a whole lot of ways to make a draw here, does he? Well, mate's being threatened, so I'm no. The answer has to be no. Out of curiosity, mm -hmm. um, queen takes f7. Yeah, I was looking at that. But I think there's no reason for us to go for yeah. that because we're basically still and then yeah down in exchange and then rookie right? seven yeah and there's no checks right so yeah there's no reason for Something us to like go this. there so probably probably nepo i mean at least nine takes e4 is not the hardest move to see yeah i can take the rook so he know he doesn't get mated he loses the pawn king b7 he mm -hmm. loses the knight um let's say king a7 mm -hmm. well first of all how do you want to win this pawn no, you have you're to not like, gonna win it. You're just gonna. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he took the rook. Okay, so we're gonna see all of this play out. Okay, he took here, and he took on e4. So king a7, we're expecting. King e7. But there's ways to blunder, right? Queen e7 check. So mm -hmm. king a7, queen mm -hmm. e7. Mm -hmm. And then king, king a6. a6. And then like making F8, a queen. queen. Yeah. Loses. Yeah, that loses for... Queen c4. Oh. That would be wonderful. Like two queens on the board. Imagine the drama there. If Nepo yeah. were to like win it like that, it'd be like insane. So king... Uh, 
Queen A4 was played by Fabi, mm. actually, from this position. He played Queen A4. So what's he trying to do? Like gain some time? Mm -hmm. or? Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be Queen in best mm -hmm. case scenario you're playing. Queen uh, D7. Mm -hmm. Queen in 2 versus Queen in 1. But on the same side, there's not much hope there. I guess King A6 is kind of obvious. At least after King A6, we go Queen C8 check and then mm -hmm. promote. So mm -hmm. we don't have to. So it is going to be Queen and yeah. two. Yeah. I get it. So he's going for the C8 square. Then there's no perpetual. There's a queen trade. I can say he has a nominal advantage. Mm -hmm. People have probably lost worse positions before. Yeah, they have. Yeah. King A7. Okay, so it's time for him to promote. So he promotes, queen takes, queen takes, queen, queen, and this is not really too difficult of a draw, yeah? No, no, it shouldn't be. But they will play for a they while. They will play for a long <laughs> yeah. time, that's what I was going to say, I mean. We're not, we're not leaving early, yeah? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, all of this is happening. For me. Uh, yeah, queen f7 check, you got to keep your queen on the king diagonal. And... Yeah. Slowly and he played a4. Points. He played a4. As soon as they got into this end game, here we are. So I don't think we need to like put in a lot of moves of analysis for now. No. It seems uh, like there's not deep strategic plans or tactics to calculate here. For now, we can just watch how they definitely play this end game. So queen d5, king a3. Black's queen will just centralize and be tethered to the b6 pawn, defend it in some way, without allowing white's king to get in. Mm -hmm. And you can't really use your two pawns without exposing your king. Right. You just have to make sure like yeah. there's no queen trade. Yeah. And there probably are some queen trades that are okay, just right. because of the pawns, but yeah, for the most part, no. Should we put the queen on c3? It sort of feels I was going to ask, yeah, d4 or c3 depends. Uh... Yeah, maybe we just put it here. It's kind of nice and active. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to secure. I don't know game. how somebody can win. I, like, I, I don't think this end game is like. Yeah. Oh, well, what a drama. Yeah. So many turnarounds in this game. Like, it was like, uh, wait, how was it? It was like, Nepo wasn't doing well. Then Nepo was losing. Then he was completely losing. Yeah. Then it starts to go a little wrong. Yeah. Some chances. Yeah, you're drawing. Yeah, very serious. Still drawing. losing. Draw after move 41. Mistake. Bobby winning. Big, yep. Bobby winning, winning, winning. Oops. And then again, it's a draw. Yeah, we didn't get like five or five moves in a row where the evaluation stayed the same. Like yeah. within every five moves, like there was a move that went from draw to win, vice versa. But knights are tricky. This is all because of that knight on c5. That's the problem piece. Okay, so queen d4, check. And, well, black is threatening just to do nothing and sit, yeah? Yeah. You don't even need to, like, play queen a1, check. No, and, yeah, even sometimes you trade queens, it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, I mean, because maybe this king kind of wants to come up. Should we, should we examine the interesting pawn end game that could come out as a result of uh, queen c4? <laughs> If you'd like to. <laughs> yeah. I was just I working. guess that's probably a probably not a good idea, but I was kinda of curious. Okay, what did what did he do? He went to E1 to guard everything. Okay. So we are on move eighty six. Yeah, so Fabi I mean Fabi should probably they should play this for like fifty moves, I guess. Yeah, this could be another fifty moves. Although, no, I mean, the white will have to come up with something pretty soon of, like, pushing the pawn. But, yeah, yeah, it yeah, could. Well, here's a way the game could finish. Yeah. Yes. Could be a little bit faster. That would be an all-timer. It would be in, in lots of literature. Yeah. Queen b4. Like, offering a queen trade is a good idea when you're up material. Um, you know what I was interested in, like, 
we can since this is not too interesting like i was kind of curious about yeah. so um, queen has, yeah like i just thought it was a draw so we can take a look though like let's say queen, queen f7 seven, king a6 uh king was oh. going here like like this position this one is oh that's what i was gonna look at yeah king yeah so just take yeah, yeah take take and you're basically just yeah, you're straight on time. forward straight you're on forward. time so like i can't even get use one of my pawns right so even this pawn end game that normally black really shouldn't be entering, but it's still completely drawn because of like the nature of these pawns. Yeah, the yeah the pawns are too pushed up. Yeah, it's yeah. like a simple. It's like yeah, not even a. You can't even trick your opponent, unfortunately. Okay. So you can trade queens. You're not winning. There's. There's not much to try here. Yeah. So is this the first candidates that you got to witness in person? Yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 You know what? I think for me as well, actually. It's the first one uh, in North America. Yeah. In a long time. And yeah, yeah. I've covered it before, but haven't seen it live. So is streaming, is that your full-time thing, or do you do anything else? Mainly just streaming, yeah. Not always streaming chess. I'm definitely, but, uh, you know, sometimes... Oh, what else do you stream? Reality TV. I'm just like, I'll just watch watch reality, bad reality TV. Oh, wow. Um, or uh, play some computer games. Oh, we uh, also got B4, finally mm -hmm. a pawn move. So Fabi, trying to make some progress. He could have waited a long time before. But he could have gone King A2 and made like yeah. 20 queen moves. So I don't think, like, you really want to play this because you're, trying to qualify for the tie break, but I don't even know how to attempt to win this. Yeah, well, he's actually built up a lot of time now because yeah. he used to have like a minute. Now he has seven, right? Because it's like easy moves to play. So let's say he builds his time up to 20 minutes. I don't think he's going to spend 20 minutes and looking at the position and trying to look at everything and see what can I do. Like, I, I do think that it's kind of set in and it'll only go like 10, 10 or 12 more moves. Yeah, he's kind of like looking at Fabi, and he's like, why are we both in this situation? Hmm. It's not like Rook, Rook and Bishop versus Rook. This is one where you should never lose. Yeah, also, maybe we should, should we allow the check over here? He, he didn't. He played King B8. Okay. Yeah, you could, very... though. You, could, you could allow the check, and it still should be okay, but yeah, do some tricks. Yeah. It's definitely, you know, you play this long, grueling tournament for 14 rounds. You kind of give it your all. You, yeah. have, you have a shot to win it until the end. And then you're in these final moments. And I think it's just sad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's sad that it's over. You know, you yeah, you come to realize it's over. Yeah. yeah. This is probably a big adrenaline dump. For all, you know. all that work, you know, you brought your seconds, you know, and then for it to come down to this, like, queen end game where there's no more... No more real suspense. Right. Yeah, it takes a while for that to settle in and to kind of come to grip with that. No, these guys have been fighting super hard for the better half of a month. And... Uh, I mean, it's been a super thrilling candidate. It has been. It really has been. I mean, so first of all, let's talk about... I guess, I guess we kind of know but from the position that, I mean, Gukesh is going to be the winner, most mm -hmm. likely. And it's just an amazing result that no one predicted for him. I think, you know, Magnus said that, you know, it's more likely that he was going to get a minus two score than like a, no, he said more likely he was going to get a minus five than like a plus three. I'm pretty sure that was how he phrased wow. it. Wow, okay, yeah. Right. So he, he basically, he said he wasn't sure which category to put him in, whether do badly or do well. He's, he was kind of between categories, like a lot of other players were in yeah. his opinion. He's a bit more, he had some unstable results mm -hmm. coming into it. I think a really big storyline, if this holds, is he has a legitimate shot at becoming the youngest world champion, champion ever, ever by a large margin. Yeah, just amazing, right? Like following in Vichy's footsteps. Yeah. And he has... He was born in 2006. I mean, it makes me feel you know, like this is, yeah, this is... Crazy, right? Changing of the guard yeah. if this holds. I mean, to have such a young person, you know, challenging for the world championship. I mean, yeah, it is a changing of the guard, this whole new generation that's coming. I don't, I'm trying to even think of like when people challenge for the championship when they were 17, even as a challenger. Right, as a challenger. I mean, well, we had Panamaria winning the 
one of the world's rapid knockout championships like when nine, he was 18. 18, yeah. Right, so yeah. that was very young. That, yeah. But still, like, this, this format is different. Yeah. This requires, like, a candidate's yeah. tournament, it's a, a whole qualifying process. Um, so him, yeah, he kind of made it here It's fairly at last minute, I think, from winning, like, the FIDE circuit. Um, yeah, and, yes. yeah, his result, his win here was not predicted by anybody. No, no, no. I, I've been impressed by his chess and I thought he would do well, but not do well is different than like winning the tournament outright. Yeah. Um... You know, one of the things that he managed to do was he was very solid and stable and he picked up his points where he really needed them. Like he picked it up against um, the tail ender Abasa. He got two points mm -hmm. out of that. That's a big one, right? I yep. mean, that's really what separates, in a way, For sure. uh, him from the other players. He got two points there. Okay, he lost that tragic game against Perugia, probably maybe in some way yeah, the game of the tournament. recovering from that. Yes. Where he and was pushing. beating Vidit with the black pieces, like the next uh, time uh, he got back to the board. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, you know, Anish mentioned that. He said something, his bounce back ability. You know, because of that game, that was really, I think, uh, yeah, one of the best moments in the tournament was his ability to bounce back from that game. Yeah, it's after Ferrugia kind of swindled him a bit or, or came back there. I thought that took him out of contention, but super mature, really like well thought out. Like his openings, I like the positions he was getting. Mm -hmm. Um just demonstrating really good understanding and yeah, it didn't seem under pressure, didn't seem at all uh, phased. Yeah, I think his own personal qualities were definitely a big strength. Like there's always this feeling like he's not too emotional, although he definitely showed emotion when he lost that game to Ferruja. Mm -hmm. He yeah. definitely showed that it affected him. But you know, he, he came to that press conference. He actually appeared at the press conference right after the game, and he was, you know, he sat through it, you know, um, very stoically. So um, that was also an impressive moment, yeah. actually, that he did not skip that press conference. No, I think that's a very good quality to have. Win or lose, just, you know, you're ready to answer. Come back the next day. Fanzoni was answering questions, always super professional there. Um, he says he does a lot of sports. You know his favorite sport? Cricket? Tennis. Oh, tennis. Okay, oh, that's yeah. a very common one for, for chess players. Mm -hmm. I think Fabi also likes tennis a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how many? They're at move 102. So they've been at it for a while. Oh, he's waiting for Nepo to come back to the Yeah, board. like this is close to play, like playing rook versus rook. It's, it's really, there's like nothing you can actually do. Yeah, because you can't, you can't play a5, yeah. Yeah, you can't win the black B pawn, and if you trade more pawns, it's like the black king is in the perfect position. Yeah. So, you know, Gukesh, he was actually my teammate in the um, Global Chess League. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I played that event in Dubai um, in June, and that was like my first kind of, I think, interaction with him. I remember solving um, puzzles that I was doing on, I think, Chess Tempo. I was doing some. I was doing some puzzle. I couldn't solve it. Yeah. He was like sitting next to me in the car. I like. I asked him for help. Yeah. I asked him to give me actually give me a clue at some point. Yeah. You know, which he did. So that eventually I solved it. You know, he was he was very uh, very, very nice friendly. that yeah, way. Yeah, he's... yeah. So I think yeah, it is a beautiful storyline. The youngest player in the tournament, winning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and just like. The, the chess boom in India over the last 10, 15 years has been like incredible to, to witness. This is like the culmination of, you know, Vichy being world champion and kids being born, like people being mm -hmm. born, like while he was world champion, like um, never seen something like that before. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because like when you look at these two players, it's like these two, are two, titans. Two, yeah, yeah. two people who are so unhappy now. Yeah. Right. Like even though Nepo is the one down upon, he's going to make the draw, but it's not like he's very satisfied 
without results. Yeah, just uh, the chest cycle is pretty pretty rough. I mean, it's traditional. It's once every two years. So um, yeah. it's not like some other sports where, okay, you got to crack once a year. Maybe this is two years and there's no guarantee you qualify. Chess is only getting harder. Everyone's admit, like, it's only getting harder and there's more and more contenders out of this new crop. So yeah. But you know, the cool thing is that now we're going to have a match between like China and India Yes. for the world championship. It's kind of, I think, symbolic because these two countries have come up in the chess world so much over the last, well, like 30, 40 years, right? Yeah. 30 two, years. Two of the biggest economies, yeah. chess powers. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it will Lots be. Lots of young talents from both countries. Yes. And now, and you know, China was the first, to, well, not the first, but like, uh, other than Anand, <laughs> let's say, so, so we got Ding as the world champion more recently in this new, I, I guess what I mean is in this new generation, China was the first to the crown, but like now India is going to get a chance to to challenge for it. Yeah, they've, absolutely. And Maybe a check here. And I envision a, like a very bright future, not just for Gukesh who won the tournament, but Prague, um, Vidit, mm -hmm. like, all of the Indian players, Vaishali, like yeah, um, uh, India performed actually really well. Really, and really well. And you consider the age, and it's just like the future is so bright for for Indian chess right now. And I wonder where this World Championship match is going to be. I mean, is it going to be in probably, India? Probably somewhere in Asia, but like yeah, easy to somewhere access for both countries. Yeah, right. It's hard to play, I think, in your own country, right? You get yeah. A lot of attention. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. I think probably uh, both the players might might not mind a neutral venue that's close by at least. Have you have Nepal you attended like a world championship match in person? No, no. Not even when maybe it was they in can New host York. it in Toronto. Maybe yeah, yeah, New York I missed out on, but maybe Toronto they can host again. That would be good. So were you excited have about memories. having this event here in Toronto? Yeah. No, I definitely think it's super important to get. Uh, Tournaments in Canada, we never have them uh, like super events. It's been a long time and uh, chess has gr blown up a lot here, but mainly online, mainly in the casual scene. And having an official event like this with the top players is, is, is really good for the, for the local community and, and building that, uh, mm. that membership. Yep, Queen D4 threatens to check on C3. Um, King B3, I don't really know how that stops the check here. I guess he's planning to run somewhere this way. Yep. I suppose we can find one way to lose, maybe. Black. Queen E, well, Queen E3 check, King C2. Like, maybe I'm thinking this one? Yeah. And then maybe go for like a queen trade. And mm. then, and then like lose the king and pawn end game. Yeah. There yeah, you go, because the pawn is on the sixth, so we lose. But yeah, you have to try, yeah, you'd have really to, try hard to lose this position for black. Yeah, there should just be perpetual now. You keep checking the king. You know, you know what's interesting? I'll tell you another yeah. interesting bit of information. That like somewhere was it at the halfway point? I think it might have been. Um, I watched maybe a little bit more past that. Hans Hans Neiman was on one of the streams, mm -hmm. and he was saying. And his prediction was that Gukesh was going to win. So mm. we were quite far. Gukesh was not the sole leader then or anything. Yeah. This is like many rounds ago. Yeah. And already at that point, he was saying it's going to be Gukesh. Okay. Yeah. That's and he was very right. confident. And that, that was what, 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 what was interesting about that was not just that he predicted it, because, you know, yeah. many people could have been like, well, yeah, he's just got a chance. He's yeah. obviously up there. But he was like, I think it's going to be Gukesh. I think he's the main favorite. And Anish was like, well, you know, um, you know, I don't think he's a, he's, he's like favorite, but not a big favorite over Nepo because they were like, I think tied at that point. But yeah, Hans, uh, felt like that was his choice and he had some reasons for that, you know, just Gukesh's, um, fighting qualities and his, uh, focus. Yeah. And I think the younger generation has a better grasp of that, like, um, of some of these up and coming players or some of their strengths and spending time around, like we're used to a lot of the household names. But there's always going to be a little bit, in terms of colleagues, like Anish is in the 90s generation and more familiar with the strengths and weaknesses of, of, of you know, Carwana, Jan, all the players here in the 90s. Yeah. And in terms of newer players, unless they've worked with them closely, you know, it's always, there's probably going to be some, some, they're constantly upgrading, you know, at a faster uh, rate than, uh, 
kind of what uh, the general public is expecting. What do you think of like Bruges playing this tournament? Uh, terrible. Just I like, think what, what, I, what I say that from wrong? his own like. If I'm in his shoes, if I'm in Bruges' shoes, and it's his second candidate, his first one didn't go well. He's a top player. He's trying to make that next jump. Yeah. In his chess, if I'm, uh, he didn't, and he had some bad games. Mm. He had some examples of bad resistance, um, mm. just not like the best fighting quality. Like, yeah, I would be very disappointed if I was Ferruja. I mean, it is your second cycle, and um, but he has some more tournaments coming up. It seemed like he was excited to play some chess. Um, he's got a long future ahead, but yeah. definitely objectively it has to be graded at minus four. Has to be considered a really bad, bad result, result for him. Yeah, yeah. He, definitely, people were expecting more. From him in this tournament, but look at that. We have Official a winner. Handshake, yes. Yeah. This game ended after 109 moves. They definitely did their best. They did. Wasn't a perfect game, but I think it embodied, represented the fighting that we've had throughout the tournament. That there yeah. are going to be mistakes, but the players are taking risks. They're playing ambitiously. And yeah. two players here on camera, they both played in the World Championship matches. Um, before and uh, neither one of them will be part of this next match. Well, let's congratulate so the big winner, congratulations Gukesh. To... He won, I believe, with a plus four score. I don't know if I calculated that right. Yeah, I think so, he plus was four. plus four heading into. He was eight and a half out of thirteen. So he's nine. Yep, plus four. Yeah, plus four. Um, he won by drawing con confidently today with Nakamura with the black pieces. 17 years old, playing his first candidates. And we're going to have another world championship contender from India mm -hmm. in the 2024 world championship match. So it's a huge victory for him and for all of his fans around the world. Um, we have a three-way tie for third, uh, for second to fourth. Um, kind of interestingly, it is the player of the older generation, the 1990s generation. Um, Hikaru still having a great tournament, yeah. um, despite his streaming career, but, you know, they're just half a point short. And it's interesting, you know, I think with like Nepo and Bobby sitting there, it's kind of like they're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. They can sort of, they don't really need to run away from each other because they kind of can understand what the other person is feeling. Yeah. Yeah. No, these are, these are two warriors here and they've been, they've been, uh, in the situation, uh, I mean, Fighting, fighting for for that spot, and uh, I mean, elusive uh, opportunity to play for a world world championship match. And uh, yeah, these are two of the stronger players that have you know not won a world championship. So, Bobby has to be extremely disappointed. Um, he really gave it his all, like towards the end of the tournament. Um, Nepo doesn't want to leave the board. Nepo doesn't want to leave. I mean. He's frustrated for the right reasons. He didn't really have a chance to win this game. That's what yeah. he did. Holding a draw is extremely impressive. Right. But he can't probably get past the fact that he never gave himself an opportunity to win the game because of his reckless mistake in the middle of the game. And instead, he worked very hard to hold it and was super resourceful. But uh, these are two players. Um, there's still time. They're still in their, their primes. But uh, they see the new generation coming and... You can't take it for granted. There's been so many elite, elite players that have struggled to get through this format. And yeah, always the players are definitely a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts right now. Um, well, we're going to take a break. We mm -hmm. hope you guys have enjoyed this candidate's coverage so far. And we're going to come back to you with our final thoughts after the break. What's the main difference for you participating in the candidates compared to your normal tournaments? Uh, till now, I don't feel any any different. But when the tournament starts, I probably will feel something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is obviously more uh, more pressure and more work uh, uh, that is uh, required for the candidates compared to the other tournaments. And, um, and also it's kind of, candidates it's kind of a dream tournament for any chess player to play. So. And for me it's been the same, I've 
dreamt of playing here uh, a lot of times and finally I'm here so it's more enjoyable. Yeah, and we'll definitely be seeing you uh, do well uh, here. How has your preparation been going? Uh, it's it's been going uh, pretty well. I you know I have a very nice team and um, you know we had a lot of fun together and we did some uh, nice work I think. So yeah, let's see <laughs> let's see how how the work pays off. Um Bianca and what was your was very different That's a play Yeah well <laughs> you just built my way uh, so uh of course I wanted to play to play this line for for a win let's say yeah but uh, I quickly okay I mixed up all ideas I mean that happens when you play opening you're not familiar with So yes I mean uh, I quickly found myself in some trouble so I was trying to complicate things, and uh, I think before the time control, I, okay, this like rook takes g5, queen h7 is maybe some practical chances. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least I'm clear if it's like totally winning. I, th I, feel, I think it's still winning. Yeah, it's a good plan to put, put queen on h1 and to activate the rook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, <sighs> I don't. Know. I, I, I don't know what to say. So. Actually, before, some bad luck for Fabiano. Before the time control, there was some crazy move that you could, like, that kept it balanced. Uh, King a6, like right after the time control, move 41, I think. So here it's all winning for white. Uh, yes, and here, first of all, did you consider just bishop c2 or bishop f5 instead of bishop h7, probably? Yeah, first of all, it's been... kind of crazy. I don't just play this within a second and go for rook endgame. Mm. Uh, I guess this was... Yeah, this is winning. Uh, yeah. I like rook d1, at least. Uh -huh. Yeah, with queen on c7, it could, be, it could be problem, but with queen on b8, it's yeah. totally winning, yeah, of course. Uh, no, I mean, it's like, it's, it's time trouble, so it happens, I guess. Yeah. I mean, did you miss... But I mean, this is like... <sighs> no, I just thought rook g5 is winning. Mm. Okay, bishop c2, yeah, that's, that's easy, push and then take on h2. It's just kind of more, more solid. We actually thought that maybe you missed rook g5 completely, and that's why... No, but, I, I Okay, th th this is like, I, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's painful to see, like, uh, at Black's position. King king a6 instead of king b8, or what was the move? Yes. Ah, so oh no, king, king a6 instead of, yeah, okay, of so a4, yeah, okay. Here, king a2, first of all, yes. Yeah, of course, I, I, I don't know why I rushed after time control. Yeah, king a2 here. was... Well, somehow, for the, even like queen of 7 queen takes a3, maybe it's not as lost as, as it seems. Somehow I felt like this position is tricky. King B okay, I push my pawn on e4, let's say, and yeah, but I should trade try to keep the queens. Eventually. I mean, I should be able to trade queens. But if you don't trade, how do you... I mean, should be winning, of course, but... Yeah, it's... Like, slowly, yeah. It could have been easier. I mean, what I... Yeah, of course. Of course. To get to this position is already silly. This is terrible. Then queen c2, I realize it's like... Yeah, but after... can't escape. F4, but. Oh, yeah, here, king a5, king a2. Yeah, two. and here, very Yeah, I thought king a6 was... King a6, yeah, yeah, of course. No, of course, yeah. of course. I understood it later, but... I even had this move like as an idea, but uh, I mean, I'm trading with 93 right now. Yeah, I think that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just I was gonna go here, but then just back. I mean, I didn't didn't see what to do. I was a bit panicking. Yeah, okay. I moment. missed. I completely missed rookie one idea from distance. I thought somehow that without rookie one, you don't really achieve progress here. Because here it's again. Yeah, it's not very. But if not rookie one, how do you how do you achieve like queen f1? Let's say queen d5. Mm. Yeah, it's very concrete, but I, I didn't see how black is holding it anymore. Oh. And 
but before, let's say in the in the opening part, like what was the, the way for for Black to to save? Like somehow it's difficult to say because after after G four um, and D five, White's position is already very good. So after G four, I think that the engine suggests H four. Maybe just play knight F six here. Yeah. yeah also. I was thinking and if knight F three, let's here, say yes. G F E F. Yeah. Ah, no, no, G F. I want. I don't. Want yeah, to play this looks worse. Yeah, so I should go G4, let's say. I wasn't sure about this position. But I ah, so, I ah, yeah, on E5 ah, so basically you should just ignore the pawn, yeah? Ah, oh, well, that's a deep. Yeah, it's not easy. No, I mean, it's easy once you I thought Queen A5 have a clue about the position. Yeah. I, I don't know. Queen A5 I thought is more unpleasant for white. <sighs> Here it, it looks uh, very dangerous. Yeah, so yeah, I thought H4 like, is so critical. H4 is yeah, critical. yeah H4, uh, H4 had to be played. I mean, I, I was actually thinking to play King V1 here. Long castle, d5. It's a much worse version, but it's still dangerous for black. Knight e5. Yeah, of course, of course. But no, like castle is um, castle is a, is a poor decision, of course. But here I wasn't sure. Like instead of h4, what, what could I do? No, it says knight of six, but I thought knight of six is knight bad of six? because of bishop of five and d6. Huh? Yeah, no, no bishop of five d6 is king b. No, d6, knight e4, queen h8. As he calculated, knight d6, yeah. queen h5. Uh, queen e3, king b1, queen f3. But should be just game over? No, I wasn't okay, so sure, but... Nothing's game over, as we saw, but... Yeah, it's... I mean, some queen e5 or something. Yeah, yeah, okay, queen e5, I felt like queen e4, maybe, I think. Or queen e3, I can hold on a little. But I felt like, okay, it's, it doesn't look like a realistic draw chances, so... Yeah. Well. And then, king, and then bishop e5, king b1 is very strong, I think. Yeah, I, th I thought this king b1 so was So fine, nice prophylaxis, and here I didn't see the move. Apparently, I only saw b6. Okay, b6, queen d4. I think I'm just resigning by force. King uh, a8, rook c1, rook d5, bishop e4, rook b8, queen a3. I'm, I mean, I also think that rook c1 is very. Uh, no, rook c1, I can queen just retreat. Three, three. Okay, so you are better, but you're not winning. Yeah. But queen b4, I think you're just winning the game. Yeah, this I think is just looks. Okay, rook d7, I underestimated, but I somehow thought like, all right, maybe queen h8, rook d8, queen h4, rook d1, yeah? Yeah. Uh, having my huge chances. I mean, looks winning in many ways. Mm -hmm. At least this was a good practical decision to put the queen on c7. Yeah, here, okay, I thought like, okay, in some way, just it transposes to some yeah, I technical mean, I queen ending. d5 also, or f4 was probably very strong, but I thought what I did looked extremely Yeah, accurate. what you did was very good. And here, there should be a very clean solution. Ah, okay, just, I thought like maybe just queen d5 back, to be honest. No, 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 not queen d5 back, sorry, sorry, not here. Yeah, queen h7 is fine also, like rook h1, yeah. like. I mean, look, I just wanted it to be kind of practical because I was low on time. I mean, I thought also, like, f4 should be very yeah, strong. Yeah, f4, I liked the idea to activate the bishop, which was like... Maybe I should have just played this quickly, put the bishop on h1 and push the pawns and, and won like this, but... Somehow I thought that I'll play rook h1 at some moment. Yeah, it looks but very, it, very yeah. logical and human-like, yeah, just to stop this h2 pawn forever and then... But it's amazing not to win this position, I mean, just... No, once you put g5 or g8, it suddenly felt like it could be like a bit. I mean, at least I, I, I unpinned, so let's say it's. I mean, completely yeah. lost, but still some. C2 and. Yeah. <laughs> today, Hikaru, it's hard to... today, Hikaru, in the interview, you said that he um, believes in karma and destiny. After this game, do you believe in destiny? I. I uh, it was a bad game, and uh, at a very unfortunate moment. I don't know about destiny, but um, yeah, what can you say? I mean, I, I lost control, of course, it's like around, I, I already lost control before, but I basically thought the game was over again. I don't know, like probably every move is a mistake I see, but like around this moment, I basically thought... Ah, like, it was a draw here, well... I don't know, where where was the draw? Why? Oh. Uh, here in 92, I think. Yeah, I thought King C2 is... Yeah, but it's all very difficult to find. What? Queen of, ah, queen of five, queen of two. Oh, okay. Yeah, to even understand okay, why that's not difficult draw. to find. No, this is simple to understand, of course. I mean, you just can't enter there. Uh, you basically can't enter d5 or e4 because they take on yeah. c7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if king e2, then what? Queen e5. I guess queen e5 is only king f2. Ah, and then like. Ah, but it's... Queen e4, king g2, queen e4. Uh, yeah, you don't even need your pawn. No, no, I just queen h4, e4. Yeah, yeah. Had the triangle. Or queen g4, yeah. Okay, queen g4, king h2. But you can... King g2, queen I e4, king, king g3, let's say. 
Uh, but now you just take, no? It's yeah, I promote. Queen, queen g1 is a draw, and okay, yeah. queen h2. Okay, but that was, I mean, okay, I, I didn't say this, of course. I mean, I felt like, okay, knight, knight b3, and then, okay, king, king runs away after king c2. But I don't know what's the cleanest win here. Like, but here I wasn't not, sure, like, I'm so, I'm so lost, actually. Rook e7 also, like, I... Like, it, what's, like, what's the sequence to, of winning, like? It says made in 28, I don't know. Okay, I, 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 I can also read, but, <laughs> but uh, I mean... I think queen a8, yeah. that's the right move, yeah. and then uh, queen e8. Yeah, king okay. e6, what? King e6, and uh, here and what? something else. So somehow there's, it's crucial that the, the queen is on e8. <laughs> that's, oh. all I, that's all I can say. Jesus. Yeah, but of course it's, like, on seconds it's very difficult to, to figure it out. Maybe queen e2, ah, queen e2 now. Yeah, oh, maybe queen e2, queen yes. Queen e2. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh well, it's just four. I didn't see queen e two. I felt like somehow like I can yeah, queen hold two, on. Yeah. yeah, queen e two makes it yeah. Okay, b five. Okay, so easy. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, it's easy once you see it no, but afterwards, this is like some but during the game, it's three move uh, tactic. Yeah, mm. queen e eight, queen. Well, actually, two move tactic. Uh, and that's it. I mean, I also had like five minutes here. Oh, no, no it's, it's, it's wasn't, it's really, it was already quite low. No, I think time. here it was already less than five minutes. Yeah. Like I've been, oh. um, do we have the questions to our, our last man standing here? No questions? No questions to uh, Jan or Fabiano? Okay, and then with that we thank you and let you go and uh, rest. Thank you. the realm of kings and queens, only a select few dare to claim the ultimate crown. Witness the birth of legends, a victor in the open and woman section. Well, chess fans are going to have to settle for not having an extra day of chess tomorrow as we do have a clear winner here at the 2024 candidates. It is the youngest player in the tournament, Gukesh from India. We also have a player who won the women's candidates. That is Tam from China. So congratulations to the winners. We just wanted to say our thanks to our viewers, guys, for watching us for the last few weeks. Thank you to Fide for inviting me to be a witness to this amazing chess event. Thank you to the chess bras for their commentary with me. And also a special thanks to uh, Vichy, um, because I feel like I got 10 days of training. Yeah, I'm a little him. jealous. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, that was amazing. You know, because for the viewers, it's like commentary, but for me, it's training and it's really a special experience and something that I'm, you know, I feel very privileged um, to have had a chance to do. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed these last few weeks of amazing fighting chess and all the efforts that yeah. these players have made to make it super close and exciting for you. And now we're going to have a press conference from the winner, Gukesh. And we're signing.
Welcome once again to the press center of the Fidi Candidates Tournament. It is official, Gukesh is the winner and the challenger for the World Championship <laughs> this year. So later this year he will play the World Championship match against the World Champion Dean Liran. And he's here with his uh, second, uh, Grigory Gajewski. Uh, please tell us how it was for you. What are your emotions right now at this moment? Uh. Right now, I'm just so, uh, so relieved and so happy. I was following, uh, following this crazy game, and I was completely uh, uh, emotional. But now I'm, after the game finished, now I'm feeling, uh, feeling quite, quite good. Uh, Gregorian, how was it for you as a second? I guess uh, your nerves were also probably gone. Like. Uh, was a nerve-wracking game between Fabiano and uh, Jan. I mean, the main problem is that I'm not playing myself, so I have too much time and I have to follow all the games. And uh, obviously today there were too many emotions going on and the bar was going crazy in the game between uh, Fabiano and uh, Jan. So 
Yeah, it was quite nervous, but uh, luckily it ended well for us. But it looks like during the event, Gukesh didn't uh, give you much uh, reasons to be nervous. He was playing really solid. So how do you assess his performance overall? Well, obviously we are very happy with his performance and uh, not just the fact that he did so well in terms of uh, the result, but also in terms of the quality of the games. Already a couple of days earlier, I was convinced that, uh, not convinced that, he's going, that he was going to win the tournament, but uh, simply the quality of his moves was, uh, was so high that uh, he didn't do too many mistakes. He had one accident in, the, uh, in his first game against uh, Alureza. But apart from that, uh, there were hardly any mistakes in his games. So uh, I think he deserved that win. Gukesh, who else uh, was in your team? Uh, your father is here. Who else? Yeah, uh, in, in Toronto, I came with my dad and uh, Gaevsky. But obviously, the support system is uh, huge. And you know, my, uh, my family, my friends, and uh, coming to my uh, team, um, you know, it's, it's, the journey is only halfway, halfway through. So, I mean, they know how, uh, how much grateful I am to them. But uh, I would not like to take their names, but each one of them played a huge, huge role, and I'm, and I'm so grateful, uh, grateful for everyone. You're just 17 years old, so you're the youngest challenger in, the, in history of the World Chess Championships. Uh, does it give you some special feeling of accomplishment that you did it in such a young age? Um, right now, I'm mostly just happy about winning the tournament. I don't really care about the uh, youngest and all these uh, all these records. But you know, it's a nice thing to nice thing to say. Yeah. Well, let's give the floor to the journalists, please. That is your chance to ask the questions. Who will be first? Oh, please, uh, f first let's uh, first get the microphone, okay. Hello, I'm Simon Gravel from La Presse newspaper in Montreal. Hey. Uh, there's a big crowd uh, outside, the, in the, you had a lot of fans, it seems, uh, throughout the tournament. Uh, which uh, role did it play in, the, in your performance? Did it have any impact on you? Oh, it was really nice to see all the people um, here and supporting, uh, supporting me and cheering for chess. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I usually don't try to, uh, you know, think about or interact with uh, with the outside world a lot during the tournament. But surely, whenever they they cheered during the games and after the games, it was really nice to see that. And uh, yeah, their support means a lot to me. More questions? Yes, but, but please, but please use the microphone. Hi, Gukesh. So I am uh, Marion from Al Jazeera. I have one question. So you won the tournament, but also over Indian won tonight. I mean the the match. So is it like uh, even more? Uh, if, even are you even more proud for your country? I mean, is it? Uh... Um, sure, it's always a honor representing uh, representing my country and uh, to achieve something big uh, for myself and my country. It's uh, it's very special. More questions? Okay. Gukesh, yesterday I asked what you thought about your lack of experience, and today you proved it did not matter with a very comfortable draw against Hikaru. I know it is probably far too early to ask, but you have proved yourself to be a very confident and capable player. What is your preliminary strategy for the upcoming World Championship match? Um, <clears throat> I haven't really thought about it a lot. I just got to know the result and... Uh, yeah, I haven't had any time, to be honest, but the main strategy will just to be play good moves and uh, be in the right uh, mindset. So, yeah. Uh, and obviously, I'll, uh, I'm very excited to play the World Championship and really looking forward to all the preparations and being there. You said before that you wanted to win this tournament, but uh, when did you have the feeling that the, 
the, where was the point where you thought you could really do it? Um, I wasn't hundred percent sure till the last game. I mean, even after the last game, to be honest. But, um, but uh, if I had to pinpoint a moment where I really felt this could be my moment was probably after the seventh game, after I lost to Firuja. I, I mean, I was qu obviously quite upset after that. But during the rest day, I already felt so good. Um, even though I just had a painful loss, I, I was feeling at my absolute best. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe this loss just gave me so much motivation. So yeah, uh, after the seventh round, I really started to feel, feel at my absolute best. Okay, next question is from Leoncho. Thank you. This is Leoncho Garcia from El País in Spain. Cookies, congratulations. If you analyze your performance here, which are the key elements of this very important victory? Why Gukesh is the winner of the candidates tournament? Um, I, I think a lot of factors go into it. Um, the main thing was uh, that I was just in a, a right mindset throughout the event. From the start to the end, I was I was in good spirits and I was fully motivated and uh, I really wanted to win the event and um, yeah, when all these things come together also it, it, was, hel it, it was helpful that I was uh, sharp enough chess wise and uh, I managed to play some good chess but yeah, I would say mainly my um, mental attitude in this tournament was very, very good. More questions? We'll pass the microphone. Okay. Yeah, I've just got a quick question as well. Um, there was a period there where for about 15 minutes you went back to your hotel. Uh, was there anything you were doing in there to relax? Were you watching? We were discussing here if you were doing anything to relax, taking your mind off the tournament or anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, those 15 minutes were probably the most stressful of this entire <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Rick and Morty or something, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I tried to take my mind off of the, I mean, of their game. I I was watching the commentary for a while, but then I couldn't watch it, so. <laughs> uh, me and Gajewski went for a walk, and uh, once the result was done, my father came running to us and said, it's, it's over, so. <laughs> yeah, probably the walk was the uh, turning point. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations on your, on your victory. Thank you. Congrats. Yes. Um, you mentioned earlier in the tournament uh, that your parents had wanted you to be a sportsman. They wanted you to be a tennis player, you said, but I guess they'll set a, settle for a world champion chess challenger. Um, could you t have, tell us a bit about uh, your conversations with, with your dad or if you, with your mom, if you've spoken to her since the results uh, became clear? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to talk to my mom yet. I mean, it was so hectic, this uh, uh, going back to the hotel, getting to know the result, and coming back again. So um, yeah, I really look forward to talking with my mom. But my, but obviously, my dad was there, and I, I mean, he was super, super happy. And uh, yeah, I'm sure my mom is also very, uh, very happy. And yeah, I'm really happy to you know, uh, make, them, make them enjoy this success. And, uh, hope to keep making them proud. Stefan Löffler, Frankfurt Allgemeine. Um, you spoke about your mindset. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this mindset, some routines, some things you do like mental training or whatever, uh, or meditation or whatever you do? Uh, sure. I, I, I didn't do anything uh, specifically for this tournament, but just the usual routines that I've always been doing. I, I have my routines during the tournament and I was quite, and I was following them quite, uh, um, quite uh, strictly and I think that was quite helpful. And the mental state, I think, um, I mean, I tried to think about what I wanted it to be like before the event and uh, yeah, it was better than I could have hoped for. Do we have any more questions? Well, if not, I will. Be specific. 
about these routines? That was the question that um, you had during the tournament that you mentioned. Well, I have different kinds of routines. Not everything I'll uh, I'll reveal, but uh, you, the things I've said before, like yoga, um, some some meditation, yoga. This these have really helped me. Uh, you have worked with uh, Vishy Anand before and now with Gukesh. So can you tell us uh, what are the similarities and differences you felt working with both of them? I mean, this is a tricky question because Vishy may be listening to the press conference <laughs> right now. Um, obviously, uh, the similarity is uh, the sharpness which is outstanding for both of them. And uh, for the difference, I would say mainly the character, because uh, Vichy is the brilliant one. He's the one who sees it first, whereas Gukesh is the calm one. He, and this is a huge advantage in chess when you manage to stay cool uh, during the entire game. And I've noticed that people are so impressed by this uh, by the way he actually managed to keep his composure even in the most stressful moments. So I think, uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is the main thing that, uh, apart from, of course, uh, being a, a brilliant chess player, I think this is the main thing that decided in that tournament. Do we have any more questions? Well, with that, with that we congratulate you once again, Gukesh. Yeah, thank you. Amazing performance. Thanks. Thank you.